The CDDA challenge for Project Zomboid is a true veteran's test. If you think you know the game, playing through this start will either humble or affirm your beliefs, as it starts you six months into the apocalypse with max zombie spawns, cold temperatures, and rare loot. On top of it, your character also starts naked, wounded, sick, and hungover in the middle of a burning house. It's safe to say that survival in this challenge is a blessing. But what if I told you it can get a lot worse? Enter the Louisville CDDA Challenge, where instead of starting in Muldraw, a small town, the challenge will instead begin right in the middle of Louisville, Kentucky, the densest zombie-filled city in the game, at peak population of all times. And who else to test this challenge than yours truly? It's going to be a testament to my skill surviving even a week in these conditions. So, I hope you enjoy my suffering through this hellish world, all within a five-hour supercut. Enjoy. You know, I really wonder why I continue to do this to myself. Anyways, hello. If you couldn't tell, the game is paused right now. And let me tell you, it's paused for good reason. Anyways, this is City Trash. A distant relative of actual trash, but the one thing that this trash does have going for him is that he's strong, fit, and a fast learner. And if that wasn't enough, he's also a... He's also a burger flipper. <laughs> uh, I really don't know why I made him a burger flipper, but that doesn't matter. As we have so many other things that are wrong with us. One, we're drunk. Two, we have a cold. Three, we're drenched. Four, we're bleeding. With that bleeding coming from a large, deep groin wound. Anyways, we really don't have a lot of time, so I'm just gonna get this party started. We have around a 50% chance of survival, uh, especially seeing that, you know, we're currently being blocked in by fire. I can wait a little bit. And then after this fire goes away, the first thing we're gonna need are shoes. Shoes and clothing. I just walked right into fire. Oh, yippee, I'm just gonna die right now, I guess. That's okay. Oh yeah, I love it here. Welcome to CDDA Louisville, everyone. It's gonna be a fun ride. Hi there, once again. Our circumstances aren't that much better, but we do have a way out. And now that we're kind of in a safe position, I can tell you what my entire plan is. It consists of four steps. I need a bandage for my groin wound. Number two, I need some damn shoes. Number three, I, I, I need clothing. And number four, I really can't afford to die. There is a lot of fire surrounding me, so as soon as I unpause, we gotta get moving. First things first, okay, never mind. I guess we're just gonna die then. Whoa, yippee. <laughs> oh, we really got ourselves into a pickle in this one, huh? The only hope I have right now is that this fire burns out relatively quickly and I can grab some curtains soon. If a zombie gets a whiff of me right now, it, it's game over, but I'm still optimistic. We just gotta wait for this stuff then. Go right on through. There we go, we can shimmy, avoiding the flames like the fireman we are, and immediately go outside to try and bully the first zombie we see. Those two bozos are gonna be perfect. Oh, never mind, that two is now three. Okay, that's not good. I just want some shoes, man. Okay, it's gonna be the hard way then. Gosh, please. It's already not going good. It's not going good at all, brother. Okay, that's fine. We still have plan B. And if you're wondering what plan B is, it's die. You ever get the feeling of deja vu? Of course not. Welcome. It's time to just move right now. Number one, curtains. Boom. Number two, open window, find a target. Here you go. Now that we have that, we have clothing and shoes acquired. Rip up the sheet, apply that to my groin, and we are going to be doing good. Now we just have to survive the horde. Yes, you heard me correctly, but I feel a lot better now that I have some clothes. So all we got to do is play it real calm and cool. Trash is very strong, so it should be pretty easy to take out these bozos. And if we can't kill them with our feet, we sure as hell can kill them with fire. So let's see what these idiots got. Which is nothing. They got nothing. Okay, maybe they do have something. Oh, gosh. That's not good. Whoop, played them like fiddles. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I can limp at a slightly faster pace than you. 
So yeah, it's really just a test to see how many zombies I can kill with my bare hands before I get overwhelmed by sheer numbers. And I'm hoping that we're gonna be able to kill the majority of them with our feet. <laughs> That's really the only plan I have. And then, and then once the zombies are dead, we can work from there. One thing's for sure, city trash is not going down without a fight. I've worked at Spiffos for far too long to die now. <laughs> it's not really looking good right now, but the one good thing that I can rely on is the fire killing most of the zombies in a little bit. So all I really have to do is survive. My, my neck is being breathed on right now. It's very uncomfortable. Listen, we got years of academy training going for us right now. With the amount of sprinter challenges I survived, fast- Okay, that's a lot of zombies. I was about to- Fast shamblers, despite us being in a not-so-good situation, are nothing for us. Ain't that right, sir? <laughs> okay, I was really hoping that would have pushed him down. Let's just keep on running in circles and try not to get lit on fire right about now. Ain't nobody gonna break my stride. Ain't no one gonna slow me down. Oh, I got to keep on moving. Don't worry, a few more minutes like that and this horde of 100 will turn into zero hopefully soon. Please hurry up though, I'm already at moderate exertion. I am hearing them drop like flies and we're not losing any more health. Sure, we might be hypothermic, but we've been through worse. I think we have this one in the bag, so long as I can manage my stamina correctly. If anything, this is just another normal Tuesday night for trash. Out of the way, ma'am, I got places to be. And the more I'm thinking about it, I think our step four is just to kill every single zombie in the area. It's a bit of a jump up from just acquiring bandages and shoes, but it's the only way I can really survive. I don't know how much material we're gonna be able to loot out of this, you know, because of the fire, but we'll see. And then after that, I want a weapon. Our feet are not really cutting it right now, but I will take every chance I can to just kind of rest up a bit. Oh, nope, time to move again. Oh, it's so scary though. And hey, would you look at that? The fog has cleared up after we've been done burning all the zombies. There's about three to four zombies left, actually five, six, seven, eight, about 10 zombies left. It's not the worst. We just gotta wait for the flames to take care of the rest of these, and then I'll take out the stragglers with my big, strong, zombie pushing arms. Ooh, okay. I'm really scared about those fence lunges because normally I'd be able to run away, but you can't do a lot of running when your character is a limper. I give it another two rotations around the neighborhood and this general area will be pretty clear for me to loot whatever is left in the rubble. And that was the last zombie. Don't mind me as I take all of your clothing, ma'am. And your shoes. I've earned these. Oh man, that was extremely messy. There are still a lot of zombies in the area, but it's a lot cleaner than it was before. So, you know what? I'll count this as a win. And just like that, we have gotten past our first major hurdle of this challenge. Good old trash here is gonna sift through all of the clothing of these zombies, getting as many layers as possible, so we're not, you know, hypothermic. That would probably help out our situation quite a bit. Alrighty, not bad at all. I decided to put the hood up because that's the best amount of insulation that we're gonna have. We're still cold, but we are warming up, which is all that matters. And now that we've killed the zombies, it's time to look through some of these areas to see what is left in the rubble. And I'm willing to wager that some of these garages will have some weapons for good old trash here. Would you look at that? We got ourselves a dust mask, a ball peen hammer. I can't actually attach it because we don't spawn with the belt, but there's also a metal bar. It's not going to be the best weapon as trash is extremely slow because of the cold, but it's definitely nice to have. Okay, let's start to loot some of the burned down homes now to see if we can grab some food supplies to cure this cold. As you see, our character is sneezing up a storm, and so long as I have this illness, we are going to be a walking alarm system for the zombies. So we need food. We need to find a safe place to stay. After that, all we're going to need is time. So I guess our best chance of finding food is to go through these burned down homes to see if there's anything left here. You know, looking at how the flames are still spreading throughout this very tightly compact neighborhood, I don't think we're going to be able to get much. But we can go check the cars. You never know. There could be some uh, glove box beef jerky inside. No jerky, but we do have cigarettes, twine, and a key for a car. 
No fuel, nor a good battery in it, but that is something really good to have. I also picked up, oh my lord, that is some good stuff as well. Anyways, aside from that, I did pick up this annotated map, which can give us a lot more context of where we are. And it's also marked down, no place like home. So where is that on my end? Pretty close by, that's not a bad amount to be revealed. I think we could probably make our way over towards the construction area. Yeah, we're, we're about right below the mall, which is not the best location, but something that I can work with. Anyways, what I need right now is some damn food. And it looks like the fires have not touched these homes too much, but it also does look like there's gonna be some zombies to put up a lot of resistance. Oh yeah, don't worry. Trash knows how to fight pretty well. And why am I still pushing when I have a freaking pipe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially now that we have so many layers that our character isn't cold anymore. Yeah, this group of five ain't gonna know what hit them. Bingo. We can't get too cocky, but that did feel really good to be able to fight them back. Now it's time to reap the rewards and see what these zombies have on them, which isn't much aside from a pen and another Louisville map. Which part does this reveal? So we have a good chunk of the map actually revealed now, so we know how screwed we are. Uh, it's 5.40 p.m. I'm extremely thirsty and hungry, so let's see if we can uh, slink ourselves inside a home to rest up for the night. Even if it isn't the most hospitable, I'll take anything at this point, man. <laughs> it's been a it's it's been a really long day for trash. We're in with a visitor. Point. I really want some food so I can go to sleep with a full stomach in order to prevent this cold from taking over. But judging from our loot right now, it's not looking like that. Actually, canned sardines and tomato paste. Okay, we take both of those and free water bottle, and with that. I think we might be able to fight off this cold. Though I might loot one more house just in case. Yeah, let's go do that. Hi ma'am, I hope I'm not intruding too much inside your house. Thank you for your hospitality. And your really screwed up face. Holy crap! What happened to you? Uh, let me just put you out of your misery really quick. Now it's time to raid the kitchen cupboard. And it also looks like I scratched up my hand going through a hedge or something. I was a little bit... So how did I scratch up my hand? That's weird. More importantly, we got some extra food that we can't even eat right now. Wow, we really don't have that much. Well, it's just gonna have to work. I'm gonna go lock myself inside the, 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 the bedroom and we'll see if we can get rid of this cold. Hey, do you remember when I said that we were going to be able to sleep? Um, yeah, that's a lie. I really don't know how I scratched up my hand, though. That's something that I'm going to need to look at after I'm done here. Oh, please just give me like a few seconds to myself. I'm really struggling out here. Gosh, there's so many zombies. This is going terribly. I just tripped over a fence and I scratched myself again. Just when you think you're in the home stretch, things just go wrong every step of the way. I am, I am screwing up my character so badly right now. It's so hard to see, by the way, but I think this is going to be the final one. <sighs> the first day of the CDDA Louisville challenge and our characters wrapped up like a mummy. I need to find a place to sleep like right now. Um, oh, I wish there was a better spot to actually lie down. You know what? I'm just gonna go sleep in the car for tonight. I think that's a good spot. It's good enough for me. Home sweet home. I'll, I'll see y'all tomorrow. Never mind. We're experiencing too much pain to sleep. I'm just gonna sit in the car for a little bit then. That's okay as well. Hello. We have just about survived our first day in the apocalypse. Our Moodles. Not really doing too well, but we are alive. I ate up all of my food, and my goal for today is to collect more food so I can actually get rid of this cold and heal up all of our wounds. Our arms are not looking good at all right about now. They're only scratches, so our character is going to be able to swing just fine, but it's definitely not at peak performance. For now, we just gotta pick out some decent looking prospects with homes, that that may or may not have more food for us. 
That being said, it's gonna be hard to find intact kitchens when every single house in the area is burned down. But I'm sure we'll find something nice. Hopefully. Who knows? Luck may be on our side just yet. Oh my, and it is. That's a free gun. Uh, not that that's too useful, but it's pretty cool. Not only that though, but we got ourselves a new weapon, a black electric bass guitar. With the kitchen having a kitchen knife and some canned peaches that I can't open, I am... They have to add that feature in vanilla one of these times. It is so sad to see that you have food that you can't eat because you can't open a can with a knife. But I'm not gonna let that beat us down. It does look like a lot of these homes are intact for the most part, so our chances of finding th oh come on there's so much canned goods but no can opener well i guess if we find a can opener we'll be all set oh gosh there's actually quite a few zombies in here oh yep it's time to go shut that door pop open the window and we are out of here i forgot the farther i go away from our burned down neighborhood the more zombies there are it should be pretty manageable I say that as a massive horde of zombies barrels their way towards my location. I just want a can opener. <laughs> and there's our first Moodle of Drowsy. This is going terribly. I actually hate it here. <laughs> uh, there's one zombie on fire. So my whole plan is to kill them and hopefully light the others on fire. That's really my only plan. It's not exactly the best plan given how close together these zombies are, but it's really all that I have going for me right now, dude. Okay, let's, let's, just, let's just remain optimistic, you know? <laughs> uh, I can't remain optimistic in this situation anymore. We are just getting brutalized right now. I'll be honest, our only real hope right now is that the flaming zombie dies soon so that I can light the others on fire fast enough. That is our only chance right now. And even then, it's extremely risky. I... Oh, is there any other fire that I can use to my advantage? Because this is, this is just, this is just sick. The amount of zombies that are following me right now. Okay, there we go, there we go. They're all lighting fire. Okay, 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 we got this, we got this. We just gotta, we gotta put them through the gauntlet. And I can't get caught lacking. And very soon, a lot of these zombies that are now burning will die horribly. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Fire truly is your best friend in this situation. It's time to run around like a headless chicken for a bit and get them all dead and deader. Yep, nothing to see here. Just going on a nice old walk through the neighborhood. The worst part is, is that with the CDDA challenge settings, there's going to be zombie respawns. So if I can't nut up and find some actual resources soon, this is going to be our life. <laughs> I really don't like it here. No, no, no. Matter of fact, I hate it here. This is, this is not a good position to be put in. Ever. But all it should take is another in-game hour of running around like this, and most of these zombies should drop dead, giving us the chance to kill the rest with our skills in combat. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay, there we go. They're dropping like flies now. Any minute now, the rest of them are going to follow. <laughs> You've been outsmarted yet again by City Trash. And that was definitely not a stroke of luck that one zombie out of the group would have been on fire for me to use that to my advantage. Nope, that's all luck. What you're seeing right now is a professional navigating through the... Yeah, what you're seeing right now is a master plan being unfolded before your very eyes. Huh. You three are already dead without even knowing it. There we go. There it is. That's what we love to see. Okay, you two are up next. Come on. <laughs> Give it the program. There's one, and it's just you, sir. I really need to rest up, so if you could just kind of drop dead where you are, that would be perfect. No? Come on, any minute now, you're gonna die. Abra Kadabra, Alakazam, Shamoosh. Come on, man, you gotta play. You gotta play along a little bit. I'm trying my best here. Kablamo. 
Yeah! There it is! I survive yet again. How do I keep on getting away with it? I should probably step away from that fire. We are still not doing the best, but we somehow got out of that on top in relative safety as well. I think I might end the episode here after I check out a couple of more houses. And I'm sure we'll be able to fix our cold by next episode. For now, we can help ourselves to some delicious toilet water and a nice sit down inside our car. We don't have food, despite all of the canned goods that we have with a definitely openable tool with those cans. I'm not going to talk about that. I'm going to run back to my car and I'm going to relax a bit. Today was pretty stressful. And after a few tries, we finally pulled it off. By the way, there were a lot more tries off camera of me doing this series. This was originally meant to be a zero to hero run, but I soon figured out that uh, that was a pipe dream. We're in the middle of nowhere, but I feel like this is going to be a very cool series if we can get the ball rolling. Anyways, peace the hell out, everyone. Hello and welcome to the CDDA Louisville Challenge once again. You might notice things are a little bit different around here, and that's because I forgot to press the record key. Thankfully, you only missed like 10 minutes worth of footage, but it still sucks a lot. And you might wonder how I got my hands on this nice fire axe. Well, I'm going to go back outside and walk you through what I did. Trash is still not doing good at all. We're hungry, we're severely depressed, and we still have our nasty cold. But things could be worse. We have survived around two days and killed 64 zombies. Still looking like a mummy when it comes to wounds, though. First of all, it was extremely late last night, so I decided to stay inside of the car and sleep so I cannot be tired and actually deal damage. After that, I decided that the rest of the neighborhood was a no-go because, you know, it's burned down, with our only prospects being up in this direction here. So I shimmied Trash's little butt all the way down, fought a group of zombies on the way, killing them extremely easy, with my bare feet, nonetheless. And lastly, I moved my way inside here, looting the kitchen and realizing that this place was actually a survivor home. As you see, there's like a random N14 magazine in here and other bits and baubles. The main thing that I really found was a spiked baseball bat on top of it and a shotgun with a little bit of extra ammo. I decided that out of all places, this would be a good spot to make our base. So I decided to shove all of my stuff inside here. We don't have much to our name, but it is nice to have, especially when this temporary base is so close to the to the incident. So there's not a lot of zombies in the area and I can work my way on down. That's about it, though. So I hope you guys are caught back up and are ready for Trash's adventure. Today, we're going to cure our cold. And the only way of doing that is by finding food. Or a damn can opener. <laughs> we have so much canned supplies, but no can opener. It's been tough for me recently. But now that I have a fire axe, I'm feeling a little bit better. The me that's playing trash, that is, Private Lime. Currently, trash in game is severely depressed, so we might have to figure that one out as well. <laughs> Anyways, off to the next house to go loot. And it looks like we have ourselves a nice little event. The real question, though, is if those bottles on the ground of this cadaver are filled with that good juice. And it looks like they are. That's two free bottles of alcohol and a bottle of bourbon to boot. I'm going to save the bottle of bourbon for a Molotov cocktail because fire is going to be our best friend in the series. Is there anything on his body? We got an empty bottle and a useless fork. OK, what else we got in this place? A couple of books that I can't use. Another can of food game. Why do you tempt me like this? <laughs> a frying pan. A bunch of rotten fresh supplies and a lime. I'll yoink that just for the principle. Upstairs, we got a bottle of disinfectant, which would probably do well on my groin wound the more I'm looking at it. Yeah, that'll be good for us. I don't know if it's going to help out too much, but it's better than just kind of letting that gestate. <laughs> I'm going to be keeping the rest of the bandages on, though, because they have definitely already healed with how fast our character is swinging. And I think being covered in bandages is just a cool aesthetic choice. <laughs> Don't worry, it won't kill me with like, inf is that a machete? That's pretty cool. 
The condition is terrible, but that's still another free weapon. Oh, that is the one beautiful thing about Louisville. Also a screwdriver. That's pretty epic as well. But that's the best thing about Louisville. The supplies are numerous and the treasure is a plenty. All we got to do is look around and find it. And immediately I see a free hoodie, a free T-shirt, a sewing kit with nothing in it. Sadly, if I would have gotten a needle and thread, I probably would have cried. But we have vitamins. Last but not least, it looks like we have ourselves a nice pair of padded pants as well. That's <laughs> that's actually so cool. You know, maybe suffering all the way through that first episode was worth it. We look like an absolute goober, but these pants will keep us warm. Is there anything else we got in here? I will be ripping up the clothing on top of it. Sadly, that seems to be it for the notable loot. Well, we got one more house in this little like subset, actually two more homes in the subset. Let's go check them out while also dealing with the uh, unruly neighbors of the neighborhood. Don't mind me as I come inside here. First things first, we raid the kitchen. What do we got? Absolutely nothing. That's that's fine as well. Just a couple of more zombies inside here that need to be hacked and slashed to an early grave. I guess a late grave. I'm really doing them as honor right now. There we go. And as if this house was a yin to that yang up at that really good place, there's nothing else in here. It was actually a bust. That's fine, because we got one more, and then I think we ought to chart out a better course. The only other home that's kind of interesting is that house down there. It has a boarded up window, so it might be a survivor house. It's probably like a... I'm gonna give it like a 70% chance that that's a survivor home, especially with the zombies leaving it. So we are going to check that out after we're done here. Honestly, this game needs to stop giving me weapons and it needs to start giving me a damn can opener. I, I would kill so many zombies for that. Yeah, no, the game is just giving us more canned food. We just got to keep our optimism and hope up. All right. With that, we can get through any terrible apocalypse situation. Give me that beanie. I may look like an absolute goober right now, but this is what peak performance looks like. All right. Don't question me. As if the game heard me talk about peak performance, we also got some fingerless gloves to go with it. <laughs> we look like such a bozo. Oh, I just walked straight out of stupid town with this outfit. Give me those painkillers. And give me that acoustic guitar. Not because it's a good weapon or anything. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa, where the hell did you come from, sir? Oh, settle down. Anyone else? Holy crap. That was scary. Anyways, where was I? Oh yeah, I want to kill things in a funny way. Whoa, okay, just another zombie, but it's okay. Because I can play him the serenade of death. Trash is somewhat of a musician. Don't let the burger flipper profession confuse you. That's going to be it for homes on this street, though. I'm going to go and check out some of the singular homes down here, saving the survivor home for later. I just really need some food right now. We might be able to cure our cold with the alcohol, but it's not good enough right now, you know? Ah, oh, and there goes our acoustic guitar. Well, it was fun while it lasted. It's time to actually murder them with an axe now. Yep, no survivors. Check it out. Free can of sardines as well. Next home. Whoop. We also have ourselves some corned beef a meat cleaver, crackers, white beans, and a TV dinner that is uncooked. Okay, now trash is cooking. That's gonna be more than enough food to cure our cold. So I think as soon as we're done looting here, we're gonna go head back, chart out our next course and cure this damn cold. So we don't have to worry about being a target every minute of every second of our lives. Oh, and is that a free hand fork I see? Don't mind if I do, sir. That's a free infinite supply of worms right there. It's been a real long day, but trash can finally rest. Here's what I'm going to be doing for the next day or so. And that's curing this nasty cold. From that last looting trip alone, we have so much food that we're going to be able to... 
So, if you guys didn't know, the three steps to curing a cold is going to be food, staying indoors, and staying warm. We can stay warm because of the clothing that we have and because we're going to be indoors the entire time. We have more than enough food to last us. The white beans alone deal 60 hunger, and if that wasn't good enough, we have sardines and corned beef, which I can pull open with pull tabs. Sadly, I can't do that with the rest of the canned goods, but that is extra food. And lastly, we have alcohol to fix our terrible sleeping schedule. With all of these combined, all we have to do is shut ourselves off inside here. And in a couple of days, we should be a very quiet and sneaky boy. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I did go back to the other homes, grabbing all of the books, so I can have something to read. I won't be able to read any of these, but in the future, we might be able to breach into those. For the most part, I collected these books and the comic book to fix our depression once our cold is gone. So the only thing that's left to do is, uh, chill inside for a little bit and wait for the magic to happen. Bottoms up! Would you look at that? City Trash is no longer sick. Now, I will be staying in here at least until 12 p.m. because there is a pretty decent chance that it's not over yet. And I don't want to go outside and ruin our chances right now, especially when we blew through so many food supplies. We still are sitting on a pretty nice stash, especially with the corned beef, but a lot of this I can't access yet, so I gotta save it. I also decided to place a bunch of my weapons right next to our bed so I can feel comfortable at night. And lastly, it's actually snowing outside. I feel like this snow is going to be a new chapter for City Trash. Honestly, the only thing that's wrong with us right now is that we're limping at a pretty decent rate. But when we have muscles and fitness like us, that ain't gonna matter too much. Oh, and I forgot to mention one last thing. For this character, I kind of want to do a short blade skill, and that is the whole reason why I picked Burger Flipper, because it gives us extra maintenance, and it also gives us a passive bonus for short blade. I want to be a little, little stabby guy, you know? I want to do a little shivin', a little, a, a little bit of tomfoolery. And this is going to be the best stamina weapon, so fighting the hordes of Louisville are hopefully going to be easier with a short blade character. But that doesn't mean I won't use a big hefty fire axe at the early game, you know? At least until we can find a bunch of hunting knives to use. Anyways, it's time to sit down and read for a little bit, while also marking down some cool things on our map. If you're wondering, yes, I did just sit in a corner practicing my reloading for around three hours. It's worth it though, because we're at reloading level two. And with that, I think we have finally shook off the rest of our cold. If we still have it, I can immediately run inside and bulk ERPs, but I'm hoping that's not gonna be the case. Anyways, I decided to mark down, albeit very sloppily, most of the homes that we have looted so far. And the three things I want to check out right now are one, the survivor home here, and two, the stores down near this region, and three, some of the cars that I forgot before. I want to check to see if there's gas, I want to see if there's food, and I want to see if there's any more supplies I can grift off. So up first is going to be the survivor home. Oh, hold on though. I'm alright with doing a little bit of a detour. That's a nice leather jacket. Oh yeah, that's gonna be mine. Now that we don't have to deal with the cold, this is going to be a lot more manageable for us. Matter of fact, we might actually start to be able to game a little bit. Most of the most of the challenge came from the start. So now that we're here, it's gonna be pretty peachy. But still, you know, it's six months later with so many zombies, I don't know what to do. And is that another survivor home up there? Holy hell. Trash is a lucky, yet unlucky person. Anyways, what I wanted was this guy's jacket. <laughs> okay, never mind. We still look extremely goofy, and I think our jacket goes better with it for now. <laughs> we'll keep it on the ground. Let's go check out the survivor home. I just realized, Trash has the color palette of like one of those dolls that have been discarded years ago. This is not a good color palette for me. But maybe it'll be like, uh... 
Maybe it'll be like a deterrent for the zombies though, you know? Maybe they'll see me and be like, no, this guy's like actually insane. Maybe we shouldn't kill him. And they would save their own lives because we are pretty is Okay, you know what? Maybe the series ain't gonna treat me that bad anyways. Is that a sledgehammer? <laughs> okay. Hey, how are you? How's it going? Do you wanna chat at my house? I should bring you along anyways. We also have more canned goods. Just really hoping I get that can opener soon. What else we got? A zombie that's about to get rocked. <laughs> oh, I bet you never felt that one before, ma'am. We also got a crowbar, a machete, and a nightstick. Another baseball bat. Even more canned goods. And lastly, a football helmet. You know what? Yeah, screw this whole like construction worker thing. I'd rather have one of these bad boys. Hell yeah. It keeps me warm and it gives me some pretty good protection. Plus, football helmets are really cool. Though the last person that did wear a football helmet got murdered like a few days after. Rest in peace, Shocklord. May you forever be missed, but we'll see what happens. Let's go lug all of these resources back to our little stash and then work our way down. Hey, not bad. There's also some duct tape inside the trunk here. I should really make it a habit to check these cars. Sometimes you can like hit gold with these things. And they also might have a little bit of gasoline in them. So I'm going to go check that as well. No gas in these, but we can go loot the green car, which has another annotated map. That's in Louisville again. Don't bother wasting my time. Need a sledgehammer. We have a sledgehammer. Oh, <laughs> oh, the world has just opened up now that we got that so early. I'm really happy I decided to not take Unlucky this time around. I usually get screwed over with RNG when it comes to looting these areas. And it's because I always think Unlucky is a, f you know, is a free four points. But I 100% would have not found all of the resources if I had it enabled. So you know what? I'm glad City Trash isn't as terrible as Normal Trash. That's a pretty low bar, but it's still an improvement. We have so many weapons already, and I think this really highlights the true benefit of going to Louisville. Like these main store locations, like the army surplus and all that stuff are cool and all, but what's really awesome about this place are the amount of residential homes. Like look at the sheer amount here and then think to yourself, how many of these are survivor homes and how many of these are filled with katanas, sledgehammers, nailed bats, machetes, and you start to realize how cracked this place is. Anyways, we're not done here just yet though. I'm gonna go up and go check out that other survivor home as well because honestly, I'm a greedy little guy. And it'd be very cool to find something like a machete day two of the apocalypse. And is that a messenger bag? You're going down first. Yoink. Now it's time for the rest of these zombies to meet a similar fate. Now there are quite a few, so I can't get too overconfident, especially because we still have this limp. So we're going to play it kind of safe and just lead them down the street in a big old conga line of death and destruction at every swing. I sure do love me a fire axe. Who's next? I need to really remind myself that this is still Louisville and the horde counts are unreal. We're exhausted right now, so I am going to rest up a little bit and I'll hit it hard in like another 10 minutes. I just need a quick little rest. There we go. We're good. I think we're going to hit these idiots with some good old fashioned fence cheese. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm done with the fence cheese. That was an extremely close call, way too early than I would have liked. We're getting way too overconfident and overzealous. You know what? I think that we shouldn't loot the survivor home today. I think I'm gonna turn right back around and I'm gonna go loot the cars like I originally intended. I don't wanna get carried away with my plans. 
I actually want to dunk on some zombies. And in order to do that, I can't be taking unnecessary risks. I need to like slap myself in the face every time I think of a silly or goofy plan or something that will get me killed. And you know what? I don't want to poke that hornet's nest. Right now, what I need more than all is a calm, cool, and collected mind that follows plans. What I'm trying to say is the complete opposite version of me. <laughs> it's gonna take a little bit to get used to, but if I can reach a fraction of that power, it will be worth it. Come on, city trash, bop them in the head, and let's go check out these two cars down here for hopefully some gas. A tote bag, an empty gas can, which is awesome. Not only that, but this bad boy also has gasoline and a key. <laughs> Oh, that is that is a good sign. We're not going to use this van because it has very terrible horsepower, but it's still an option. Let's go check how much gas is in here. Wow, that is a tiddlewink worth of gasoline. <laughs> I'll take anything at this point, man. Trash is trash is real desperate. We also have ourselves a wrench and an extra Louisville map. At this rate, I might be able to reveal the entirety of Louisville before I even step like foot out of this neighborhood. That is a massive chunk taken care of already. All I really need is this spot here, this spot there, and that spot there. And this entire thing will be encompassed. Time to give this truck a gander as well. And is that a... Is that a crash helmet on that dude? Give me those boots, give me that bulletproof vest. And give me that motorcycle helmet. I'm not going to wear it right now, but if I can pair the motorcycle helmet with a mask, that would be the best combination as it gives us the protection and the insulation to go with it. Is there anything cool inside this truck here? Got another wrench, a tire, a generator inside with a naked man. Okay, it's a little bit too dark for my tastes, so it's time to head back to our nice little base. Just like that, we're back in our nice little base. There's really only a door, so I can't call it safe, but it is home for now. I think next episode, what I'm going to try and tackle is looting that survivor home up here when I'm actually awake and have a full stomach. And after that, I really want to check out this small group of stores here. A lot of this is going to be padded out by residential homes, and I don't want to fight through too many hordes. So this is the closest decent target that I can get to that isn't a home. That's really all I have. We also need to prepare for the chopper event, which should be hitting in another like five days or so. So that'll be fun. Anyways, peace the hell out everyone. You know, I think this is the most amount of bandages I've had on a character that I've gotten naturally. Anyways, welcome back to City Trash's journey in Louisville particularly starting from the CDDA challenge. It is currently 6 a.m. on a nice December day. We've survived around four days killing 108 zombies and today is going to be the day we go check out these stores right here. There's definitely gonna be a bunch of zombies, but I think we're prepared just for that. Oh yeah, I also decided to take out the football helmet for the police helmet with the goggles and mask combo, as that gives me the most amount of insulation. <laughs> Look at how warm our head is because of it. I don't really want to waste any more time though, so as I'm chomping down on this beef for breakfast, we gotta get moving on down. Oh yeah, what a beautiful day for it. The top things that I'm gonna be looking for today is one, gasoline. Two, a battery that actually has charge. And three, a can opener. If we can get that, we're going to be chilling for a long time. And I almost forgot, instead of running down to the gas station really quick, I kind of want to go check out that survivor home we saw a little bit ago. We're probably going to be met by resistance, but this is the best I've been Moodle-wise the entire series. So we're going to hit like a truck. Yeah, these zombies stand no chance against me. Oh my, <laughs> save some for the rest of us, trash. Holy crap, we're just hitting dingers. Oh, I might enjoy this series just yet. It's been so long since I've been able to fight groups of zombies. It feels nice, especially compared to what we had to deal with with the last nuclear winter challenge. Anyways, it's kitchen knife time. I got to level up short blade as fast as possible.
Oh, there it goes. We've taken out a pretty good chunk of them, and I can sweep up the rest with our fire axe. And that is another horde taken care of. That should have been more than enough to pave a way to that survivor house. Crossing my fingers, I get my hands on a katana. Please, Santa, I've been a good boy this year, and it's December in-game. Trash needs this. He really doesn't, but I want to slash zombies in two. You know what? Screw the katana. You know what I could go for? Santa, please give me a can opener. I've been a good boy this year. I know I've been on this can opener to raid, like the entire time I've been alive. But you would think after searching like 20 different homes, we would get at least one. How did the people of Louisville even function without, without it? It's like a basic human necessity. I just don't understand anymore, man. I'm going insane. Oh, I'm also just absolutely dunking on these bozos as well. I love Brave. This perk right here makes it to where you hit so many critical shots and it's so nice. Also, I forgot to say, I am severely underweight. I need, I need to find a, a way to get food. So let's see what we got in here. It looks like the door's locked. The good thing is that I do know a little bit about lockpicking. Whoa! <laughs> Settle down! Just like that, we're in. What do we got? Rotten meat, an M9 pistol, and a hunting rifle. We are getting so many, like, guns today. An M16 magazine, a singular ki Oh, I saw something good in there. But we're gonna need to kill a few more zombies to get it. Oh yeah, it's not looking good back here at all. Okay, time to fight for our life. I also have to be pretty cautious about the staircase because I did not check up there. We've been through worse. We can do this. Trash, you're a, you are, you're a champion of the people. Fight for your right to have supplies, Trash. Nice. There also seems to be a bunch upstairs as well. Oh my, there's so many zombies coming in right now. Mondays, am I right? I think that's the majority of them taken care of. Let's go shut the door behind us. Do a little quick run through of the supplies here, especially the watches. And finally, it's time to reap the reward. <laughs> that right there. That is a top of the line certified Kentucky can opener. I'm gonna favorite this bad boy because this just opened up so many different food avenues for me. I am so thankful to be here. It's funny that a survivor house would have it out of all places as well. You know what? I'm not here to complain. I'm a happy, I'm a happy person. Matter of fact, I'm so happy, I think I've earned some spaghetti bolognese. And even if that's not how you say it, I'm still eating good. So you know what? Screw you. Alrighty, what do we got upstairs? We could still get something cool like a katana up here. So let's keep our hopes up. And our axe ready. Nightsticks, a medical mask, and a very nice baseball helmet. You know what? It's been a w I've not worn any of these in a while. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of the baseball helmet, actually. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the baseball helmet over the motorcycle helmet. We also got a blue pen, which is gonna be good for marking. And lastly, a gas mask. That's even better. Don't mind if I do take that as well. Okay, we actually have some drip now. <laughs> Not bad at all. How does how does it look with the police motorcycle helmet? Nah, you know what? I think the I think the baseball helmet gives the gas mask a bit more of a mysterious look. Yeah, I like I like the baseball helmet. Okay, nice. Not only does it add to the drip, but it also adds to our winter resistance. Overall, this house was definitely worth it, but now it's time for the main event. So let's boogie on down to our stash, drop off our food, and then finally make our way towards the stores down south-ish. I don't know directions too well in Zomboid. All I know is it's down that way. There we go. It's all deposited. Now, I am eating quite a bit of food, and that's in order to gain weight. I really don't want to become emaciated, because that will make my skills and athletics in other areas really bad. And my chances of tripping can get even higher the lower weight I go. What I'm trying to say is that it's bulking season. <laughs> We're not going to get those muscles by eating worms, that's for sure. It's time we roll. 
Another thing that I'm kind of realizing is how far these flames actually spread. I've moved down quite a bit and these buildings are still burning for miles. How large of a chunk did I take out? <laughs> that fire was volatile, man. Holy crap. I mean, it's a good thing I didn't go down here to loot because I would have just been met with sheer amounts of disappointment. And is that a nice varsity jacket? Would you be willing to part that? That would go really well with my baseball helmet. Whoa! Okay. These zombies are ninjas, I swear. Sadly, the varsity jacket is really beat up, so it's not worth it. I was really hoping it would have been mint. Though the more I think about it, I think the only way we're going to get wearable clothing in this run is through clothing stores or bedrooms. A lot of the stuff on zombies has deteriorated so much to where it's kind of useless to me. Even now, my whole outfit is full of holes. And it's definitely not because I tripped on 10 different fences. Don't, don't question that. More importantly, it's time to see what these stores are down this way. I am really hoping that one of them is going to be uh, maybe a clothing store. A clothing store would be pretty awesome. I'm also thinking of like maybe a, uh, a, a food store, obviously. A gas station would be rad. A pharma hug as well. A any one of those and I will be a very happy person. And out of all four options, it's a pizza place. Oh man, <laughs> I was really excited. Hey, you know what? At least we got ourselves a nice police blockade. That gives me some more points. Do you think Trash would be able to make a pizza? I mean, we are a cook. And oh my, I can prepare a pizza. Okay. We're not going to be able to make it anytime soon, but we have tomato paste. I could probably bake some bread as well. You know what? I think that's a fun goal to work towards. I would love to get a nice pizza cooked up in an oven. Maybe in the future, we don't have power either. That's another thing I need. Is there gonna be like a library somewhere around here? I would really, really, really enjoy a generator manual. Anyways, it's time to clear out the inside of this spot and see what it has for us. And I'm not talking about the zombies, but I will take your backpack later, sir. We cleared it out and I've been hit with a very stunning and sad Realization. The fire blew through the pizza place as well. How does fire even travel across concrete, man? And if that wasn't bad enough, all the pizza on the tables is rotten. Oh, what a terrible day. I, I really wanted some, some good food. Some real soul food out of here. Do we have the supplies to make a pizza here at least? Nope, all we have is rotten dough. Okay, maybe there's some there's four different buildings, so we might still get lucky here. Okay, let's let's not be too much of a downer. I think we're going to be working on the up because our next candidate for the day is Greens Market. I hope Greens isn't a produce store. I know they have food, but if it's produce, I'm going to be pretty sad and beaten up. And is that a gas to go down there? Okay, this entire trip is worth it. We're, we can cut down a few different hordes for some gasoline and or gas station treats. Oh, the things I would do for a Twinkie right now. First things first, we got to cut down the competition. Yeah. That idiot right there seems to be the only one out in the open, thus making all three of these locations prime targets for me to loot. We did it in a pretty good time as well because our character is drowsy, so let's try not to get into any major fights, but things have been going swimmingly this episode. Nothing inside the trunk. There is a little bit of gas though. After we're done siphoning out as many supplies as possible and looking for batteries that are full, we're gonna go hit up the gas station first, and then whatever that store is, with the last one being greens. Okay, no charge on that battery. If we can get a battery with a charge, we will be able to get a working vehicle, and that will change the game for us. Anyways, what do we got in here? Gummy bears, black licorice, orange soda, and do I see? Some plonkies? That's, that's close enough, man. Oh, yippee kaye! It's a good day. Also, give me those choco cakes, those tortilla chips, and those normal chips. This is gonna be prime for bulk season. We're gonna be eating like 
king. So we're going to gain all of the weight back. No problem. Maybe we actually don't have that much food, but it, it sure feels like a lot after what I've been through. And if that wasn't good enough, we got 40 cigarettes. Hell yeah. What's in the back here, though? Other than a zombie. Mechanics Volume 1. That's a book that I can read. Cigarettes, a lighter, and licorice. Okay. That just made the entire trip worth it for the smokes alone. Oh, it's a good day for trash. <laughs> Hell yeah. And that lighter is also going to be able to be used to cook food later. Let's go check out this store here. We're probably not going to find much as most of it is going to be rotten. But before I do do that, there is a police cruiser car that I want to check out. Mainly for the battery and maybe a gun in the back. Sadly, no juice in the battery. A couple of maps in the glove box, though. With the final piece of the puzzle being a nice shell bandolier. And is that a first aid kit with a suture needle? <laughs> oh, don't mind if I take that. Okay, wow, we basically just beat the CDDA challenge. Now we're playing Louisville six months later, which is not fun either. The only reason why I'm still alive is because I spawned in a pretty low population area with all residential around me. Basically, what I'm trying to say, if I spawned in the middle of the city, I would have been ripped apart. <laughs> Also, it seems like you can't open these doors. Yeah, they're classified as windows. Huh, that's weird. I guess we can always make our own, though. Oh, how trash is a trailblazer. So, what do we got in here? Rotten produce, water, four cans of food, hot sauce, cereal, dried chickpeas. Oh my lord, that's... That's a lot of food right there. Hey, don't mind if I take one of those and eat that up right now. Each of these bags of peas is worth like 3,000 calories each. Oh, we are doing fantastic. We're going to be a little bit over encumbered, but I think we'll be able to make our way back. No problems. Other than that, though, I think it's about time we head back. We've looted everything we've could. And oh my gosh, there's so much food here, man. I... I have to take it. I have to take a good majority of this, man. Listen, if it hits the fan, I can just drop everything on the floor and run for my life, all right? I'm not leaving this food behind, but I am gonna need to hurry it on up back to our base. Let's get the hell back home. I will see you all then. Oh my, that's automatic weaponry. It's okay. If it hits a fan, I can drop the satchel and that will immediately get my character all good. Also, are the lights on in this thing? Oh, how I want to check so bad. We can check it in the morning. I need to get back home right now. Okay, you know what? I'm just going to go drop my bag and stuff off here, and then I can go grab it in the morning. We're getting way too tired, and that is way too much weight to be lugging around. Meanwhile, I'm going to be chowing down on these split peas like no tomorrow. Welcome to a new day. As you see from our room, we did have to get a little bit silly, but I was able to survive. The one thing I need to do right now is go grab my supplies all the way down there. I was not expecting this many zombies to show up, but by separating the group using this door and just dunking on them with my DPS axe skills, I was able to kill them even when I was exhausted. Anyways, the first thing I want to do is fix up our groin wound. We've earned this. So what I'm going to do is disinfect this bad boy and stitch it all the way up. Oh yeah, I forgot. I actually left our, our stitch back at where I dropped off my bag. So let's go grab that right now. I mean, at this point, the limp is not even noticeable with how fast our character is moving, so I think we survived pretty well. And there's still some zombies that have just wandered their way into the area. As you see, I did enable aim outline for, uh, for fighting just so I could see the zombies I was attacking at night. I'm gonna go disable that because I do like the immersion. But that does show you I was prepared to fight zombies at night. Anyways, satchel acquired, gas can grabbed. Let's go fix up our groin wound in the middle of the street. Why the hell not? 
All we gotta do is disinfect it again, and then stitch up that wound. <laughs> oh yeah, it was a long time coming, and now we can run normally. Let's just bandage that back up, just for the, for the aesthetic. Yeah, I'm feeling brand new after that one. The only thing that I really want to do right now is go check some of those police cruiser cars, just in case one of those has a working battery. Of course, numbing on canned food every single step of the way, because this stuff weighs a lot. Now, what do we have in here? Of course, doing a 360 before I do anything, just so I don't get snuck up on. They're not sprinters, but I don't want to play it too dangerously. I say doing a run in the middle of the pitch black night, and would you look at that? We have ourselves a working battery. I need the car key. God diggity dang it. <laughs> You're kidding, right? Maybe it has a car key inside here? I, I need this so bad. No, just more maps, huh? Oh no, never mind. We can uninstall it. I don't know why it said that we couldn't before. Maybe it's... Uh, what? Did, did me entering it change it? Anyways, I don't care. That's a free car battery, which means that I'm going to be able to start up my car in a bit. Let's siphon out the rest of the gas in here as well, and we are going to be cooking. We got so much done this episode. I'm actually really excited for the future. There we go. Any gas in here? No, none at all. They're also too close together to really loot. For the most part, I'll take the extra shotgun shells, though. Actually, I can loot these just fine. Cool. House of battery look in this one as well. I'm guessing because this is an event, it did spawn with good batteries. No, this doesn't have battery either. Okay, well, we got one, which is all we need. Time to go head back to that one wagon and get that bad boy started. Zombies are real scary business up until the point their head reaches the end of my axe. Okay, wow, there's actually quite a few here. Yeah, that's the respawn for you, but I do see a nice duffel bag that I can take. Thanks for the bag, bozo. Also, we've been leveling up like crazy. We've already he reached level three maintenance, level two nimble, and one in light footed. Things have been going great for us. And we've only survived five days. The chopper event hasn't even hit yet. I know I'm kind of screwing things up by saying that, but I think I'm ready. I mean, come on, look at us. We got a new bag. We got some drip, at least for the gas mask and helmet. Not only that, but we have the two key parts of a puzzle to unlock mobility. Yeah, you know what? At the end of this challenge, I think I'm going to eat some humble pie or I'm going to slap Louisville with all of my might and make it bend its knee. I at least want to go check out all of the landmarks because it's been a long time since I've been in Louisville and especially ones where I can kind of explore without too much of a problem. Anyways, this is going to be our new car. First things first, let's go install the battery. Take that out. Chuck this new bad boy in. The car battery is terrible, by the way. So if I hit so much as a shrub, our car is probably going to explode. But there it is. Our car is also in really good condition for the most part. Lastly, we got to gas this bad boy up. It's not enough gasoline to get us anywhere crazy, but it is enough to get from point A to point B. Yeah, not a bad chunk at all. About a third of the gas tank. So you know what? I think next episode, we're going to get the hell out of this residential area. I've had enough of it, and there aren't any cool landmarks nearby to really warrant looting anymore. We've gotten all the major stores, so I think we ought to go out of town and set up a nice base camp. Thankfully, I do know of one location that will absolutely kick butt. These mansions right down here, I'm going to make them my new home. You're going to see why very soon, but I'm going to save that for next episode. We've killed about a hundred more zombies this episode, gaining even more weight, so hopefully we can get past that in the future. Yeah, I'm pretty happy so far. We've gained a lot of skills as well. It could be going worse, that's all I'll say. Anyways, if you guys have liked this episode, be sure to like, favorite, share, and subscribe for more. I'm probably gonna have to take care of the, uh, the corpses. Next time, though. You know, it just kinda hit me. 
I've been sleeping with five corpses inside my room. Corpses that, mind you, can get up at a drop of a hat given enough time. I am really thankful that we're moving out of here, and that's exactly what my plan is to do today. Yeah. Anyways, welcome back to the CDDA Louisville Challenge. Trash has survived for five days and eight hours, killing 223 zombies. It is 5 p.m., but that should be more than enough time to do one thing, and that's load up everything that we've collected so far into that car that we just got working. So first things first, Trash needs to run outside all the way to the car. Parking it out front so I can grab all of these supplies and get out of here in the morning. While I'm at it, I should probably remove these corpses if I'm going to sleep here one last night. And then after that, we hit the open road. OK, I'm back. You might notice that it's still dark as hell outside, and that was because I woke up pretty darn early. And while I was messing around with stuff in my room, I looked at our radio, and it just so happens that we have the automated emergency broadcast system preloaded on this bad boy. 104. My RNG with this challenge, my RNG with this channel is really freaking good, but the problem is, is that I never use it. But we're gonna tune in and see if the chopper hits today. If it doesn't, we are good to move. And it looks like we're good. Time to wait. Hope I didn't make you wait too long, but it is pretty bright out now. Oh yeah, one last thing that I almost forgot to mention. When I mentioned that last episode we were gonna raid, let's see here. These four homes, I lied. It's actually this small neighborhood right here. This, this right here is gonna be our target. Matter of fact, I'm gonna mark it down as blue because it's important. If you guys didn't know, this spot right here is the equivalent to the West Point McMansions that are a perfect base for any starting person, except this time it's in Louisville. It has a water source, it's surrounded by fences, and the homes are big and plentiful, which makes it very easy to defend. We also got everything packed up inside of this car, like the essentials, including food, supplies, and weaponry. So the only thing that's left to do is to travel there. <laughs> I don't know how bumpy the drive is going to be, but I'm expecting it to be pretty bad. The only way to find out, though, is to see for myself. Which path are we taking? Straight down the road, taking a left and a right at the curve. Yeah, I got it. Oh, and I will say, having a vehicle in this challenge is such a nice change of pace. It really makes me feel like that it's not all doom and gloom, you know? I have definitely already taken a wrong turn, haven't I? Yeah, we're not even on the main road. <laughs> uh, that's not going to stop me from enjoying my drive out of our spawn point, though. I've earned this, damn it. It also does look like that the population has 100% increased with our little drive out. I haven't drove that far, and the numbers are a little bit worrying, but if I'm able to close off the entrance to the mansions with this car by body blocking it with it, I think we'll be able to manage them just fine. Really, the only thing that would kill me right now is our car going kaput in the middle of a horde. That would not be good. And judging from the numbers behind me, I wouldn't have a lot of time to recover from that. And I took a wrong turn. I went to the original four mansions that I was meant to go to. Ah, oh, dang it. <laughs> if the zombies don't kill me, it's going to be my sheer lack of situational awareness because that turn almost got me killed. Wrong turns aside, we have made it to our destination. As you see, there is a fence line that surrounds these mansions that will make it very easy to choke point and kill the zombies. So, after I clear out this nearby horde by shouting, I will show you what we're dealing with. You already know what time it is. 
Oh, that's a lot of them. You know, I really should have eaten before I tackled this massive horde. The trick right now is to try and conserve as much stamina as possible, taking a few pot shots with our axe when we're safe enough. As you see, trash is an absolute bruiser when it comes to axe damage output. So as long as I can manage my moodles correctly, I think we're going to be able to cinch out this horde just fine. Ooh, and it does look like there's a nice little back balcony for me to fence cheese a little bit more with. All right. No, no, we can definitely do this. Oh, yeah, you're not the one harassing me. I'm going to be the one harassing you. Or something like that. I don't know. I'm kind of out of ideas. There's a lot of zombies right now is what I'm trying to say. Oh, and there is our first Moodle of Exhaustion. That's not very good, especially when a massive horde of 20 zombies still wants to rip my innards out. But I think we're going to be able to manage it just fine by using the fences and hoping that I'll be able to separate them out. I'll be completely real with you, it's kind of looking dire, but I'm not going to think about that right now. <laughs> Fly like a butterfly, sting like a bee. <laughs> we're making we're making quick work of this horde. They ain't got crap on me. Yeah, you know what? That was easier than cutting the damn lawn. Puts away axe very coolly. We are going to need to dispose the bodies later, but for now, the surrounding area is pretty damn safe. Whoa, ho, ho, for the most part, there's still a few little stinkers around here. Ho, ho, almost got me, you little trickster. Okay, maybe it's not that safe yet. There are still quite a few zombies. Oh, just let me rest for a few dang seconds, won't you? Okay, now things are looking a little bit more safe. And before I get on with introducing you to these homes and looting each one, I'm gonna go secure the entrance real fast. All I'm gonna be doing is grabbing our nice little station wagon here and shoving it right in front of that little choke point fence line. I don't really need much else other than that, just something to put a nice barrier between me and the undead. And plus, it's not at the end of the driveway, so when I do find a home to move into, I can easily move the stuff while also not jeopardizing my safety. Oh. <laughs> there we go. I think that's pretty good. We'll give it a nice little test to see if zombies can get through it, and if they can't, this place is pretty safe. Hell yeah. As you see, Zombies now need to crawl under the car in order to reach me inside my nice little sanctuary. So aside from all the zombies that are left inside this fence zone, everything's gonna have to come through this choke point here and get to me. Which gives me a huge strategic advantage, especially when the population is so damn high. Anyways, now that things are looking clear, it's time to loot. And the first place I'm gonna go check out is this mansion down here. I don't know which one I'm gonna make my home just yet, but we'll figure that out as time goes on. Really, all it'll come down to is the feng shui of each and every place. Let's not get too comfy though, because the indoor areas can be filled with a bunch of unwanted guests. Well, I guess I'm the unwanted guest. Yeah, the more I think about it, I'm the crazy axe murderer that's entering these homes and murdering people with one swing each. <laughs> oh, bring it. Ooh, nice knife spare you got, sir. Don't mind if I take that right now just for the hunting knife alone. Up, oh, give me one second, ma'am. I'm gonna have to shish kebab ya, but I hope you don't mind. 
I'm sure she won't. As you see, though, these mansion homes are not to be trifled with. Just inside here alone, there is like 15 to 20 zombies. And do you know what else these bozos have? They have a damn can opener. Ah, oh, I can't believe they were holding out on old city trash. <laughs> Don't mind me as I go ahead and eat your, uh, you know, your, your food. I need it. As it is still bulking season. Maybe soon I won't have to worry about eating as much food, but let's see what we have here. Nothing in the kitchen except melted food, a can of peas, a nice propane tank in the garage. Not bad, as I definitely spotted a nice grill in the other home. Okay. Wood glue, a very nice television and fireplace combo, a couple of books that I can 100% read to pass time, a gun case with nothing in it, a few sweaters, and is that a mint condition hoodie? That it is. I'll take it. Actually, never mind. I really like the putty. The, the putty. The, the purple hoodie that I have. <laughs> it gives me more color, even though you can't see it under my jacket. <laughs> uh, lastly, we have a belt, which is so nice. A denim shirt, leather gloves. Oh, I, I love mansions in this game. They have some of the best loot. But it's not even done there. That's a mint condition jacket that I 100% can wear. And lastly, we have a winter hat. You know what? That's kind of drippy. Winter hats are extremely drippy. And it goes with our jacket right now. You know what? We're upgrading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I'm a big fan of these types of hats, so I am very biased. Not even that, but we also have a saw, which is something that I don't have. Oh, man, this is the first house as well. Also, it does sound like someone did get in. I I'll show them a nice welcome real soon, though. Boink. So yeah, that's the first house cleared out and taken care of. And oh my, do we kind of have some drip. The only thing that's kind of a miss right now is our padded pants. If we if we clean that up, we'll actually have like a good color palette going. Hell yeah, trash, you're looking cooler and cooler minute by minute. Up next is this house with the cool blue car right in front. In the car, we have a tote bag, an empty bottle, and what seems to be a bunch of zombies. Oh yeah, would you look at those idiots. Little do they know what they've gotten themselves into. Okay, that's all the zombies. Time to loot. Another funny acoustic guitar, useless clothing, a guitar and gun. Is that an M14? <laughs> what the hell? Okay, yeah, I guess these guys just keep M14s in their house as well. That's cool. Yeah, no, I'll take it. You know, it don't it don't have the magazine in it, but that's that's pretty awesome. I'll go lay that out on the bed. Oh, that is freaking hilarious. <laughs> we also got ourselves another gun case with nothing in it, a school bag, a couple of screwdrivers, and a massive bedroom with two first aid kits in it with a suture needle and bandage. So if I didn't heal my suture needle before, I could have definitely healed it now. What about the kitchen though? That's what I'm real curious about. A whole stick of butter, 3,200 calories packed in a nice little edible package. Not only that, but we have the key to the outside car, which means we have a second means of transportation. No food though, nothing in the garage either. With there being a nice crowbar inside of this closet, which is something that I will take, especially because I'm going to need the ax to do carpentry stuff. More cigarettes, two pairs of denim jeans, which is something that I will take over my padded pants right now, mostly because my padded pants do have holes in it, which reduces insulation. Yeah, you know what? I can kind of dig it. While not loot, I must say this fireplace and television combo in here looks extremely comfy. So I'm definitely keeping that in mind when I pick out my house. Matter of fact, it's a little bit too late to go out looting. I think I'm going to go sleep inside here for the night. Just clearing up some of the zombies in the backyard. So I'll say it once again, good night everyone, and welcome to day 7. I'm a little bit worried about the chopper event coming in, 
but now that I'm here, I do feel a lot better about facing it when we got such a nice choke point. Anyways, we got one more house to loot, and then I think we ought to end the episode here. Of course, checking out this new car that I have a key for, which isn't as good as I would have thought looking at it from the outside. I think we still keep our old station wagon because the engine is a lot better on it. But one thing I can use this car for is parking it out in the front as, as like a permanent blockade, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, we have one more house to loot, so let's clear out the inhabitants the right way. Which is only one bozo. A lot easier than I was expecting. Okay, what do we got inside? A very nice bathroom connected to a pretty spacious interior. A free performance model magazine book. A really good hammer. Carpentry Volume 3, couple more books in there, which I already do have. Vitamins. How to use generators. <laughs> oh, this day keeps on getting better. Now, I do know a lot of you will say why I left the, the generator way back at Episode 1 near those shacks. And I have a very good reason. One, I couldn't carry all of the loot over to our new location. And two, it's a lot more useful being down there. Because the closest gas station that I know that's safe is that spot here. And if there's a generator right there, I can easily move over, drop it down, and have infinite gasoline. So yeah, that just means I, I have basically covered every single one of my uses here. We're not even done there yet though. <laughs> we still got the kitchen and a garage, which has some beer, chips, cigarettes, an empty rotten pot of stew with a single taco shell, a sewing kit with just thread, and lastly, an empty gas can, screwdriver, scrap metal, and that's it. Oh, oh, and there's also a gun case with a spiffo bag and, um, is that a hunting rifle in there? Yeah, there's a hunting rifle with no magazine, though. Bummer. Anyways, what if I told you we're not even done here yet? Yeah, that's right. There's still one last cool thing that I did mention before, but I just want to showcase again. After I kill these zombies, of course. Anyways, what if I told you that this place also has a small pond where I can go fishing, get water from, and have an infinite source of water for as long as I will survive? Yeah, this bad boy has fish stocked in it as well. This is as good as it gets when it comes to prospects and homes in Project Zomboid, at least in Louisville. I think this spot would be an extremely good place to set up at for the defendability, the resources, and the size of the homes. And while I did say that I was going to live inside that home up there, I think that we should live at this home here. For one, I really like the interiors. Two, there's a cool little, like, barbecue in the back that I don't need to replace. And three, it's the closest to the pond, so whenever I feel like it, I can go fishing in the mornings. <laughs> oh, yeah. Give me those jeans. I feel like they would look better on me. That they do. I think this would be a fantastic spot to end the episode, with the next one being a little bit more of, like, a homesteading, securing, and smooth process of me fortifying, dropping off all the loot, and doing all of that jazz, while also preparing for the chopper event. Peace the hell out, everyone. Despite us having a quiet moment right now, as you can see from our surroundings, we have a lot of work to do. Anyways, welcome back to the CDDA Louisville Challenge. Joined by actual trash inside our new forever home particularly that one right there because of its proximity and cool stuff. And if you couldn't tell from the title, this is going to be a home improvement episode and mainly just cleaning up the dead corpses and disposing of them correctly. It is currently 9 a.m. with Trash surviving his seventh day, killing 318 zombies. Our weight is going on up and the zombies never seem to quit. So, the first thing I want to do today is to grab everything that's left inside our car and drop it off inside our new home. Starting off with the trunk and working our way up. 
is what I would say if these zombies stop harassing me, please. I don't even know where these bozos are coming from anymore. They, they just come right out of the trees. Actually, that is a pretty good assumption on where they come from. <laughs> uh, it's a good thing we can cut them down like the losers they are. Time to actually lug these massive piles of food over to their right place. Which, of course, is the fridge and the accompanying cupboards. Is that a zombie I hear? It 100% is. Oh, man. Hi, how are you? Don't mind me as I drop all my food on the floor so I can kill you before you smash open my damn windows. I don't even want to kill you inside my house. Please come outside so I can kill you properly. Oh, is that the helicopter? Oh, it is. Oh, that's not good. That's not good at all. Okay, let's hurry this on up, and we are just gonna have to hunker down for tonight. I really hope our car barricade lasts. Gosh, that is such a terrible time for it. As soon as I want to get comfy. This happens to me, huh? Well, it already knows I'm here, so we might as well try and kill the surrounding zombies right now. You know, all we gotta do is think about this positively. At the very least, we set up our car barricade, so, you know... That's something. We've already been outside, so the chopper has already spotted me. So the only thing that's left for me to do is to... Wait for the zombies to funnel on in towards me. That's fine. I'm ready for a challenge. Let's see what this, uh... Chopper has. Please don't bring too many to my location. I am a fragile man. Yep, here they come. I'll might as well get set up on the, uh car right now and as soon as they come through I'm gonna give them a good old bonk on the head see this is why we keep cars around it makes disposing zombies very easy all it takes is a single bonk on the head and most of these zombies are gonna be dealt with the right way oh that's a lot oh <laughs> oh no I hope you're ready trash it's gonna be a long day Oh, they just keep on coming through. I don't think I'm gonna be able to survive with my stamina. <laughs> oh my god! This is not good! They're like little worms coming out to murder me, man! <laughs> Holy crap! I can't keep up, man! This is one of the more stressful chopper defenses I've ever done, man. <laughs> you can't say you've ever fought a horde this way before, huh? At the very least, this crowbar is built to last, and that's what you really need when you're bashing in the brains of at least, like, 50-plus zombies. How many more? Oh, there's still quite a few that I need to take care of. Of course there is. Why wouldn't there be? I have killed so many, but yet, there are still a few that I need to cull later. I don't want to know how bad it is outside right now, but the one thing that I do know is that I need to rest. I'll be honest, I don't think we're going to get to our homesteading progress anytime today. I think we really just need to focus on, you know, making sure that the outside of our house isn't going to get overwhelmed by zombies. At the very least, the chopper has left us alone, so I can go enjoy some chili and, you know, we can, we can kind of take a bit of a breather. I think my main plan of taking out these hordes is the same way. I'm going to go shout at the end of our car and let them stream on in. Alrighty, I think we're rested up enough. Let's go bring in the next wave. <laughs> Come on. There you go, you little guys. Yep, I'm right here. Look at me. Oh, I don't like how they're just posting up right on the outside here. Please approach me. There we go. A couple of them are getting the memo. Not enough, though. Uh, I'm sure we can wait a bit and they'll slowly start to stream in. Oh man, these zombies really don't want to go under my car right now. This is a bit of a problem. Maybe if we wait a bit, they'll uh, start to climb under. I'm, I'm running out of ideas right now. I mean, they're smacking the car, but they're not entering under it. Can I maybe stab them through the fence line? <laughs> yes, yeah, stay near the bars for me. You'll make this real easy on me. There we go. That's two more dealt with. Okay, we, we're, we're kind of gaming it right now. 
Maybe I'll just wait for the rest of them to, like, kind of calm down a bit. I am definitely not going to be able to uh, dispose of all the zombies down here. So all I'm going to do before I catch corpse sickness is grab anything that looks important and to take it so I can dismantle it for later. Especially the hunting knives. Those weapons are super duper good. Okay, there we go. We got everything I uh, could need from them. Now what I'm gonna do is just kind of wait for them to get the memo, and uh, I still have to dispose of all the zombies like in the main areas in the back, so I'm gonna go do that really quick. Oh yeah, I also need to drop off all of our canned goods. You know, it's really funny on how your priorities can change at the drop of a hat. We have enough food to survive like two months, so I'm not really worried about that at all. Though I definitely am going to save the homesteading process for another day. I just wanted to drop off the food so I don't have to worry about it. Up next, we need to prep up a campfire kit pronto. Oh my gosh, that's a lot more zombies that have uh, moved up here, isn't it? Ooh, that's not that good. I need to, I, I start, I need to, I need to kill these guys like right now. <laughs> God dang, man. I just wanted a single house. And it looks like we're gonna have to fight these guys like normally. Well, you know what though? We have a knife and this knife was made for stabbing. Short blade is so much fun to work with, especially when you can get so many hunting knives off the zombies. Okay, how many more we gotta deal with? I'm ready. I'm so ready to kill. You would not know, man. We were getting a bit tired, but thankfully we did loot a bunch of vitamins to offset that so I can continue stabbing at this horde while shouting at a distance so I can lead these bozos from under the car over to me. There, there are still a lot of hordes on the outside, by the way. <laughs> if I had not put that car there, things could have been 10 times worse. No, 20 times worse. It's really the only thing that's keeping me alive at this point is just how that car funnels them in. Come on, you zombies. Oh, I see that big horde ready to rip me to shreds. Oh, I forgot to pack any pop with me. Uh, could you guys wait? No, they're not gonna wait for me. Actually, I'm gonna go and grab a quick drink and then I'll continue at it. Look, there's even zombies on like the back of the fence line, man. It's brutal. Uh, it's probably gonna be another few days of this, that's for sure. Give me some water, please. Thank you, I don't need that much. Just enough to stab another horde of zombies with. Yep, here they come. Oh, yippee. It's crazy how I can have a smoke break with like 20 plus zombies on the outside ready to murder me. They really don't want to come out though. So I might just need to sleep soon. Oh, I just wish I had a better place to sleep right now than whatever the hell's going on here, you know? Maybe if I give it some space, they'll move. I'm trying to think, really. Maybe I'll enter the car really quick and leave. Nope, it just seems to have riled them up. Ah, uh, you know what? We'll give that a little bit of time, and I'm sure they'll funnel their way through. Let's, let's go ahead inside, read a little bit, and enjoy our time here. Right? At the very least, I can do that, and before I do anything else, I should really barricade our front area, you know, just in case. Nothing too crazy, just a few planks in front of our base so I don't have to worry about the rest of them getting a hold of me. Is what I would say if I had nails to work with right now. That would be a really good thing to do, except I would have to disassemble things and I really don't want to do that with a lot of zombies. I'll just slap a, uh, I'll just slap a long table in front of my bed while I sleep and call it a day there. I'll see y'all in the morning. <laughs> Hello! The day was uneventful, and if you do notice, I moved beds. And that is mostly because if zombies are streaming in the front of my house, I don't want to jump out of the front window. I want to jump out of the back window. I don't know how bad it is outside, but we'll figure that out together. We'll have a nice breakfast of chips and more chips. And in order to prepare for the next horde, I will be repairing our hunting knives as well. Oh yeah, these things are gonna be brand freaking new if I if I don't screw up the, the repair chance, that is. There we go. We got two knives, and that should be more than enough to take out a few bozos. However, it's time for the moment of truth. 
Outside, I don't see that many zombies. Are they all just still outside of my car? Because if that's the case, we're gonna have a bit of a problem. Oh, they are just chilling outside still, huh? And it looks like some of them are crawling through the car as well. I think this is gonna be an eventful stabbing day. Yeah, stick them at the pointy ends. Ooh, also, free kitchen knife. I'll use that before my hunting knives. Oh, the hordes in the front, by the way, they don't get any better. <laughs> Gosh, dang, man. At this point, it might be better to just let them rot, you know? Instead of me trying to dispose of however many zombies are dead in front of my front yard. Come on, you bozos. I'm not running uh, the charity here. You come into my house, you die. Oh, these zombies are really stupid. I, I'm, I'm basically trapped inside this place right now. <laughs> these zombies aren't going to let me leave for quite a while, are they? Well, if they're going to stay out there, I might as well go in the back of my place and start cleaning up the corpses. There's really nothing else I can do. <laughs> Let's go make a nice pile to burn. Actually, I will start in the front of our place here and slowly move these corpses because there's really nothing better to do right now. You know what? We'll might as well make it a bot montage as well. I haven't done those in a while. Bingo! Boom. Okay, that's gonna be most of the zombies in the front of our place. There are too many to stack other than that. So I'm gonna call it good right here. One thing that I want to do before I do anything else though, because it is still early in the day, we have a bunch of stamina and energy. I really don't like those hordes right on the outside. So if I could help it, I would like to destroy them as soon as possible. So the main thing that uh, that the strategy depends on is the strength of my car, my car window. So the one thing I'm going to go check is the hood of this little thing here. And if it's good condition, I think I might be able to continue. Let's see here. Ooh, 40%. I mean, it could be worse. The only problem is that these zombies don't really like coming in. I might try this. All we gotta do is open up a small window, switch windows before they have a chance of getting to me, and there we go. Now we got the horde coming in here, and it's time to begin the carnage. This, this either have, is a really good idea or a really dumb idea. Um, we'll figure that out real soon though, won't we? Hey, that's a new level in stabbing. That's what I love to see. Though I don't think my knife is gonna survive this, um, this onslaught. There are quite a few zombies and it is extremely scary to be working such a short bladed weapon in hordes like this. We get one stab, we gotta skedaddle. Maybe two stabs, if we're feeling a little silly, that is. <laughs> I gotta say though, once you get the hang of PZ combat, I think the knife is the best weapon class ever. Mostly because of the stamina, and the, the stamina, really, because I've been able to fight this entire horde of like 20 to 30 with just a knife, and we aren't even on the first tick of exhaustion. This is so nice. Oh, I love it. The only problem is that we're, we're, we're going through these things like a hot commodity, but my gosh, the sheer power from it alone is worth it. And that should be a pretty big horde taken care of. There should be a few more of those, so, you know, we're not exactly done yet. Ain't that right, ma'am? Alrighty, who's next? Actually, there's not too many zombies down here anymore. Ooh, hoo -hoo. it looks like the old private lime stands out on top after it all anyhow. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I would really like to move my car up a little bit more, but now that we've, you know, taken care of, the, care, care of a majority of them, I'm not really that worried. Uh, is that a hand fork I could use that to stab zombies with? Thank you, give me that. Any short blade is a win in my opinion, so might as well sift through these. It is the most common weapon to find on zombies. Oh, I need a cigarette break, and honestly, trash has earned it after killing that many. 
There we go. This stuff hits a lot different when you're smoking it through a gas mask. It's like a mini hot box in here. We've also killed 447 zombies and survived 8 days and 4 hours. You do the math on how many zombies we've killed. But now that we've disposed of the main horde at the front, I'm gonna go work on getting some more body piles set up so I can potentially burn them later. We have one in the front of our house. I plan on having one in the front, like, driveway area. And lastly, I really need to kill the zombies, or dispose of the zombies in my backyard area. I don't really like this small group being here. So let's pick them up and throw them down. And this one should be our boom. Don't mind me as I take that screwdriver and load you up with the rest of them. I will say this. If the previous challenge, the Nuclear Winter series, has ever taught me anything, it's how to dispose of a large group of zombies, and I gotta say, I'm feeling pretty competent in that skill. We got a big group of zombies here, we got a big group of zombies over there, I think that's a pretty good amount to deal with. Now sadly, I won't be able to use our planks that I cut up just for anything yet. But the one thing I can do right now is set up our campfires and get them babies burning. After I kill four more zombies that are near their f that are near the front entrance. I might as well go up and take out some of the zombies near the front area as well. Whoa, where'd you come from, sir? Oh, watch out with that, huh? You almost got me killed. It's a good thing I'm a speedy little guy. Oh, I gotta say, because of the whole method of killing zombies with short blade, it's always the end combos where you get like five one shots in the row, and it is the most satisfying thing ever. I did all that with the hand fork, by the way, a little freaking pitchfork, a baby thing. Usually people just save these for digging up worms, not this trash. And speaking about short blade, I should show you our current progression on these skills. But before I do that, I'm going to double check, make sure all the zombies in the front are dead and not about to ambush me. Looks good. Okay, so right now our skills are looking like a solid three in short blade, four and a half or three and a half in maintenance, two in axe, one in long blunt, one in sprinting, one in light footed, two in nimble, two in reloading, and two in cooking because we are a burger flipper. Okay, now that we've done that, we gotta go set up some campfire kits. Courtesy of some of these ripped sheets here. <laughs> is what I would say if I could place a campfire where I put all the zombies at. I can't do that for some reason. That's kind of annoying. You know what I'm going to do instead then? I'm going to be real lazy and I'm going to go grab some of the small amount of gas that I do have, pop it in a bottle and burn it that way. It's going to be a little bit scary going out here, but it should be worth it. All I need are two bottles worth of gas and that should set me up for greatness. Matter of fact, I'm going to pour out this other bottle here so I can make room for some more. I got all the zombies on the same tile, so they should burn all in one go. We're gonna burn the corpse, pull out our lighter, dump that good stuff on there, and watch it burn at a safe distance so I don't burn alive. Do you smell that in the air? That's the smell of a clean burn. Oh yeah. Now go out, please. Oh my god, it's not going out. It's not going out. It's not going out. I actually need water. Please fill up the bottles real quick now. <laughs> not that, you know, we're really worrying about the, the, the place burning down. I really should have done this beforehand. Hindsight is 2020. Okay, it actually burned out on its own. Good. That that means I can sleep now. We're gonna go grab a bite to eat, which which I mean chips, and we're gonna go to sleep. And when I mean eat food, I mean eat an entire stick of butter because that stuff is high in calorie. Peace out, everyone. We're going to be barricading tomorrow. Ah, the sound of peace and quiet. Welcome back, everyone, to the CDDA challenge. Last episode, we had to fight a lot of things. And this episode, 
probably isn't going to be too much different. City Trash has survived 8 days, 20 hours, killing almost 500 zombies, and we're not gonna stop there. Right now, my main goal for this episode is to, you know, fortify our base and make it to where zombies won't be able to enter so easily. Of course, in order to do that, we need nails, which is exactly why I say that we're going to be killing a lot of things. But before we do any of that, I need to grab all of the loot inside our station wagon and bring it on inside our new home. And while we are out here, I need to keep an eye on these corpses around the main central area, as there is a pretty good chance that one of them will get up and try to murder me, like this bozo here. I'll give him a good ol' shiving. Man, even screwdrivers go really hard. <laughs> All right, who's up next? Oh man, there are quite a few more than I was actually expecting here. I mean, I'm not complaining because with every single zombie we kill, it increases our XP to be even more dangerous and deadly in the future. Don't mind me as I take that hunting knife off you as well. <laughs> oh, short blade pays for itself. What can I say? And now that all of those zombies are dead, I can finally move the loot over. With the books going inside here, the accessories and crafting materials inside here. Lastly, the weapons being placed upstairs inside of this closet here. We have a bunch of them that I will probably never use before I die. <laughs> it sure is nice to look at, though. Ah, oh, especially that juicy little sledgehammer. Aside from a few bits and baubles that I need to throw away in here, that is going to be everything that was inside our car. Which isn't very good at all, because the one thing that we are missing right now are nails. We don't have any. And when my entire plan kind of rides on us having nails in order to defend our house, you can kind of see the problem. So, that brings me up to my next goal, and that is to explore these buildings right here, disassembling literally everything in sight, so we can scrounge up enough nails to defend and secure our new mansion home. Which means we're gonna need weapons and the tools, which are things that we already have. Really, the only thing we need to bring up to the table is an optimistic and bloodthirsty mindset. I mean, with how many zombies we've killed so far, there can't be that many out anymore. <laughs> I'm just kind of feeding myself lies so I can feel a little bit better about this. Who knows, I might find a big old box of nails within one of these homes here. No, it just seems like there's just a massive horde ready to kill me. Oh, yippee! <laughs> it's already going to be one of those days. Alright, come in single file lines please so I can strafe you accordingly. Oh, that's the kind of combo we're talking about. With each kill I grow stronger. <laughs> can you feel it now? I don't know why I asked the zombies that question. They obviously can't feel a thing. Whew. It just goes to show you the power of the short blade once you get it rolling, though. I can only imagine the carnage once we get up to, like, level 5 or 6 short blade. Our maintenance is already fantastic. So we are getting a lot of mileage out of each and every weapon. I will be saving the hunting knives for the hordes and the screwdrivers, which is something that I also have an abundance of for the singular bozos out there that don't really require the extra damage. I just want to make it to the house now. I've killed enough, right? Nope, they just keep on coming, but I do spot another hunting knife for me to use later. Oh, at this point, it's just a very bad cycle of death. That's the backyard cleared out. I'm gonna go check the front just in case, though. Which looks like a really good idea when you see that there are 20 plus zombies just chilling at the front porch. Though the more that I'm fighting with these massive hordes with Short Blade, I will say one thing. If you don't have a good sense of combat in this game, I would not recommend using Short Blades. Uh, it, is, it is a very small room for error, for not too much of a payoff, especially when only psychopaths like me fight massive hordes like this with a knife. <laughs> but if you're the same cut of cloth as I, you're going to have a fantastic time with it. And that is a horde 
taken care of. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Got a little stinker there that tried to try to get the jump on me. We did lose a hunting knife in that battle, but surprisingly or unsurprisingly, we got another knife off a dead zombie. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever run out of weapon choice in this run ever. And might I say, the payoff was probably not worth it. We killed a solid 50 zombies or so in that little interaction, and all we really have to show for it is a single uh, upper class suburban home. Eggers can't be choosers though. Let's see what we have inside here. Which honestly doesn't matter because I will be tearing this place apart like a nematode very soon. Hello, goodbye. So first of all, let's go check every single room and see what goodies they have inside now. Which includes a book, fishing volume three, another zombie, a can of oats and honey. I'll help myself to the can of oats right now, seeing that we are hungry and I forgot to pack breakfast. Canned carrots, dried chickpeas and pepper, useless clothing, painkillers, another saw, and an extra screwdriver. I'll take the screwdriver, that's pretty awesome, but this was an extremely disappointing house, especially given the, the sunk cost. But the loot didn't matter. What matters are the supplies that we get from disassembling each and every piece of furniture within this place. We are sitting at a solid level zero carpentry, so we're not going to get too much supplies. And sadly, I don't have the carpentry one book to get the XP boost from, so we're just going to have to hit the ground running and hope we get enough nails to make a difference. It's really dark out because it is laid out. We're hungry, we're tired, we're bored, and we're anxious. And guess how many nails we got out of this entire house? Nine whole nails for this whole house. An entire day's worth of work. That is the most demoralizing and disappointing haul I've ever had. Let's make our way home, go to sleep, and cross our fingers that we find a, a box of nails at this rate. But hey, with every bad day, there's a better chance of a new one being 10 times better. Not only that, but it's looking like a winter wonderland outside. The snow is out, it's falling, and it is extremely peaceful out. Welcome to day just about 10. Now, I already know that there are going to be a ton of zombies around the general area, but right now my hope is that this house here, this one, I don't want to circle it in because I will be crossing it out soon, doesn't have too many zombies in front of it, as I have cleared out all the ones there. You know what though? I might walk back on my plan on checking out this house in favor of these homes down here. This right here is a gated community, but the thing that's cooler about these smaller homes compared to our homes is that they have garages in each and every house. And if I'm gonna get a box of nails, it's gonna be from this spot here. So you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out on a bit of an expedition, a whole 10 steps outside my house to see if uh, <laughs> any of those garages has a box of nails inside it. I'm, I'm getting desperate at this point. You can actually tell my mental state by looking at how many corpses surround my house. The higher, the more stressed and or disappointed I am. So maybe we need just one win in our book. Just one. That is all I ask. I'm also getting kind of scared of going through this hedge every single time because there is a pretty good chance we can scratch up our character on those hedges and that tree. I feel like a scratch on a hedge is the least of our worries right about now. I do know that we're gonna have to fight a massive horde in order to get to the spot. Though right now, I feel like a, a hedge scratch is the least of our worries. Because you know for a fact that as soon as I walk down a little bit more into that community, the zombie population is going to get nutty once again. Which is exactly why I have my stabbing knife out. A big old nine inch bowie. Good old Crocodile Dundee would be so proud. Ooh, and it also looks like a nice fog is setting in. Combining with the winter weather, this is a vibe and a half. I'm actually a really big fan of this weather. It doesn't obscure my vision too much. And it kind of gives the world that eerie glow, knowing full well that Trash is one of the last humans on this earth. And oh wow, that is a pocket cluster of zombies. Nice try, Bozo. Man, and the more I'm thinking about, like, knife combat, the more I realize that Nimble 
combining with this short blade would be the most busted combo ever. Sadly, we are only at level two nimble, but once we get to like three or four, I can really see our damage potential increasing. And wow, they just keep on coming out of the damn woodwork, don't they? I have stabbed so many people and I will continue to stab until there are none left. Maybe now I can go check out the house. Nope, never mind. I, I am genuinely surprised at how many zombies have just decided to show up. What I think it is... Ooh, settle down. What I think it is, is I'm making a lot of noise on the other side of this fence here, and all the zombies behind that fence are hearing me and are currently pathing towards my location, thus giving me a bigger horde than what I initially wanted to deal with. That's just my theory, anyways. Woo! New level of maintenance! That's what I'm talking about! See, what did I say? What did I say? Hey, and that's a new level of short blade as well! Ho ho ho! That's the power curve I've been talking about. Oh, and one last thing about the knives that makes it really cool is that the repair is one, cheap, and two, extremely cost effective. I'll show you after I kill these last two. Anyways, for a single, like, third of a roll of duct tape, you can repair 50% of the knife with one go. Basically making this a serviceable horde clearing weapon once again. Sadly, I don't think we found any hunting knives in this horde, but I'm sure we'll find another extremely soon. Alright, RNGesus, I fought your strongest battle. Please give me what I deserve now. Nope, there seems to be a few more, but overall, it's not that bad. Let's go clear out these ones here, and then we can go check out the Juicy Garage next. Stealth kill. Nice. I think that should be enough to finally see what's going on with this little garage here. The window's open, and this zombie is the only thing between me and a potential box of nails. Uh, oh, and a generator. That's actually pretty damn awesome. For, for later. Not right now, though, because we still have a bunch of the day left. I guess it wouldn't hurt to check the inside of the home as well, seeing that we've cleared out everything here. And by everything, I mean a mere fraction of the true horde of zombies that still lurk within this neighborhood. <laughs> it's never, it's never that easy. But what do we have in here, other than another zombie that easily gets stealth killed? Gosh, I'm, I'm like a ninja at this point. Good old trash. Corned beef and a fruit cocktail. I'll actually eat the fruit cocktail right now. Which is it for this house? I really wasn't expecting too much because, you know, they're tiny homes, tiny amounts of loot. I I'm really only here for those beautiful, beautiful garages you see right there. Oh man, that's another horde, isn't it? Yep. Okay, come on, D whatever, I don't really care. It's not like my, it's not like I've been stabbing zombies the entire run of this episode. I'll, I'll stab a few more hundred, if that's fine with you. This one's a little bit bigger than what I'm really used to though. When will you learn that your actions do in fact have consequence? By the way, this number of zombies is after the, the, the hordes that I fought with the chopper event. I do not want to imagine what they looked like before. <laughs> I've been really putting out my neck here just for some damn nails. At, at this rate, I would have a better chance of burning down a house and just sifting through the ashes. At the very least, they're a lot more easy to deal with in small clusters like this because I don't have to stab 20 plus zombies five times to kill the horde. And you can definitely feel the new level of short blade really coming through. If I had picked any other weapon for the series, by the way, I would be so screwed. I'll drop the shotgun and M1911 M here. I don't really plan on using it right now as I don't have a death wish. As strong as my stabbing skills are, they are no match if I don't have anything to stab with. By the way, we have not gotten exhausted once this entire episode. Absolutely bonkers. And there's another generator inside here. Ooh, with a padded jacket. 
I would 100% take this if it wouldn't actually hinder me right now. We already have like almost perfect insulation, so getting more insulation on top of that would not really work out well for us because there is a point to where I just start sweating and sweating is not good in winter. I don't think it has too much of an effect in game, but one thing that I do know is that getting unpleasantly hot in Zomboid will exhaust your character a lot quicker, so I kinda want to avoid getting too warm. Anyways, what about this garage here? I've been a good boy this year. Please, Santa, it's Christmas time. It'd be a real miracle. Okay, a machete, that's, that's pretty epic actually. But I just need a single box of nails, <laughs> please. Let's try and work our way over to the next garage down here. Oh, there's a lot. There's there's a lot of competition right now. Maybe we can get there for a little bit stealthy. I mean, what's a dex based blade guy without a little bit of stealth added in? Let's try not to stealth our way into an early death, though, <laughs> because there are a lot of ways a zombie could ambush us. What do we got inside here, though? A, a full-on barbecue, sheets, a comic book, and a leaf rake. <laughs> oh, come on, man! You gotta give me—you gotta give me something a little bit more tangible. Nope, just more zombies. Zombies on top of zombies on top of zombies. How big of a horde is that? Ah, uh, yeah, whatever. Just bring it on. <laughs> Just think of it as doing the world a favor, all right? Sure, it might annoy you in the moment, but that's one less horde I'll have to deal with in the future uh, until they respawn. And holy crap, that was, that was a brutal combo I just pulled off there. Oh, more just keep on coming from the cracks though. You know what this feels like? This feels like trying to bail out a boat that's already sinking. Like there's a massive cannonball shaped hole in the hole and it's already not looking good, but I still have my little bucket of water and I'm trying anyways. Surely, a, a few more stabs and this horde will be destroyed. Oh, there goes another knife. Uh, it's a good thing I can just do a quick little like pit stop repair if I run up just a tiny bit more. We still aren't exhausted, by the way. We've been fighting this entire time. <laughs> ah, it feels good. It feels good. Though, once I kill like five more zombies, I might pull out the machete just to use it and kind of speed things up a little bit, you know? You know, as bad as the circumstances may be, killing over 200 zombies just for a single box of nails because of the population, the one thing I am grateful for is uh, that I never tried to do this with the zero to hero challenge mindset, because I assure you, with this many zombies and having zero stamina or strength, I would have gone absolutely bonkers. Ooh, settle down there, but you know what? But you know what? Because Trash is an actual Giga Chad with like 8 in fitness and 9 in strength, I can manage these hordes pretty well. Only using blades, by the way. If I would have used a crowbar there, it would have been a death sentence or a multi-day thing. With that last swing, peace has been- nope. There's two more. <laughs> that last swing, however, will mark a- oh, come on. Where do you guys come from? This swing, for real this time, will mark a, a nice, peaceful moment for trash. Bodies litter the streets, but hey, we got a new screwdriver. It's pretty late in the day. I might as well go loot these homes in here as well, just for the smallest chance of finding what I need. We got Carpentry Volume 1 and a Woodcraft episode. A bunch of canned food. Okay, I I'm actually pretty happy I decided to loot this place. A hand torch, which is actually awesome because of how dark the nights get out here. Yeah, not bad. We also have some books with one last bozo inside. Next house. Oh, these hordes never seem to let up at all, but we have made it inside here. This house looks to be pretty furnished, so my hopes are high. Canned peaches. A gun case with 223 ammo inside of it. Military desert boots with a crowbar. I was, 
Yeah, I'll take the boots, man. It's whatever. I was really hoping that would have been, uh, you know, nails. Oh, what a hot commodity that is. It, you know, it's always the basics with this challenge. First, it was a freaking can opener, and now it's just like nails. I'm gonna go check out the garage, and that will be it for my little expedition today. I hope I don't attract any hordes. You know, that would be tragic. If I do, I'm running away very bravely. Car battery and another screwdriver. Gosh diggity dang it. <laughs> I'm not having it today. You know what? I have a better plan on how to get nails a correct way. Though that's going to require a little bit more planning and a lot more gas. I'm going to leave that horde there. I fought enough. I have I've done much more than I actually want to do today. That's all I'll say. And the zombies just keep on coming through one way or another. I'm going home. I'm going to sleep and I'm going to end the episode here. What did we get accomplished today? Nothing. Do I care? No, <laughs> I've killed enough. And I mean it because we have killed 666 zombies so far and the number is only going up. Honestly, today wasn't all too doom and gloom as I did level up my short blade and maintenance skill to a level to where I've become, you know, a bit of a master with it. Sure, we're not up there yet, but I can already feel the power creep and we have been cutting down hordes pretty easily. Next time, I'm going to plan on using the little bit of gas that we do have and our generators to pull off something semi big. And then after that, it's going to be the big one. So next episode, we're going to drive all the way back to this funky little spot here. Peace the hell out, everyone. I think it's safe to say that our home improvement is going to be soft locked for a little bit longer, which means we can get on to the fun and dangerous stuff. Welcome back everyone to the CDDA Louisville challenge. We have survived for around 11 days, killing 667 zombies with today's goal being the, uh, uh, the uh, acquisition. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> The acquisition of gasoline, and with that gasoline, the acquisition of power. I want some lights in my life, and this little drinky dinky flashlight is not cutting it. The course that Trash is going to be taking is as follows. One, we pick up our station wagon and use the rest of the gasoline to drive all the way back to the gas station. Once we make it there, I'm going to park in front of it and head right on over to this garage here, which should have a generator next to it. Once we get that generator, we lug it back over, plug it into the gas station, giving us power and it allows us to use the gas pump. Once we get the gas pump, we got infinite gas. Is it going to go as smoothly as I said? No, absolutely not. Am I ready to stab a couple people? Yes. Yes, I am. The only thing that I real Ah, oh, Jesus, okay. Oh, oh, oh. Anyways, uh, aside from tree zombies coming up behind me, uh, the other thing that I am worried about is not having enough gasoline for our car. <laughs> We only have six out of 30, so I'm hoping that we're going to have enough to power up a generator, even if it's for a single minute. Our generate, I mean, our engine is looking good and our windows could be better condition, but beggars can't be choosers. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was my my heart. <laughs> I can't take this man. Oh, and it's also going to be a pain in the butt driving this thing out without like ruining it. Hey, out of the way, stinky. Oh, come on. Okay, there we go. We got the car out of the, the fence line, which is the main part. I'm going to go head out really quick, mostly because that guy has a free hunting knife. Prepare for double and make it trouble. Wait, no, wait, prepare. I Okay, I'll be honest. My brain has been scrambled from that last jump scare, man. It is. I'm a changed man after that. It's been a long time since I've gotten that scared playing Zomboid, which is saying a lot. Give me that damn knife, though. Okay, now it's time to drive right on down. Hopefully. Do these zombies just spawn, like, day by day? I remember killing this group, like, three different times. I'll, I'll kill you again, though. I am so powerful with this knife already. I, 
I mean, when you can kill zombies within four swings already, I can only imagine what it'd be like once I start to get to the level, like, to the one or two shots. There we go. That is maintenance taken care of. Now, it is finally time to drive. For real this time. Down the roads, up around the curve, through the hordes of zombies, up on the main street, coasting right on through to the beautiful and hopefully zombie-free gas station. I should really loot these homes too for their garages. The, the population up here is a lot better than uh, where it is where I'm currently at. Anyways, we are finally here, so now it's time to stab a couple more zombies. The usual. We also have some gas to spare, so I don't need to worry about not having enough fuel for the Jenny. So, let's see what these zombies have. Ooh, and is that another hunting knife I see? No, it's just a kitchen knife. Doesn't matter though, no one will be spared from my stabbing. Nice. Now that step two is done, and we still have a little bit of gas, it is time to get the generator. Killing every single zombie on the way, because as soon as we equip the... Actually, you know what? You know what's, you know what's much more smart than me lugging a generator all the way down? It's just driving to it. What the hell am I doing? <laughs> uh, sometimes I don't think, but when I do... I, I don't know where I was going with that, but it's uh, a lot better of an idea than whatever the hell I was cooking up before. Ugh, oh, I... I realize how little I missed this place. The more I fight, the more I realize that the key to Zomboid combat is really just situational awareness and knowing your range and what can and will kill you. Once you figure that out, ah, zombie clearing is a cinch. Anyways, right inside here, we got her. Wait, 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 where, where is it? Oh, I think it's in the one up ahead. <laughs> Whoops. Like I was saying, inside here is our generator. So let's take this bad boy right now and load it inside the wagon. There we are. If you didn't know, you can place anything that's above 20 inside a car seat, so long as it is the only part. So it makes transporting stuff like fridges and generators actually possible. Though I'm not really done here yet, mostly because I want to check those three garages there. You never know, and I've already killed most of the zombies here, so... It'd be a wasted opportunity if I didn't take a little bit of a peek -see, you know? Big money, big money, big money, big money, big money. Just some sheet metal, a metal pipe, trapping volume 3 with a free trap box. Hey, you don't see that often. A couple of zombies in here. Another welder mask, which is something I don't have. Is that a second machete? Oh, they... They have to have bumped up the, the machete loot tables, right? I've been finding a bunch of these inside there. There's also a shovel, another zombie. I'm gonna hit you with that jaw stab, or not. And lastly, we're gonna go check these three garage- actually four garages here. We just gotta sift through the trash really quick. And hey, look at that! There's a new hunting knife as well! Don't mind if I do. It's almost mint condition as well, giving us a nice stockpile of two mint condition hunting knives, plus the one we have, and a single broken one with an extra machete. Now, more importantly, what do the garages have? I I'm hoping we find a box of nails, but another thing that I would be extremely grateful for is a gas tank so I could transport gasoline a little bit more easily. So, we have an extra generator, these things are really common, a box of screws, <laughs> that's kinda messed up game, a plastic bag, there's also an extra car here, do we have keys? No. But, we do have some extra metal sheets, a hammer with some wood glue, a box of nails, oh, finally. Our search is over. <laughs> Am I glad to see you. Anything else? Uh, another screwdriver. Yeah, you know what? I don't think really, we really need to worry about using screwdrivers at this point. We have so many, it just stockpiled. I don't know why they still got me. I, I heard her coming a mile away, but we have a bunch stockpiled already. So, I think we can just use our hunting knives. So overall, I will say that this little side quest, that's what I'll call it, 
was an extreme success. Sadly, no gas tank to use for gas transportation, but that box of nails just opens up a whole new avenue for me without the mind-numbing and painful grind. Back to the gas station. Whoa, that was a little bit funky. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. I think I might have just figured out a way to boost my car. And or it's kind of like rubbing your socks together. I got stuck on that police car. And as soon as I got let go of th that police car, I got pushed forward very far. But we're here. So once I'm done killing all the zombies, we can go right ahead and set up the Jenny. Nice. Now, another thing that I will say, as soon as I'm done setting up this generator, is that these things, if I remember, are pretty loud. So we might have to deal with a bit of a fallout when it comes to zombies, and this might turn into a wave defense scenario very quickly. Anyways, we're going to connect the generator to the overall grid. Crazy what they have in those manuals. And fill this bad boy up giving us around 30% fuel, which is more than enough. Turn that bad boy on. Ooh! You know what that is? That's the sound of progress, baby. Okay. It looks like none of the zombies in the general area are getting too curious about it. Okay, okay, for the most part. Other than the, the, these few curious people here, I'm gonna be using the, 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 the hose to be filling up our car, and we're gonna be using our car as a surrogate gas can because we don't have any other containers. Thankfully, this bad boy can hold like 30 liters worth of gas, and if we include our bottles of water on top of it, that is more than enough to warrant a nice trip out. Plus, we can always come back here later. I'm gonna be leaving the generator here for more as time goes on. And now that we're done refueling everything here, I might actually go drink this lashed orange soda just to have a little bit more gas. We're gonna go head home. Though I am gonna need to steal the generator from the place we looted last time. We killed most of the zombies there, so it should be pretty easy to yoink it. And now we are done here. We'll shut that off and get going all the way back home. Unless we go check out the beer and liquor store. I don't think I looked at this place before. No, I didn't. Okay, well, it looks like we got a little bit of a side thing to loot as well. <laughs> don't mind if I do treat myself to beer. Copious amounts of beer. Oh, it is all alcohol here. Though instead of getting all this beer, I was kind of hoping that there would have been more bourbon. You know, some of the good stuff. Whiskey in order to make Molotov cocktails, which will also be important. Hey, sir, do you mind? I'm trying to loot the liquor store right now. I'm gonna go head back, drop off all of our alcohol, and then we'll continue looting this place afterwards. Oh, actually, we do have an empty gas can. It's funny how you can forget about, like, the simplest things. Well, let's load up our alcohol as well. Okay, that's actually really nice, because one full gas can is almost the equivalent to a filled up generator. There we are. I was almost wondering, because it really did feel like in the past I did have one, and it looks like I did, so it wasn't just me going crazy. Alrighty, what else do we have in here? White wine, more bourbon, three bottles of bourbon, beer, another three whole bottles of bourbon. Holy crap. <laughs> We're doing pretty good when it comes to alcohol. And if you think about it, every single bottle of bourbon is a Molotov cocktail waiting to be made. Not, oh my gosh, there's so much alcohol here. <laughs> oh, 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 I'm glad I decided to loot this place. Trash is gonna die from alcohol poisoning. I was about to say trash is about to feel good, but I don't know how much his liver can take. Ooh, and there's even a produce store connected right to it with sadly rotten donuts. Oh, oh, but the chocolate chip cookies are still good. I'm going to eat that right now. There's also some pie dough in here, which is something that I will take. Trash is a cook, so we might actually be able to make that pizza real soon. And that's it. Okay, we've spent enough time here. Let's go head all the way home. It, it's, it's, it's more than late enough for that. 
<laughs> Though before we do leave, I will inform you on our alcohol haul. We have nine bottles of beer inside our trunk, eight beer cans, seven bottles of bourbon, one red wine, three white wines, two bourbon in our bag, one red wine in our bag, another two white wine in our bag, and five beer bottles and cans in our bag, which means we could easily drink ourselves into a coma. Now it's finally time to head back home. Do we have working lights? That we do. Cool, cool, cool. It's, uh, it's almost worrying on how well this episode went for us. Uh, let's hope we don't jinx it and also not get lost at the same time. Though I did pick up another cool little Zomboid tip, so oh my gosh, please? Okay, aside from me crashing horribly, I did pick up another Zomboid tip which helps extremely nicely. If you press F2, you can pause the game. Actually, no, you have to open your map first, and then if you pause the game, you can still look at that map, which is extremely helpful when you're terrible at reading roads and you get lost very easily. So unless the engine explodes, I should be able to navigate my way home pretty safely. Yeah, 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 no problems. You know, if the suburban areas are this bad with population, I I'm kind of terrified to learn how bad it is in the downtown area. <laughs> Especially with the respawn and how volatile it is with the six months later preset. I don't think I would be able to clear out like say something like the mall without just bombing the entire place with Molotovs because they would quite literally respawn faster than I could possibly kill them. That's for future trash to think about though. Not that that's an extra character, but who knows, there could be a future trash in the long lines of trash. I wanna go home, I wanna drink my bourbon, and I wanna sleep, damn it. It's about time for trash to get some real shut-eye. Oh, another fun thing about alcohol, and particularly bourbon, is that it's extremely high in calorie count, with each bottle being around 1500 calories. Which is fantastic when our character is an underweight goober. And once I finish off this final cigarette, we can put ourselves into a nice sleep. And with that, on a nice snowy afternoon, I welcome you to day... Day 12. Day 12. Almost a quarter, or a third of the way through our first month here in this prosperous and beautiful town. What I need to do right now is drop off all of the supplies that we have gotten, which includes the alcohol, and the gasoline, which we will leave right outside in the porch where I'm going to be dropping our future generator. 13 bottles of beer, 11 beer cans, 8 bottles of bourbon, 2 red wines, 4 white wines. Also some future pie dough and margarine for us to cook up later, though I think we're going to need a few things in order to do actual cooking, like a rolling pin. I should really take those in the future. Ah, eh, I'll remember it for next time. Now that we've dropped off the alcohol and supplies we've gotten from that run, the last thing I want to do is get our generator and plop that sucker down. It's just a walk away, so it shouldn't be that bad of a trek. With respawns like this, your guess is as good as mine. Ooh, free crowbar as well. What's up, sir? At this rate, I'm just waiting for my next katana. Whoa, out of the way, bozo. Oh man, I was not expecting this many zombies already. I, I've been gone for a day and these, <laughs> so many have moved their way into the area. Oh, if I didn't have this knife, I'd be a little bit worried. We're almost at the generator though. And here it is. We are going to be pretty, actually I was about to say pretty over encumbered, but if we equip it in both of our hands, we're only at a fairly heavy load, which means I can just jog all the way back home. Okay, that was, uh, there was a little bit of resistance, but overall it was a pretty nice day. Or er, walk, I guess. We're finally home though, which means I can drop this bad boy down, connect it, and fuel it up, starting it. For my last Private Line Pro tip for this episode, don't ever put your generator indoors. Always keep it out on like a nice little balcony or just outdoors in general because you can and will gas yourself if you put it indoors. Carbon monoxide is no joke, both in-game and IRL. Now we just gotta fuel it up and start that bad boy up. Do you hear that? That, my, my friends, is the sound of progress, and more importantly, 
lights. Oh, this is so cool. We no longer live in squalor. We can turn on the lights. And that kind of gets me on to what I'm going to be doing next episode, which is finally defending and securing this place, which was a long time coming with those nails. And also starting to build up our electrical skills. We have some books for it, particularly Electrician Volume 1. And we also have an abundance of clocks and stuff that I can dismantle as well. Yeah, in here, there's some things that I can do around the area. So yeah, I can finally say with 100% confidence that next episode is gonna be chill. Though the one last thing that I do want to do before I end it off here is blocking off the entranceway. There's still gonna be a few stragglers coming in, and I don't like that at all. So we're going to drive this through so I won't need to drive it out all the way over again. And we're going to take out the battery, plop it in there, and fuel it up with a little bit of gas. Really, the most important part out of this entire thing is the batteries. Until we can at least find a battery charger because we have, you know, electricity now. Maybe we can find one of those in a mechanic place somewhere. I don't know if there's any nearby because we are in suburbia. But it'd be, it'd be, it'd be nice to put on the list. Let's go park this bad boy in front of the gates now. Okay, it's actually not the best fit. There's still a little gap in there, but that's, that's good enough for me, man. Okay, I lied. It's not the best as there is a noticeable gap that I can go through, but it's better than nothing. And it funnels the zombies in just a tiny bit more. We'll probably like slap a fridge in front of there and call it a day. I'm going to siphon out the rest of the gas and hopefully everything else inside the car to use for generator fuel. I'm pretty damn excited about next time to see where that takes us. Peace the hell out everyone. Now this, this right here is a vibe. It would be nice if there were actual running channels, though. Uh, we're kind of on our own. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to the CDDA Louisville Challenge. And finally, we get to have our big break. Which means I'm going to be grinding up skills and doing some stuff all around the house. With the first thing being washing our character off. We are absolutely disgusting and I have not taken a bath in over 13 days stabbing zombies and getting all that gunk all over me. Now I won't be using the sink water but the cool thing about this place is that we have a pond right down there that I can use. And I scratched myself by walking right into a tree. I come on man okay that's fine I guess that's another bandage for our body oh yippee. Well, uh, we can still wash our character off, which is gonna be nice. I don't recommend doing this in real life because this would make you extremely cold, but we are also not too far away from our house. Okay, let's go wash everything off and then we'll continue uh, with probably some reading. There we are. We are now a clean man with the snow washing away as well. Let's go grab something to eat and read a book. I don't know which book yet, but we're going to be reading for the rest of the day. We have carpentry volumes. We also have a little bit of exposure, survival and woodcraft for fishing and carpentry. So I might save that. I guess we could just get started with finishing up the electrician volume one so far. Yeah, I think that'll be a good spot for it. And while we're at it, we can help ourselves to some canned food. Actually, you know what? By canned food, I mean another full bottle of bourbon. <laughs> it gets the same job done. With the added benefit of pain killing and inebriation. We're not going outside today, so why do I care? Okay, let's go pump out the rest of this book right now. Ooh, also Carpentry Volume 1. That'll be a fun one to do as well. And do I hear a zombie? Oh, there is. Oh, come on! I was... I'm gonna... I can't have a break in this house. That's my freaking window, dude. Okay, whatever, man. That's gosh diggity dang it. There's glass all over the floor. This is supposed to be my day off. All right, whatever. We'll just shut the curtains and forget about it. Awesome. That is the entirety of Electrician Volume 1. Red up next is going to be Carpentry, but it is 11 p.m. So we're going to go get some sleep now. Oh, and while I'm at it, how about we go help ourselves do a nice TV dinner since we can prepare food now? Hell yeah. 
Also throwing those empty tin cans and some glass. I don't really care too much about that. There we are. There- oh, I burnt it. Okay. I can't have- I can't have anything in this household. I'm just- <laughs> I'm gonna go to sleep. I'll see y'all in the morning. Hey there, it's a new day. We kinda overslept because of our bad sleeping time, but that is fine in my opinion. It's a new day, and judging from the, uh, the window accident, I think our next goal is going to be defending and preparing enough planks to barricade every single window in this household. But before we go do that, I want to dismantle any technological piece that I have inside this house so I can build up the skills to, uh, to maintain the generator and hotwire. That's the word for it. We got 19 digital watches from the zombies we've killed, so it should be pretty easy to level up. Oh yeah, look at that climb. It's probably not going to be enough yet, but we're getting there. Now that we got that done, we need to get some raw materials to barricade with, which means bringing out the old Axaroonie. Bare minimum, I would want at least three planks per window. How's our generator looking as well? 72% fuel? Yeah, we're doing fantastic. Okay, cool. So it looks like there's going to be one log per window then. Awesome. That should be more than enough. Let's go place them now. We'll, we'll actually drop two planks per window. Yeah, you know what? I think we got enough for it. We don't have a lot of windows for this place anyways. Ba 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 boom. That's going to be one log per every entrance with some left over. And looking at the overall defense of this place, I might actually move my generator right now. Don't mind those zombie sounds, those are zombies on the other side of the fence line. Matter of fact, what I might do right now is craft up a quick spear and take care of them right now. Yep, just gonna give you a few pretty stabs in the head and that should shut them up. Awesome. Sauce. Please die. Any minute now. There we are, there's another one here somehow. Give you the good old stab as well. Boom. Like I was saying, I kind of want to put the generator in the back of our house as it is farther away from the more populated zones and it would kind of incentivize the zombies coming in through the front, which is where they will be coming from and I can go ahead and defend it the best I can, including barricading the door there. I'm going to do just that and I'm also going to grab those logs over here and put them on the inside so I can double barricade each of the spots. There we are. I like this spot a lot more as it is a little bit more central to all the cool things I have, like the cool grill, uh, our entrance. Hell yeah. We'll also drop off all of our fuel used for the generator right here. It's time to do a little bit of barricading after I drop off the rest of the logs, of course. Da, 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 da. da. I don't have any more logs for that door and also the bathroom window, but those are already protected by an airlock with another door, so I'm not as worried about that. The only thing that's left to do is to saw up each individual log and place them down with our hammer and new box of nails. I hope a hundred will cut it. It should cut it, but yeah, wh who am I talking about? It's barricading time. And with this final plank being placed, I won't need to worry about a zombie barreling through my house anymore. The one status that we did pick up on the way is depression. So my medical cocktail to fix that up goes as follows. Puffing a cigarette and helping myself to a nice wine bottle. How's my weight looking as well? We are actually losing at 74. So you know what? Now that we do have all of this stuff going on, how about we go cook up a nice soup? I mean, we have a stove here. Well, might as well use it, right? Gosh dang it, Trash is going to live like a civilized person soon. And that starts by eating like a normal person. So let's go see what we can go cook up. Especially now that we have the fridge so we can uh, save refrigerated canned goods that we've opened before to use for ingredients. To start off with, let me move all of the non-perishable stuff over to the non-perishable cupboard, just so I know what I've opened and what I need to open. Once we're done with that, let's go pick out our food choices. 
which will be some peas, some carrots, some dried white chickpeas, and a little bit of butter and pepper. Let's go create the stew. Thus making a beans, beer, and vegetable soup that gives minus 67 hunger, minus 61 thirst, minus 2 boredom, and minus 32 unhappiness. Let's cook this bad boy up, eating some right now, and then saving the rest for later. Let's turn it off before it burns. Oh, minus 87 hunger, man. I wish I knew how many calories were in this thing. <laughs> I guess we'll see if we eat it and if we gain any calories. Let's see. Now we, we stopped gaining weight, which is good. So we'll save the rest for later. I'm also going to help myself to a beer can so I won't be depressed in the morning. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, it feels nice not having to fight a few hundred zombies for every square meter you take of land. I'll see you in the morning. Alrighty. It's not exactly morning yet, as it is 4 a.m. I'm not really one to waste time, so while we are waiting for it to lighten up a little bit, we're going to be reading Carpentry, which is kind of my next segue into what I want to build up. We have that one VHS episode, so my whole plan right now is to get to level 2 Carpentry, then read the entirety of the next Carpentry volume, volume 2, and then after that we're going to watch the VHS and hopefully get a bunch of XP from the XP boost multipliers. What I'm trying to say is that it's going to be a carpentry themed day. And that starts with a little bit of knowledge. Not too much though, because we are extremely close to level two. Yeah, about 100 pages should do fine. Now that it's 9 a.m., we can help ourselves to our fulfilling breakfast that we will be able to make more of later, which kicks off our work day. Before I do get started with the carpentry, another thing that I really want to do is remove all of these wall vines around our house. It's very unsightly, and I want this place to look clean. There we are. We can't get rid of the cracks, but the house looks a little less decrepit than it did before. Now begins the carpentry grind, which is just going to be me disassembling every single piece of furniture in our neighboring homes. I know I said I wasn't going to do that, but I'm never going to visit these homes again anyways. So I might as well get the XP boost out of it, right? It's it's it makes the most amount of sense is what I'm trying to say. And plus, we might be able to find some stuff that I missed with the looting beforehand, including any digital watches that I come across on the way which is something I might loot through right now. Surprisingly, I was pretty thorough with finding the digital watches the last few episodes, as there are only three that I missed in the big pile. Not only that, though, but we might be able to see some maggots pop on those corpses pretty soon as well, which I can use for fishing bait. Don't eat the corpse maggots, by the way. Uh, <laughs> as tempting as it is to eat maggots off a dead, rotten zombie corpse, it will infect you, but you can use it to catch fish. Anyways, we're at the house, and it's time to do a little bit of disassembly. Hey, there it is. That was extremely quick. Way more quick than I was expecting, which bumps us up to two levels in carpentry. I'm going to stop my carpentry grind here, but that won't stop me from getting a few bits of electrical XP in there as well. We're getting so damn close to electrical level one, so I, I want that as soon as possible. Though another thing that I do want to do before I do anything else as well is get a bunch of ripped sheets from these corpses here. Well, might as well turn, you know, all the rotten decay into a resource, right? And I'm going to do it with this big pile of bodies here. We don't need to worry about getting jumped, as I can see straight down the chute and all I'm gonna be doing is ripping up all of the clothing here actually it might be easier to do this which is grabbing our campfire building a fire next to all of these bodies and technically using all of these as fuel but in reality I'm just gonna pick them up and throw them right down Haha, <laughs> I learned that from Genuine Toad. Her videos are pretty cool as well. It's actually an extremely nice uh, life hack, which makes collecting clothes a lot easier. I'm going to drop all of the clothing off in a pile here, though, 
and I'll do that a few more times so we basically have an infinite supply of rip sheets. Now that is a pile of clothing to be proud of, and we have stripped most of the zombies in the pile, so they're just in their speedos and cowboy hats now, which is very good timing as the storm is coming in. I think that's everything I really needed to do. We have so much clothing now, so I, I don't think I'll ever need to worry about clothing. Yeah, it's, it's 158 pieces or articles of clothing that I can turn into sheets for whatever I want in the future. Up next, after the cigarette, of course, is going to be our VHS watching mind, which means I'm going to need to get through an entire book of carpentry. Our generator is still looking good at 63% fuel, and we'll might as well cook up another pot of stew while we are doing it. It feels nice to actually cook food, <laughs> instead of being the goblin like I usually am. It's nice, and it sure beats eating entire things of dog food. We're gonna be cooking up the same beef stew you remember, but this time we're gonna breach into the corn and chili market. Chili beans and corn with whatever else I can shove within this cooking pot. Let's see what we got. And here we have it, a beer, vegetable, and bean soup. I used every single type of bean that we have, so this should be high in calories and extremely effective in beating up our depression. Mine is 47 on happiness right now, and as soon as we pop it in the oven, that should increase as it's being cooked. Another thing that I kind of found out while exploring my house is that our garage is cut off a little bit weirdly, but more importantly, we have an extra gas can in here that I can use to transport gasoline with. That That's about it, though. Pretty cool, though. Pretty cool. Minus 87 hunger. Hubba bubba. If this doesn't put meat on our bones, I don't know what will. We'll drink half today and we'll drink the other half tomorrow. Come on. Yeah, there we go. That's the weight gain that I'm looking to see. All righty. For the rest of the day, which isn't too long at all, we are going to be reading our book and also dismantle that video game. Hey, that's a new level of electrical as well. Oh, we've, we're so productive today. My gosh. All I got to do is get through an entire 260 pages on a book, which is going to take multiple days. But you know what? I'm here for it. Ah, what a fantastic morning. Nothing like waking up, fueling up your generator, and knowing that your day is gonna be peaceful. We still got a bunch of gasoline left, and I can actually, let me turn this off, repair the generator with the scrap electronics as well. Oh, we're, we're winning. <laughs> we are absolutely winning today. So look at that, it's back at 184% fuel. I'll go fuel it up with the rest of these bottles here as well. And we'll drop those off and save it for later. Back at 100. Now it's time to absolutely guzzle up an entire pot of stew, smoke a cigarette very stylishly, and reading a carpentry book for the rest of the day. That's the entirety of Carpentry Volume 2 read, which means I can pop in our Woodcraft Episode 6 and we should see some massive XP improvements. Each episode of The Carpentry Show is a limited resource, so we need to make the best bang out of our buck for it, especially with how hard it can be to get resources. And with a times 5 multiplier, this single episode of Woodcraft should bump us up at least one or two jumps, hopefully. The only way to find out is to sit down and to see. Trash is so invested in this right now. This is this is everything that we've been leading up to. Almost an entire month of survival <laughs> just to get our carpentry XP up at a significant rate. Boom, look at that. Just one tick and we've already bumped up an entire third of the level. <laughs> That's the kind of XP that I like to see. Yep, that's level three carpentry, very easily. Sadly, it's just one episode, but that is still extremely nice. Overall, today has gone extremely peacefully and well. I'm just kind of waiting for the corpses outside to, you know, start to disappear and all of that stuff, which hopefully is soon. I'm going to go check out the other house just in case if there's anything I missed, because I do remember there being uh, the M14. But more importantly, I want to look to see if there's any cooking materials in here. Like, look at this. Cutting board, muffin tray, rolling pin. All of that, fantastic for setting up some recipes. That is what I'm looking for. 
That is the good stuff. Okay, is there anything else in here? Oh, could you imagine if I could make muffins? Oh, that'd be a game changer. Oh, okay, there's a couple of screwdrivers here. We also grabbed the M14 and the, whatchamacallit, the cooking supplies, which is the most important part. Other than that, I don't really see much. Yeah, that's it here. Ooh, other than the old pair of jeans that I actually left behind before, which I will take because it is mint condition. Not bad at all. If I got a new bulletproof vest, we would have a perfect set of clothing. Let's go lug all this back, get an extra little bit of soup in our system, and I think this will be a good spot to end the episode. I'm also thinking today, instead of preparing just one set of stew, I'm going to prepare two. That way I don't have to worry about preparing food like every day. Yeah, that's a pretty smart idea. First of all, let's go drop off our M14 and our cooking supplies. Looking at the recipes, we are extremely close to be able to bake a pie. If I find a baking pan, I might be able to make a... Oh, that's going to be really awesome. Okay, that's a future type deal. I'll just drop off the supplies inside this like junk drawer and we'll figure that out later. Okay, it's about time we go cook up some stews. There you have it. We have a beans, beer, and canned potato soup giving us minus 66 hunger, minus 61 thirst, and minus 42 in happiness. And on our second one, we have a vegetable and bean soup, including beans, chickpeas, some carrots, and pepper, which is minus 77 hunger, minus 48 thirst, minus two boredom. Matter of fact, there's so much soup, I'm gonna have to cook them one at a time. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. But if it works, it works. There's the first soup taken care of. Drop that in here, put that in there, cook that up, and I'm going to go eat half right now. Hopefully that should bump us up a bit. There it is. Oh, look at that weight gain. Awesome. The rest goes in the fridge, which which might I add gives you minus 100 hunger. Man, I've been missing out with cooking, I must say. But I think that is going to be the end of our homesteading episode. We barricaded the place, we delved into cooking, we got our skills up, we watched a little bit of television, and now, next episode is gonna get pretty fun. If you guys didn't know, right down the highway here is a hardware store and a gun store with a gas station which would be pretty awesome, and it is the closest real landmark that we have. So I kind of want to pay it a visit. The only problem is that there's probably going to be a few hundred zombies. But that's where the collection of bourbon comes in clutch. We're going to raise that place and burn it down. So it's going to be pretty high octane and pretty damn fun. Anyways, peace the hell out, everyone. Hey there, and welcome back everyone. We have survived just about 16 days in the big city. We've been coasting by pretty easily, but I think it's about time we step it up a notch. And by step it up a notch, I, I, I mean big, we're cranking it to the max. On the last episode, we did a little bit of homesteading, and this place feels a lot more like home, especially when we have a bunch of home-cooked meals. So don't mind the trash as we guzzle down this entire pot of soup so I can inform you on what our plan is going to actually be. So trash is right here in his nice little home. And right now, I think the one thing that we are missing are more construction supplies. And this one's a little bit more of a personal need, but I want some guns and ammo, which leads me to our big target for this episode. This little strip right here has everything we could ever need. One, there's a there's a hardware store that's gonna have nails, tools, supplies, weapons. Two, there's a gas station down here so I could potentially have a second refuel point. But three, the main point of this mission is a gun store. A gun store that is filled with weapons and ammo. Normally, you wouldn't be able to get inside said gun store, but Trash may or may not have the skeleton key required to get that loot. Now, one last thing that I will say is that there are going to be a lot of zombies. This is six months in, and this whole strip is not going to be a walk in the park. So we're going to need a plan 
to take out most of the zombies. And no, I can't stab them all. So here it is. One, we're gonna leave our nice little home compound, drive out all the way down here. Two, we're gonna create as much noise as possible, and I think you can know where three is going. We're gonna make a couple of Molotov cocktails and burn some hordes right down to the ground, hopefully killing most of the zombies in the area so I can slink my little grubby mitts around the loot. Is this a really well thought out plan? No, not really, but I'm not too worried as, as we're kind of chatting out right now. So aside from the sledgehammer, we're going to be making three different Molotov cocktails to throw on the way out of these bottles of bourbon. There we are. That is a lot of calories down the drain, but I think a bunch of dead zombies and potentially more calories is well worth it. So we have three Molotovs, two lighters that don't have a lot of juice in it, which is kind of the worst part. I need more lighters. And we have one sledgehammer with a bunch of knives. Yeah, you know what? I, I think we're ready. And the last thing that I will grab is an extra little bit of, uh, a little bit of food. And when I mean a little bit, I mean I'm going to take this entire minus 100 hunger soup with us. <laughs> uh, we're going to be a very, very full boy when we leave. We just got to make sure to shut off the generator while we go. Cool beans. Let's go load everything in the back and get ready. This is going to be a big episode. I can feel it in the air. I literally can because there is a wind chill that I can physically feel in game. <laughs> uh, there's so much clothing here as well. Holy crap. Oh, and I forgot to mention this vegetable and bean soup you guys see almost weighs 10 whole pounds more than the sledgehammer, which I find pretty freaking hilarious. How much gas we got in the station wagon? More than enough. For a minute there, I was kind of confused on why the car didn't start, and that's because I forgot to put in the battery. Whoops. We'll fix that right away and get started driving right after. All right. It still feels extremely weird to be able to drive a car and to leave these areas without too much of a problem. There's, there's just a small feeling that things are not going to be okay when I reach this point. I, I really don't know how many zombies are going to be there. What I'm trying to say is I don't think we prepared enough. Oh, there are already so many zombies. Like, look at this. This is, oh my. Okay, this is actually not good. This is not good at all. We are in a bit of a pickle here. Let's drive on out. Okay, wow, that is a lot of zombies. <laughs> uh, I kind of want to go home. If this car breaks down, it's... Why are there so many? Oh my gosh, this is not a good look for me. Oh, I'm going to die here. <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's not a lot of room to turn and avoid these hordes. So our car is just passively taking damage right now. Okay, we're cool, we're cool, we're chilling. Yep, we're gonna need a new car by the end of this, I feel. <laughs> I do not trust the station wagon with my life anymore. But we got out of the, 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 the really bad part. We're gonna have to drive back through another day, but for now, we're kind of coasting. And just like that, we made it over to the place. There's an EP tools right up there, and if we go down a little bit more, we'll find my personal favorite spot. It's actually not my personal favorite spot, it is the only spot, which makes it my personal favorite spot. The AA Ron Hunting Supply Store. So, all we gotta do is honk the horn a few times and evacuate the car before I get overrun. We have a fence here, we should be able to navigate just fine. Especially when all of these bozos are gonna be walking and I don't need to worry about sprinters. I am kinda wishing I did bring a shotgun though. That would have made things a lot easier in terms of clearing out all the zombies in the area, you know? Ooh, it's getting real spicy already though. Bubba bubba. We'll just do a few more circles like this and we should have a pretty good fireball on our hands. I think that's a pretty Molotov-worthy horde right there. I'm definitely not stabbing my way through it, that's for sure. I was really expecting more zombies in the strip market area. There honestly isn't too many out here, especially one that requires three Molotovs. I think we throw down our Molotov like right now, get them all burning up, and we clean up the rest with our knife. There are still a bunch of zombies just around the area, so I'm sure we'll still get a bunch of stabbing in. But this time, we're getting a little bit spicy. Hell yeah! Ooh, that is a good throw as well. Right in the middle. Real good dynamic on that. Let's go save the rest of our lighter. 
so I'm not using up the durability. It should probably take these zombies two in-game hours to die. I mean, you know, we, we've been here, we've done that. The only thing I need to worry about is not walking on an open flame and killing my character in five seconds. That would be an extremely dumb way to die, I would know. Oh yeah, I also forgot to mention I am going to be staying behind the fence completely while these zombies burn up. So there's less of a chance of me screwing up and burning down the building that I intend to loot. You know, just having that nice little little barrier is really good so I don't overstep my boundaries a tiny bit. Because with fire, a tiny step can very well be a massive leap. <laughs> There's also some real irony in smoking a cigarette while the entire world burns up around you. I'm not one to point it out too much though. Oh, now they're dropping like flies. Holy crap, look at the bodies pile up! That That is the best part about fire combat, is that once one drops, the rest of them are going down with them in a very short succession. Oh, that is so satisfying. It don't pop up on our kill count, but that don't make it any less cool to see. Oh, do you hear it amongst the screams of the undead? Yeah, that that is how we're going to be killing like 90% of the zombies from here on out with how crazy the population gets. Uh, now that there's only a small little cluster, I think we can start stabbing them with our screwdriver to get a little bit more, you know, short blade experience under our belt. I just have to be extremely cautious because there is a chance that the fire just spreads right in front of me and I burn myself and die tragically. You know what? I'm not going to risk it. I'm going to let these few zombies burn out the normal way. All things considered, that went really smoothly. I mean, we did leave a massive pile of burning corpses. I guess burnt corpses. There's not a lot of fire going on, but hey, that is like a hundred zombies I don't need to stab and get overwhelmed with. I'm sure there will be a few up ahead, but not as much as we were dealing with before. So, let's go clear out the rest of these bozos. Oh yeah, there's still quite a few with our screwdriver. You know what? No, we're gonna use our damn hunting knife. We have so many of these things, we we'll might as well use it. These zombies got nothing on me, all right? It's gonna be a clean sweep. Also, really cool thing, your character actually does a little stylish, like, flip with their knife when they do a ground stab. They actually throw it in the air, catch it, and then stab the zombie. One of you guys pointed that out, and that is extremely cool. <laughs> and I've never been able to unsee it. God, we're, we're so awesome! We're so freaking cool, ain't that right, ma'am? Hell yeah! With a few stylish combos from a screwdriver and a now broken hunting knife, we have killed most of the zombies in the area. There are still probably a few stragglers up near the hardware store end of things, but overall, it's pretty damn clear. Let's go check the cars, and then it's right up to the hunting supply store. There are a couple of zombies in there, so I am a little bit worried, but also at the same time, bring it on. Hey, look at that! There's actually a key in the ignition of this truck as well. Mind you, a pretty mint condition truck if you ignore the blaring engine problem. That's a disappointment. I really want another car before I do leave, because, you know, the one that we have isn't gonna cut it with that many zombies. I need to run over if, and I need something reliable for that, like a 73% condition station wagon, which is quite literally the same model as my other one, but red. Okay, does this have a key, though? I kind of forgot about that. It does! Okay, we're gaming! Now that we've got all those bases covered, I should probably kill that massive horde and then we'll go loot the gun store. Yeah, we'll pull out our hunting knife. It should be pretty quick. Hey, that's a new level of nimble. Uh, if we get one more, I think we might actually be a killing machine. Already, we've been able to backstab and just stab at zombie hordes pretty large without, like, having to risk our own life. So, <laughs> once we get to level 5, it's, it's gonna be wraps. I legitimately think that the trash that we are building up right now might be one of the most volatile fighters that I have ever made. <laughs> Like, the combo with the nimble and how fast I've been able to stab and keep a distance away from these zombies is insane! 
Like, we're, we're dancing around these idiots like they don't even know what's up. Oh, that's a new level of short blade. You guys are going to regret every single decision you made up to this point because it's, it's not going to get any easier from here on out. I am going to save that police zombie because that does look like a mint condition bulletproof vest. Everyone else can go, though. All right, you're next. And that is one of the easier hordes I've ever dealt with. <laughs> and all it took was one hunting knife. It is getting pretty late though, so I am gonna slow down the murder and everything and just do some looting. And that is a mint condition police bulletproof vest. I'm glad I didn't stab him. Hell yeah, I think we have mint condition clothing all across the board now. And now that we've done a little bit of cleaning and maintenance, it's finally time to crack open the hunting supply store. There are a few zombies indoors, but we have a knife just for that occasion. I hope you guys don't mind me hopping on in now. It'll be real quick, I promise. What did I say? And now that that's done, let's go equip our flashlight and see what we have in stock. Oh yeah, this is the moment I've been waiting for. Up first, we got an M M1911 magazine, an MSR 700 rifle, some 38 rounds and some shotgun shells, more ammo, a double barrel shotgun with a JS-2000 and a 308, not bad, a, a freaking Magnum, a 45 revolver, a uh, there's not too much ammo, but there's a lot of pistol rounds here and there. Oh, yeah, in the back room, which has even more 308. Sadly, no M14. I was really hoping for, for, for an M14 or an M16. But this is a pretty good haul. And we also have, lastly, up here, a couple of boxes of 9mm. I'm going to go sift through everything and put it inside one container for easy use later when I leave this little strip area. We still have a lot more to loot, though, so... We're not done here, is what I'm trying to say. I mean, for a small gun store on the outskirts of Louisville, this is a really good haul. First of all, we got four boxes of 223, nine boxes of 308, four boxes of 38, two boxes of 44, four boxes of 45, nine boxes of 9 mil, six boxes of shotgun shells, and for weapons, we have a double barrel, a pump action, a 45 revolver, a 223 rifle and a 308 rifle with a magnum. Now it is getting pretty late out here, so I am gonna have to, um, I'm gonna have to sleep inside here for tonight. And, and when I mean here, I mean literally on that bench. But the good thing is that I did pack vitamins. So in order to offset our terrible night's rest, we're just going to be popping like half a bottle of vitamins in the morning. The one thing that I do want to grab before I do that, however, is my bowl of soup. Delicious and homemade soup. Just a quarter of this monolith put me out of the hunger state, so I will see you guys in the morning. Just like that, we wake up at 7.30, ready for another day of murder. I'm not gonna be dropping off all of our loot just yet, as I want to just, you know, do a, do a general clear of the area, and I wanna save my bag space for more important things. I will also be dropping off my Molotov cocktails for that reason as we are, you know, done with the heavy work. Now that we have this area cleared out and it's kind of like a temporary base for us, and when I mean temporary, I mean there's not a lot here, we're gonna go pay a visit down to the gas station, loot all the goodies there, and then start to work our way up to the hardware store to where hopefully I can get enough nails to last us for the rest of the series. <laughs> That's the plan. And it sounds like someone just got murdered right outside. Trash is about to add on to that statistic. Who wants to die? Okay. <laughs> I got his freaking ear off there. Ouchie. I love the instant kill jaw stab animations. And also, a lot of you are worried about me accidentally like getting into an insta kill animation with zombies around, but the game physically locks you out of being able to jaw stab a zombies if there's one even remotely close to you. So that is something I will never need to worry about. Oh, I'm a big fan of Short Blade. This is one of the only times I've specced into a Short Blade character and actually stuck with it. I mean, look at that. Five whole freaking levels. How many stabs does it take to kill a zombie? Three to four, which is really good for a fast stab and weapon. Okay, it's actually consistently four, but I hope when I get to level six, that will change. Nice. Anyone else? 
No, wow. I was expecting a lot more resistance. Let's go see what the gas station has. It looks pretty damn stocked, and I, I do love some gas station treats. Oh, you've got to be... <sighs> Just when you think you got a good run, you got to pull out the good old Molotov cocktail again. All right, no, that's cool. I'm going to go run back really quick, go grab a double barrel shotgun, and we we'll might as well make it a... We might as well make a statement out of this, is what I'm trying to say. Let's go show these zombies that I mean business. Oh my, that is that that is a lot of zombies extremely quickly. Well, it's a good thing that we're a little bit proactive on that. I love CDDA Louisville. It makes me feel so good about my situation. <laughs> this is gonna get real nasty real soon, I feel. But what better of a time than now to start to practice our aiming skills? If I can get up to, like, level 2 this early, I'm gonna be pretty damn happy about my progress. And then, after we get bored, I can always just do the good old Molotov cocktail method and dispose of them properly. For now, we can get a few shots here and there. I know I'm extremely panicked, but we have a shotgun, so it shouldn't matter that much. Oh yeah, no, we're still hitting some absolute bangers, and just like that, we got, what, one level in aiming? It, it literally took like a whole five seconds. Yeah, we're gaming. <laughs> you know, I just really can't believe that the game thought it would have actually thrown me a curveball with the alarm. Not like I've done the kill everything challenge. I know this double barrel better than I know most people. <laughs> so it's really funny that this game could think it can just trample on me, you know? I'm not one to be trampled on. That was only at the start when I was a, a weak and pathetic little, little, little man. But now that I have a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a kickstart, I don't really see us dying. Drash has at least like another 10 episodes in him. Surely. Yeah, no problems. We'll go through the rest of our ammo, not through the boxed ammo though, just the ammo that we have right now. And then after that, I'm just gonna chuck a Molotov cocktail and uh, I just realized I forgot the Molotov cocktails inside. Ah, oh, dang it. Okay, I'm gonna need to, I'm gonna need to pull something quick here. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna hop the fence, go into the woods a little bit and uh, see if I can lose them and, and just spare us enough time to get the damn Molotov, all right? I'm sure they're not gonna get too far away. Yeah, just give me that real quick and we will be all set afterwards. I also need a damn lighter, so if you guys could hook me up with that as well, that would be perfect. And get out of my damn sight. Oh, you broke my freaking, you broke my freaking knife. Now I'm gonna have to blunt force you. It's not even my main weapon choice. Okay, we're out um, and none of the zombies have followed me. Let's go round them up. There we go. I think that is most of the horde. I did shoot through a few more shotgun shells as I wanted to get over a thousand zombie kills. We are extremely close, but I think I'll just save it for another occasion. This really isn't the time to be kind of bragging about my zombie count. This is a time to be alive. Okay, I almost lost track and that zombie almost got a hold of me. I, I, I need to concentrate. I need to take care of these zombies right now. There is no room for showboating. I need to kill them now. Come on, drop it, drop it, boom, there we go. Let's go round them up in there, and then the rest is gonna be history. Ooh, that zombie coming up close behind me was, was the scare I needed to put me right back in my little place. One last thing I will say though, is that the image of a massive burning like pile of zombies will never not be amusing to look at, especially when the flames follow them so closely. It, it's really cool, okay? What else can I say? And now we have reached the zombies limit. As you see, a lot of them are just dropping like flies. And I think I can mop up the rest with just a screwdriver stab. <laughs> yeah, they never stood a chance. I love Nimble. I love Nimble so much. I feel, I feel like such a speedy little guy. Man, what a good day. We killed like probably around 500, 600 zombies with a combination of the guns and, you know, the stabbing, especially the fire. <laughs> I feel kind of bad for turning this once normal farm field into, um, 
whatever the hell is going on here, but I had no choice. Is there anything cool on these zombies? I know that there are a couple of little hunting knives in here that I will be taking, especially since we do break them pretty easily, and I am always looking for replacements. You never know. We'll go check the main street, park, our, park up our character right in front of the gas station, and I think we'll call it a day there. It's also extremely warm for today, like 42 degrees, it, with it being December 26th, but I guess that's also Kentucky. Oh man, this place is disgusting. <laughs> but the gas station is now ours. It only took uh, the f f f a few shotgun shells and one well-placed bomb throw. Yeah, it's looking pretty clear. So, I think I'm gonna end the episode here, killing this last zombie. Peace the hell out, everyone. This game really thought that throwing an alarm my way would have stopped me from looting the gas station. It's safe to say that I have proved it wrong. Anyways, welcome back to the CDDA Louisville Challenge. Joined by Trash himself. We have killed 980 zombies, surviving for 17 days, and now after looting the gun store, we get to loot every other store on this little strip. We fought for our life to get here, so let's see the payout, which includes pop and water, chips, so much high calorie junk food, a free mint condition lighter, and enough cigarettes to last me for the rest of the series. Anything in the back room? Just an empty gas can, which is actually pretty damn huge. I would say five bags of chips was well worth the hundreds of zombies that we had to mow down. I won't be taking the arcade cabinets, we're just gonna be leaving it there and dropping off everything inside our new car. Not this old thing, but the semi-brand new vehicle that we found in the previous episode. All I need is to take out our battery and grab the rest of the gas from this car. Overall, it is the same as our vehicle over there condition-wise, but the one thing that I do like about it is that the trunk has a little bit more condition, which means that I can lug around more loot. I'll see you in the morning when things are a bit brighter and we can continue looking through all of our ill-gotten gains. I'll see you then. And so we wake up to a fresh new day with a tiny amount of neck pain. I am genuinely surprised that Trash can just sleep on a freaking stool with no problem whatsoever. I mean, the neck pain is there, but we still got a solid eight hours of sleep with no back support whatsoever. What I'm trying to say is that in real life, it'd probably be more comfy to sleep on the floor. We're gonna be having our vegetable and meat soup for breakfast, hopefully filling us up and helping us gain a little bit more weight on this beautiful 18th day. Let's go grab all of our ammo, around 30 pounds worth, and our weapons, and load it into our car. Oh my, is it foggy out as well? This is giving me some pretty bad vibes about another series that I did. But this time we're not gonna drive around like an absolute bozo. Instead, we're just gonna walk there. Plus, we don't have to deal with, you know, the copious amounts of sprinter zombies like we did before. I'm really eyeing up the beer and liquor store and the hardware store, so we are going to need a bunch of room for all of these goodies. Let's go check out Brighted Whites first, which sounds like a dentist. It is actually not. It's just a washroom. Okay, never mind. That is. One of the most useless stores in a zombie apocalypse. What about the restaurant, though? I mean, surely this place has food. Other than the really cool decor around, I am really eyeing up that key lime pie. Let's see what else we got, though. We have a bunch of rotten burgers, rotten gravy. I'm taking that lime poster and that red pie poster. And that is quite literally it. I guess we have some salt that I can eat, a, a baking pan. That's actually pretty awesome as well, so we can do our own types of cooking. That's it though, off to the next door. Beer and liquor, that's what I'm talking about. Also, a few zombies that want to rip me apart. Ooh, and there's a free knife in that horde of zombies. Hey, that's a win-win. Oh, I am just getting too deadly with this knife. On top of that, we also have a meat cleaver, which is one of the only swinging weapons in the game that runs off of short blades, so I I'm gonna be just as powerful with this than with our knife. And where is that hunting knife? Uh, I think it's on one of these. Yeah, right here, cool. A brand new one as well. Okay, now it's time for the beer and liquor store. What do we got? 
uh, actually, why am I, why am I even asking myself that question when it's literally just gonna be beer and liquor? Quite a decent chunk, judging from the back room in here. How much do we got? Let's see, we got around 12 bottles of beer, one bottle of bourbon, one bottle of red wine, two, three bottles of white wine, as well and that's another citrus themed poster i'm gonna go yoink that as well up next the crozy crock pot also little update i'm kind of noticing something a little bit off about the crozy crock pot here if you see from the windows those are sheet windows which is a telltale sign that this spot right here might be a survivor home. Oh, yeah. Do you want to know something that's pretty cool as well? Aside from being a very good zombie killing weapon, this meat cleaver here can also be used as a makeshift axe to break our way on inside this place, which may or may not have better loot than the gun store. Let me in right now, game. We're in. It's a big building, which is extremely nice for a survivor home. So starting off, we have a half broken crowbar in here. Is there not an upstairs? I think there is. Canned tuna, some bourbon beta blockers and painkillers. Do not take all of these together. I'm pretty sure that will kill you in game. Genuinely. I think that is one of the, <gasps> oh, that's another sledgehammer. Gosh, we are getting so many damn sledgehammers today. That, what that's our that's our second one in the series just so far maple syrup as well this would be a really damn good base here i mean the staircase is off the side it's not very accessible yeah if in another life i think this could have been a very cool spot anyways let me in right now game actually what am i doing we got the best damn skeleton key this game can ever give <laughs> Boom, we're in. What do we got? A, a freaking wood axe with a metal pipe. Oats and coffee, both extremely good in a survival situation. Even more maple syrup. Blessed be the loot tables. A few books. Actually, fishing volume one. That's pretty damn awesome. I'll yoink that. A 45 revolver. And a baseball bat. Uh, I'll still take it. <laughs> we take those. That That is free and very easy to get. Oh, and there's also a zombie here. Sucks for her that I got the best damaging weapon in the game if it wasn't for the exhaustion. Boink. <laughs> uh, I, I, I really want to make a heavy weapon expert, maybe in the future. The only problem is that these things are so damn exhausting, but they are very fun to use as well. Anyways, it's time to drive up a little bit further as we have looted every single building so far. All that's left are these two offshoots here, which is kind of like a half mini mall type deal and I for and and the hardware store. How could I forget? Let's go give it a gander while also dropping off this sledgehammer here because I really don't need two of those massive tools. Not a far drive at all. Let's see. We got a real estate office. It seems I'm guessing there's going to be nothing good to come out of there. So I might just ignore that in favor of these stores down here. Watch out for all of the hordes in the mist, by the way, but let's see here. We got a family fashion, a candy store. We also have ourselves an insurance place, a legal service area. I am attracting a lot more zombies than I actually am letting on right now. I should have probably dealt with these hordes in bite-sized pieces, but I think this will be a very good litmus test for Trash's vibe checking abilities. One man, one knife, one massive horde in the mist. Let's see who will come out on top. All I know is that there's gonna be a lot of stabbing and this is gonna take, actually I am exhausted and tired. I'm gonna take some vitamins first and maybe some beta blockers and then we can get started with stabbing probably a good estimate of 100 or so zombies. Let's just down half of these bottles here right now and then I can take on these zombies mono e mono. Who do you think will win? One drugged up crazy knife wielding maniac who's taking supplements or a bunch of zombies? I guess it's time to figure that out. <laughs> We're gonna be here a while. The more I'm looking at it, 
the more I realize how large of a zombie horde I'm actually fighting with a little rinky dink bowie knife right now. <laughs> That's a lot. That is nothing compared to how fast I can get these stabs in. All right, it's gonna seem like we're gonna be doing nothing at the start, but it's all about the accumulation of damage, all right? Yeah, look at that. There's already one zombie down out of like a solid hundred. A, f a, a few more thousand hits like that and or there should be no more zombies left. Now, you might be asking, why the hell am I trying to fight this large group of zombies with melee alone? Number one, I don't want to be too reliant on the Molotov as I want to trash himself to be a zombie killing machine. And two, I just think it'd be really funny to stab at a horde for like a thousand times just to slowly kill it, you know? Bit by bit, step by step. We got enough knives, hopefully, and if we don't, I'm sure we can scrounge off a few from these zombies real soon. Look at that, we already got a twofer. That's the accumulation I've been talking about. Any minute now, this horde will drop dead where it stands. We just can't get grabbed from behind when we need to make a tactical retreat, and we should be fine. Oh yeah, look at those juicy one-shots I've been getting. The beta blockers are really helping out with the overall damage over time. Good old snowball effect. Oh, I gotta say, build 42 is one of the best... We're gonna be picking through the bodies just a little bit, but other than that, we've earned ourselves another damn looting spree. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, also forgot to mention, we have reached over 1,000 zombie kills so far with our favorite weapon, surprise, surprise, being the hunting knife. Oh, and this zombie also had a spear with a butter knife on it. I'll use that as a makeshift weapon as we don't have a lot of uh, knives left over. We can repair the old broken knives with some duct tape at the hardware store though, so I'm not super duper worried. I already see a candy store, which in my eyes is free calories, but more importantly, it's a two story big old store. I think we start off with the first story and then work our way up to the ones up there, killing any bozo I see along the way. And oh, would you look at that? We actually are exhausted now. That is a first since like the first episode. Oh, is there one more zombie? That there is. Hello. Goodbye. I'll be taking your kitchen knife now. Already I see even more alcohol than I could ever use in my whole life. We're probably also going to be sleeping here because it is getting pretty late and I don't want to be tired right about now. Let's see what we got. A bunch of beer and wine, of course, of course. Beer, more beer, and two more bourbons. I'm probably going to be sleeping in here for the night just because it's getting pretty late, pretty dark, and I have a bunch of Moodles that would screw me over combat-wise. But the one thing I will do is drink myself into a mini coma with all of these bottles of bourbon here. If you don't know, actually I have told this before, but each bottle is worth 1500 calories. So if I chug like three of these or, or five of these in a row, I should start to make all my weight back. That's the ticket to weight gain in this game. It's the liquid calories. I can chug these all day and it fixes my depression. It fixes uh, like half of my moodles all in one go. The best part about this whole alcohol bulking strategy is that our liver will probably fail us at the ripe and very old age of 25. But that's a risk I'm willing to take in the zombie apocalypse because there is an extremely good chance that I won't even make it that far. So how about we enjoy ourselves instead? Which marks down the 19th day of our life here. Another thing that I kind of forgot about is that Trash is probably dealing with one of the worst hangovers of his life. <laughs> I'm surprised he woke up. And it looks like we woke up to a nice blizzard out. I enjoyed that quite a bit. The vibes are pretty damn immaculate. It beats the fog any damn day of the week is what I'm trying to say. Anyways, it's time to loot the rest of the stores here. The only really good thing that I see right now is Candytown USA. And mind I say, the stores shelves are stocked. 
as we have some Majeska, candied fruit slices, pickles, pears, and remoulade. That's, that's pretty weird to have in a candy store, but who am I to judge? Gummy bears, more mints, gum, jelly beans, candy canes, chocolate. I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat that right now, actually. That is a lot of calories right there and a bunch of gummy candies. While not the most filling, I'm sure that the calorie count will start to come up. Oh, okay, that was a little bit scary. I'm glad I was prepared and ready to stab anything that, that moved. Oh my God, there's more. What the, oh, okay, that was, um, what the hell? Do you guys just wait behind doorways like that? I do not remember this many being around here. I also hear a lot more inside. I just need to stab the rest of these bozos and get through. All right. This kitchen knife has been going really hard, by the way. Yeah, these bozos never stood a chance. Okay, let's go check out the other two stores. Well, now door flashing, just in case we get jumped anymore. It looks like we have a clothing store here, which honestly, I might take a few new pieces of clothing, seeing how bloodied and disgusting our current getup is, you know? That's about it, really. It looks like there's just mainly sweaters and stuff in here. No winter wear, which is extremely sad. Well, this was definitely underwhelming, but it's not one of the main tourist attractions and why I'm here. The, the other reason is for that EP tool store right down there. That place should have a few more cool things that I'm going to be willing to risk my life for. Nice bike helmet, bozo. Alrighty, what do we got in here? Other than like five different zombies ready to rip me apart, I don't know how they got in here. There were definitely not this many when I got in, but they found their way in now. Oh, I, the meat cleaver is a really good weapon, by the way. Once you get the ball rolling, it's, it is non-stop slaughter, action, and violence. Okay, we got a pipe wrench, duct tape, wood glue, all pretty awesome, especially because I can go ahead and repair my knives with that. Fishing tackle could be useful. I, I mean, I would love to go fishing in my pond one day or another. Some bags of plaster. I might also take these floodlights if I can help it. Hand fork, a workman's shirt, useless, nails. Oh, I thought you would never ask. Another hand axe, a box of screws, a garden saw, and a hammer. I'll take an extra hammer, why the hell not? Another box of nails. Already this whole trip has been worth it. Carrot, potato, and strawberry seeds. Gonna be really good for self-sustenance. Metal sheets, metal pipes. Okay, that seems to be it here. I'm gonna be taking your plants and that work lamp, and I think we'll be ready to leave. After I take care of all three of these bozos, of course. <laughs> Come right on over through the fence line. I dare you. It's definitely not gonna end in your death. I lied. It is. There we go. All right, let's go grab our stuff and get the hell out of here now. It was fun while it lasted, Louisville. I guess I'll just call this the strip store area. Goodbye, Louisville strip store area. I will not miss you. And now it's time to drive home in this massive 23 degree blizzard. That won't stop trash though, as we are bundled up and very, very warm. Ah, here we are. The cool thing about having a car is that you can just turn on the temperature and keep yourself warm like that. And now we can begin the real fun part, and by fun, I mean not fun at all part, of driving all the way back home, which is probably the most dangerous part yet. So there's a pretty good chance that just by driving down this way alone, we will probably crash our car and die. I'm hoping that's not going to be the case, but I guess we'll see when we get down there, won't we? Let's try not to hit too many zombies and cross our fingers that we can get home and drop off our ill-gotten gains without too much of an issue. Okay, I lied. There is going to be a massive issue, it seems. <laughs> Hey, maybe all of our evasive maneuvers led all the zombies off the road as well. Okay, nope. I remember exactly where this was. I'm going to need to clear out this uh, roadblock later. <laughs> that is not a good look. Actually, that wasn't that bad of a drive back at all. We did bump into a few zombies bloodying up our car, but I was expecting 10 times worse. You know, given the storm and all of that. 
Though in all actuality, the store may have helped us out more than I realized because, you know, limited visibility, a lot of static noise going on. Yeah, you know what? I don't think I needed to be that worried. Okay, this is still a little bit funky. Um, let's drive through here. There's definitely a fire X on that zombie. Am I even going the right way still? We went all the way up. Uh, <laughs> why do I keep doing this to myself, man? How do I, how do I not? I hate maps. I hate navigating. I hate driving. I hate traveling. I want to go home. We'll go around the long way, I think. Oh, this car is going to be my grave. Am I still following the right way? I still need to check my map like every two seconds. Okay, I know where to go. That's the fence that I remember. We're finally almost home. Did I almost ruin my entire life? Yes. And did I realize that this car is definitely going to be the way that trash dies, seeing how congested the streets are? That as well. We've made it home though, so now it's time to lug all of our loot back. Oh, another cool thing. All of the bodies in our place have uh, finally decomposed. So we don't have to worry about that either. Okay, you know what? For every bad stretch of luck, there's one small little up that you can really just rely on. Let's go loot everything here and drop it off in our base. And I think this will be a very good spot to end the episode. Ah, oh, it feels good to be home. I missed it here. It's one of the only comforts I have in my life. I'm also going to eat this stale can of chili because I forgot to refrigerate my stuff while I left. Nice. So here goes all of the ammo, most of the foods, our floodlight, which should give us some nice backyard ambiance, the ficus, the two pie posters, the rest of our alcohol, our tools, and lastly, our weapons that we've gotten out of this. I will say the storm has definitely picked up quite a bit. Despite today being a mainly looting run, I think all of the loot that we have accumulated is going to be extremely helpful and having us survive a long and prosperous life. I say that knowing that all it takes is one misplaced input and my life is over. We don't have enough storage for our armory, so that's something to work for in the future. But we got everything down, and that's what really matters. So I guess I'll see y'all the next episode. Peace out, everyone. I'm gonna ask you this one question. Do you notice anything different about trash? Probably not. But if you take a look at our info tab, you can see that we are finally not underweight. That is extremely nice to see. Not only that, but we are on our 20th day of this beautiful, beautiful apocalypse with a full beard to sport under our gas mask. Our stats are looking fantastic and our generator is running like a dream. I will say this though, I, as much as I do love this small home, we are probably gonna be doing some more crazy stuff in the future. It is still storming out, so today is going to be a pretty chillax day, mainly of us reading, maybe cleaning off our character and doing the bare minimum like that. So I guess the first thing that Trash should do is wash himself off all of the way. We're home now, which means there's not going to be much combat, so we we'll might as well look presentable because I won't be getting dirty anytime soon. Surprisingly, even with the freezing wind chill, our character is self-sustaining with our temperature, so we don't have to worry about a cold ever again. I say that as I get colder. It's not that bad, though. There we are. Our character is now clean. The storm is still raging on, so I guess what I'm gonna do for the rest of the day is read a few books. Honestly, Trash deserves this little break. So I guess I'll see you guys in the morning. It's gonna be a lot of boring stuff like this. Though we are in a heated home with the lights working, so we do have to be pretty thankful for that. I'm actually extremely thankful. <laughs> Usually with a lot of my characters, I really don't get that far. And that is Fishing Volume 1 taken care of. And the more I'm thinking about it, the more I'm starting to realize how little we actually have to do here. I guess we can cook food. We can, we can eat it, though I kind of want to save cooking food for a special occasion later. You know what? 
I might go back on what I said before about this being a homesteading episode, and I am going to introduce you to Trash's Super Omega Bucket List. Tomorrow, of course, it's getting pretty damn late out, so... So yeah, I'll tell you guys tomorrow. Particularly on the 21st day. We woke up even heavier than before, and the snow has stopped snowing, with it melting away as well, so the visibility is going to be perfect. Anyways, we have done just about everything in terms of, you know, making a home, barricading it, securing it, going out, getting food. We have enough food to last us months. And really, the whole point of the CDDA challenge is the incredibly difficult start. So, I'm gonna take advantage of our location, which is Louisville, which hosts some of the coolest spots known to man. So, in my off time, I kinda compiled a top 10 list of, let's say, tourist attractions that we should visit before ending off this series. These places are going to be filled with zombies and extremely dangerous to clear out, but I want to see if I can pull it off. So, let me introduce you to some of our locations. We're going to be writing our top 10 list right off the side into these woods here because we're not going to be using it much. I will also say that this is going to be a numbered list, but the actual list does not matter. I just want to visit every single location in whichever order I can get them done first in. So here it is. Number 10 is going to be the Army Surplus Store. This place is going to have a bunch of weapons and ammo that I will be able to use to clear out other spots. So this is a little bit higher on the priority list. Number nine is going to be a staple inside this city, and that is going to be the baseball stadium. It's massive, going to be filled with a bunch of zombies, and I think doing a massive Molotov burn in the middle of it would be extremely freaking cool. Maybe we can even get a signed baseball bat there, who knows? Up to number eight which is going to be the Massive Cemetery. This place seems a little bit more boring compared to an army surplus store in a baseball stadium, but there is something there that is extremely cool. So we're going to mark that down, and I can't wait to show you the surprise there. Number seven is going to be the art gallery, where we can find a bunch of really cool art pieces and pieces of furniture that we might be able to bring home as well. Number six is going to be the Finnegan Research Facility. This place does seem pretty suspicious amongst the zombie apocalypse, but I think it'd be pretty fun to clear out. Number five is a gym. I don't need to elaborate. It's just pretty cool to check out a massive gym, and it's also in one of the most populated areas of Louisville. Now, this is where stuff starts to get a little wacky. Up next for number four, we have the Night Glow nightclub. That is quite a lot of words, but this place is extremely cool, and I think it'd be really awesome to have a nice little rave there. Who knows? With the whole theme of partying going all the way over to number three, which is the Velvet Tassel, which is actually a strip club, which should be pretty cool to get some awesome outfits out of. Then you can't forget number two, which is going to be the Spiffo Headquarters. There's a really cool statue that I want to take a picture of there. And we might even be able to play in the play pit. So that's going to be one of the last spots we will check out with number one being the Grand Ohio Mall. One of the most populated areas and a really good place to end it off. There is one last location that I do want to check out, but if we can survive every other location on this list, we're going to have to go check it out. So yeah, this is going to be my little tourist attraction list. We're going to be marking a circle next to every single location so we can cross it out when we do visit it and at least check out some of the interiors. There you have it. Now good old Trash actually has an end game goal to work with. If we can complete all of these, I think we can safely end the challenge there. This is going to take quite a while, by the way, from the zombie population alone. And if you're wondering, I will not be clearing out all of the zombies as the CDDA challenge has default zombies respawns on, which would make it an impossible task. But we can visit every single location and get a good look from the outside but that'll have to wait for another day.
Which is good, because visiting a lot of those locations will be extremely stressful. And speaking about stress, I think we can unwind a little bit by cooking a little bit of grub. If you don't remember, last episode, we got ourselves a baking pan. And while this is kind of unremarkable from the first look at it, I did also find a, a while ago some pie dough. And we can combine the two and make ourselves a pie with a rolling pin. So, you know what? I think we've earned ourselves a nice little pie. I really don't know how the dough survived this long without rotting, but I won't ask that question. So, let's go make ourselves a nice honey sweet pie. We have a bunch of canned fruit inside here that I will be able to use to make this extremely delicious. I don't know what kind of combination of fruits we're going to be using, but we're going to be going with the flow, all right? So right now we got ourselves a honey sweet pie, but we will be adding in some fruit cocktail, some canned pineapple, and some peaches on top giving us a big old delicious pie that we can enjoy. Minus 78 hunger and we will rename this the victory pie. <laughs> I don't know why I put a the in there, but it is there. And hopefully by eating all of this in one go, we will ensure trash's good luck and prosperity in the future. We're done with that. And now I have run out of things to do at the house. I already have food, I have books, I've read books, I don't have any VHSs. We're kind of just a sitting duck inside here right now, so I think we ought to visit one of the locations today. And that kind of leads me into another thing that I need to do. I need to mark down every location that's actually visible on the map so far. We don't have much here, but I can go ahead and mark down stuff like the mall. So let's go mark down all the ones that we can see right now so I can, you know, have a better visualization of the ones that I can do right now. One, two, three, and four are somewhere out there with five being right here. Six would be here. Seven would be there. Eight is here. Nine is there. And number 10 will probably be right down here. As you see, we have quite a few locations to visit and they are all in different areas of the world. The only one that isn't too close right now, and the one that I will probably loot today, is going to be all the way down here at the cemetery. There's going to be a bunch of zombies, but it's most far out there, so I want to take care of it today. And the, the road down is going to be pretty easy. All we got to do is take the path all the way to the strip area, move down here and then take a right and we should be right down over there so let's go do it let's see if we can go take care of the cemetery today it is 11:50 a.m so it is still pretty early in the morning all i have to do is prepare by bringing a couple of molotov cocktails some weapons some ammo you already know how it is yeah i think we're ready Let's go head outside, turn off our generator, and get going. The only thing that I am kind of scared about is that I may or may not have left my sledgehammer. I definitely left my sledgehammer back at home. Okay, that's a small problem, but I can solve that by picking up the sledgehammer that I dropped off when I left last episode. So you know what? It's not going to be that bad. I will see you all when I make it down there. I, I will also be packing some extra food. I'll see you then. With a lot of time to spare, we have finally made it back here for my skeleton key. <laughs> I can't believe I forgot about this little guy. It's a good thing you're gonna be right back in my trunk. Though I will say one last thing, I really regret not taking a generator with me because we have a nearby gas station and it's just kind of going to waste, especially with all the zombie clearing I did. But I think we should stay here for the rest of the night and when it's a little bit brighter out and I have more time to kill zombies is when we can truly move out. So I guess I'm just gonna lay low, play it pretty, play it cool. I will see you all tomorrow when I can pull off my big heist. Alrighty, now it's finally time to leave. Also, happy New Year's Day, everyone. It is currently the 31st of December which means there's one more day left to this year, and then after that, it's gonna be a new chapter for trash. The tourism arc.
I mean, I guess we're kind of starting a little bit early, but the early bird gets the worm, right? <laughs> I say that like I'm not driving a mini death machine right into a possibly massive horde of zombies. I don't know what to expect at the cemetery. I'm hoping it's not going to be that bad, but it's pretty deep into the town, so... Your guess is as good as mine. I really hope we get a new vehicle <laughs> sometime during this series because I I need the self-assurance of actually driving a car that's decent in condition. What I'm trying to say is that driving through these hordes makes my blood pressure spike through the roof and it's not good for my health. Mentally and physically, potentially. By the way, I am going to need to go back through this path when we're done at the graveyard. <laughs> so that's going to be fun as well. Let's, let's stop complaining, though. We're about halfway there, and maybe we can relax a little bit when we do get there. Oh, I forgot how bad things can actually get once you're in the city. This is not a good look for me, like, at all. But on the bright side, we made it over to the graveyards. Yippee, and it looks like it's just as bad here as it is anywhere else. Hopefully that won't be too much of a bother. We are going to start to drive down this way for our first treasure of the day. Yep, the graveyard is actually pretty infested with these damn things. Who would have thunk that? We're going to drive through a little bit more though, and I will show you the approximate location of our first treasure. Once we clear out the zombies, it's going to be an easy yoink and run away type plan. I think we've actually made it, so I'm going to park up here, kind of far away from the zombies, and we can begin rounding up all of these zombies and burning them down to the ground. I also forgot to bring out my damn shotgun shells in the glove box. Okay, that's gonna complicate things, but I do have my revolver, so we can use that to round up most of the zombies here and uh, see how far we can get with the burn. Oh, I love using guns in this game. Even if the pistols don't hit as hard, it's still extremely fun. And that's all my ammo and the revolver. Now it's time to craft up a couple of Molotovs. I think one should deal with most of the zombies here. I'm honestly surprised that trash isn't desensitized at this point. <laughs> We've been surrounded by these zombies every day of our lives. And once you get surrounded by like a, a few thousand zombies and live to tell the tale, You'd think it'd start to become old news, but I guess at the same time, how can people wanting to rip you limb from limb in a very gruesome way be old news? Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna agree with Trash on this one. This is slightly terrifying. And it'd probably be even more terrifying if I didn't have my hands on a good old Molotov cocktail to turn this horde into a rave. It's so easy when you're smarter than the rest of these flesh bags to pull off strategies like this. In two hours time, they should be taken care of. I'm just begging, pleading, and praying that the, that the flames don't spread all the way towards the treasure that I am trying to acquire. I, I would cry if it did burn. The only real disadvantage of this method is that I won't be able to get any weapons that are on those zombies. I, I'm 100% confident in the fact that there are probably a couple of katanas that have just been burned down to the ground because of this method. <laughs> but there's nothing as satisfying as watching all these zombies drop instantaneously because of your really good Molotov throw. Look at that! The, the, the numbers are thinning themselves out! And we'll might as well, you know, get a couple of good swings in there, why the hell not? Woo oh, hold on. I see a knife in there. I hope that doesn't burn away. I would really enjoy that. It's also extremely satisfying to hear the zombie death sound like over and over again as they all drop down. And another fun fact, them being on fire actively lowers their health. So by the end of their life cycle, they are all one shots. Cool. You know what they say, another day, another dollar. And with that... The last smoldering flame is gone, leaving a big old bloody ash pile. I don't think the zombie that I stabbed is, is alive anymore for me to loot, which is kind of a disappointment, but it was for the greater good. Now I can finally show you the place that I want to get my treasure from. But I will state this, it is extremely cool. And if you probably looked at the thumbnail, you already have an idea of what it is, and that's because I couldn't resist using it as a thumbnail, all right? It looks cool, it looks cool, damn it. But if you didn't know, inside one of these buildings, I forget which one, 
there is a very special furniture item that you can only get by bashing down a wall with a sledgehammer. It's completely out of sight if you're on the map project, so it is a secret that not a lot of people know of. All I gotta do is clear out a few more zombie hordes to actually reach my way over, which should be nothing when, you know, you're talking to the Blade Master. While everyone else was out partying and being normal, Trash studied the Blade. I gotta get my hands on some more meat cleavers, by the way. This weapon is extremely good, and it feels nice to be able to switch things up with a slashy type weapon. I mean, look at that! Oh, they never stood a damn chance. Get out of here. Oh, 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 oh. There we are. How many more hordes do I need to take care of? Quite a few more. <laughs> oh, I love knives so much, man. A couple more stabbings like that, and we should have clear access and enough range to actually pull out our sledgehammer and use it. Okay, I think that's gonna be most of them. Thanks for the extra screwdriver, bozo. Sadly, that's the only weapon they had on them aside from this lighter. But now we have free access to, I guess these would be called the little mausoleums. And within the mausoleum is where the treasure is. I don't know if it's this one or that one over there, but it's one of these bad boys and we're gonna figure it out the only way trash knows how. And that, my good friends, is gonna be brute force. If we're not stabbing our way through the competition, we're gonna be bashing our way into it. Oh yeah, bringing in the nine pound sledgy. I'm so happy I decided to leave it back at the gas station. If I had genuinely lost this, I would be distraught. We found two so far, which is already really good. And I forget which place actually does have the gold. So we're gonna have to figure that out together as well. Is that a free hunting knife? No, it's a kitchen knife, but I'll take it. Now we do have two options on where this could be. My guess is, oh, oh, oh hold on here. Anyways, my guess is that spot, but usually my instinct is wrong on these type of things. So I'm gonna say it's that mausoleum down there that has the goodies inside. So let's try this one first. Now go, oh my god! Ooh, okay. Oh, I really should have thought that one through a little bit. I kind of kind of got lulled into a false sense of security there. Uh, you know, seeing how I did stab every single zombie other than these few in here. I'm just gonna run in real quick and uh, pop, pop, bingo, you. We made it inside. Aside from the very nice decorative flowers, there is something that lurks behind one of these. Now, this might be a bit of an ethical thing because I am technically defiling the graves of many. But that's fine. Because we, ladies and gentlemen, have found riches beyond our wildest comprehension. I really don't know why there's a random pallet of gold bars in here. The ecstasy of gold. I'm pretty sure this is a good, bad, and ugly reference given that we are in a cemetery. So that makes it even cooler. That is genuinely a, <laughs> a pallet of gold bars. I, I don't know how much that would be worth, but it is definitely worth millions of on millions of dollars and if trash wasn't one of the only people left in the world we would be vibing so i'm gonna go ahead take the ecstasy of gold with us and we're gonna get the hell out of here that's all i came here for i'm actually really surprised that we got it on our first try there's only one pallet here so there's nothing else which is pretty sad but hey one pallet of gold is better than zero so yeah this is the treasure of louisville honestly Today went pretty well when it came to extracting the treasure. And now Trash can call himself a multi-millionaire. Uh, you know, through less than ideal means, but that don't mean we ain't got the money. <laughs> yeah! Let's go drop this back off to our house and we can find some of the other spots. 
The last thing that I will do is mark. Oh my lord, you scared the tartar sauce out of me. We should probably get out of here. Um, I'll, I'll mark it down once we once we get a little bit further down. All right. Which is gonna be right now, as that marks down our first real victory. Okay, we got, what, nine more to go, and we'll be done here. This was probably one of the easiest as well, because, you know, it's out in the open, so it makes clearing out zombies a lot easier, but I'll take it. You know, it's kind of like a nice little segue into a bunch of our other adventures. Let's get the hell home before it gets any darker, though. I'm probably gonna go sleep at the gas station area once again. But yeah, <laughs> we got ourselves an actual treasure. I mean, how many pieces of furniture have their own unique name? The Ecstasy of Gold? That sounds so freaking cool. And now you guys know as well. So if you want to risk your life out here in the middle of uh, hell itself because of the amount of zombies, you too can become a millionaire. Though I will say I am not responsible for any deaths or injuries that you may come across on the way. Let's get the hell back while avoiding the zombie hordes tactically. Whew! Judging from all the corpses that litter the streets, we have made it back to a pretty safe zone with the gold in tow. I will check to see how bad this car got beaten up, but after that, we're gonna go grab some shot eye and drop it off back at our house. And the more I'm thinking about it, the more I realize that we're gonna need some, you know, extended places to drop off our stuff. And yeah, our hood is not looking that good at all. Well, the engine is still good condition, so, you know, it's a win-win. Anyways, we got our gold. We got our first location out of the way. I'll count this as a win. We're gonna go sleep at the good old, wait, what's it called again? Crozy Crockpot. I will see y'all tomorrow on the next episode to where I think we can probably tackle the Finnegan Research Facility. Peace. The hell out, everyone. Welcome back, everybody, and today marks a whole new year for trash. Plus, we're kind of a millionaire at this point. Do I really feel any different? Uh, not really, but it's it's about the status that matters, right? Aside from being a millionaire, not really much has been going on for us, so how about we make our own fun? But first of all, we need to head back to our base to drop off the goodies and maybe get myself a shower. And more importantly, I, I need to psych myself up for our next task. Clearing out the cemetery was one of the easier things to do. Also, you all mentioned that I forgot to uh, mark the correct one. So we are going to need to get the art gallery next. I'll just put a nice little spade there so I remember. But up next on our actual list is going to be the Finnegan Research Facility right up here. So all I'm going to be doing is driving back to my house, dropping off the gold, taking a shower, and then we move our way down. But one thing that I do want to do while I am here at our nice little strip mall area is to switch back to our old white station wagon. As our technically new car took a massive beating trying to drive down the highway, which made the hood extremely low condition, even more so compared to the car that we abandoned in the first place. So we're going to switch over and I will see you all then. All I need right now is our battery and our weaponry. And there you have it. We got ourselves another working car, which should be able to take quite a beating. I do find it pretty funny on how we just have to move our gasoline and batteries all the way over to, like, our new host vehicles. I don't know. It's mildly entertaining to me. You know what isn't mildly entertaining? Navigating through these hordes with a little under half a gas tank left. So once we get up and over, I might pay a small visit to our gas station. Yeah, 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 I might, I might just do that. Because I'm definitely not driving through this hell zone again. I have to navigate between those police barricades so many times and just the amount of zombies in the area doesn't really make it worth it anymore. Oh, things would be so much more simpler with a deathmobile. But hey. Okay, I was about to say we're finally back, but hitting that light pole really just irks me. Come on, man, I'm in front of my damn house. You gotta, 
We got a chillax game. I know that's me driving at the wheel, but I want something to blame other than myself. And you know what? We still have the ecstasy of gold, so I, I, I can be a little bit lenient. How's our car looking? Terrible, but good enough. Let's go drop off our big old gold supply. And what better place to place it than right next to my damn television. If anyone wants this gold, I'm gonna have to kill them for it. Okay, it's technically mine. It's in my house. I've claimed it. There's really nothing else to do here. I just wanted to turn on the lights to make it look a little bit more presentable, other than to restock on a few more supplies. We have a bunch of ammo, we have a bunch of bourbon, so I don't need that. The only thing I really need is some food to go on the way. The coffee and cereal should set me over, and in order to offset my hunger that I have currently, we will eat, actually we will drink, about five different pops. There we are. The only thing that's left to do is to hightail it over to the gas station, which should be on the way to the research facility. That it is, so we're just gonna have to drive down here, drive up, take a couple of rights, and we will be in front of there, and then I can use this field here to burn the zombies. Oh yeah, this is gonna be actually a really good plan. Let's get this damn bread. And gas. Mainly the gas. Actually, the more I think about it, other than just the gasoline, I would really like a new car. I would... I would kill for a new car. One that's preferably a D6 truck so I'll be able to style on these zombies with a max amount of horsepower. Either one is better than this family wagon, you know what I mean? I'm gonna go check this really quick. This is a little bit ill-advised, but you never know. And this car looks pretty damn cool. It got keys? No, it doesn't. Alright, let's keep removing then. Out of the way, idiots. Uh, it was just a small little pit stop on the way. And we have made it back. Really thanking past me for leaving the generator here, as this is going to be a very easy fuel up, and it's not going to waste that much time. All we got to do is turn this bad boy on and fuel it up right from the gas pump. Oh, okay. I definitely think waypoint bases are the way to go, or at least having like a few cleared out areas on the way to where this, you know, becomes a little bit more easier to pull off. Oh, okay. Looks like we got a couple party poopers here. I hate to say it, but these zombies have party pooped for their last time. Man, these screwdrivers are really good mileage for kills. Okay, let's go finish feeling this damn thing up now, without any more interruptions. There you have it. This bad boy is now topped off with fuel, and before I get ahead of myself, I am going to go ahead and fuel up these gas cans as well. Gasoline is both a fuel source and a way to make Molotov cocktails should I run out of bourbon. So this stuff is, it's worth its weight in gold. Figuratively, of course, because I like my pile of gold at home. I would not give that up for the world. Okay, now we can leave. This is where things start to get a little bit dangerous. We're gonna have to go through some uncharted territory, and I don't know how bad the population is gonna be out there, but I guess we'll see. I just really need to make sure I don't get lost here, and I follow the correct pathway. And I think I have a pretty good grasp of the area, so let's, <laughs> let's cross our fingers about that as well. Gosh, and I gotta say the respawn is really bad in this area. I'm driving through, like, the place that I cleared out at the start of the series, and you can really see how how populated it's gotten afterwards. So that is also another reason on why I can't clear out something like, say, the mall. It would be pretty impossible in my opinion, but I think we take this right here, this left there, and then we cut off at the nearest way out, and we should be able to make a straight shot all the way over to our new place. Oh god, this is such a tight squeeze. <laughs> but we get through those regardless. Now it's an easy drive right to the research facility. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention there's also a fire station nearby which is pretty cool as well. But we have made it over to the Finnegan Research Group. It's a big building with around seven stories. It's a monolith, and before I do get started with shooting stuff, I am gonna walk inside briefly just to spawn in the zombies, and then we can get this party started. Or maybe there won't be any zombies inside. Right now, I think this is a pretty manageable horde with just our knives and screwdrivers. Though if things do get a little bit too fishy for my liking, I always have plan B, which which is a shotgun. I, I will shoot them all down and burn them alive. 
Oh, and another thing that I find pretty comical is that this horde is like a knife stabbing size horde, despite there being around 35 to 40 zombies within it. I don't know, I just find it pretty funny on how Trash has this knife and is like, yeah, I can take him on in a fight with this. <laughs> I mean, I can. And that's the funny part. I'm gonna win as well. Alrighty, quick little update. I may or may not have underestimated this horde. It's getting pretty late, and I'm having to take vitamins in order to offset my fatigue. But the horde is definitely not as big as before, and most of them are weakened up, so I should be able to mop up the rest. I also dropped my damn vitamins. Why would I do that? I don't know. All I know is that these zombies will die soon. Yeah, look, most of them are one shot or like two shots away from dying. So we do have that going for us. And I gotta say, when we make it to a new level of nimble around like five or six, I, I, I totally think I can backpedal and kill the zombies without having to like do the little kite away afterwards, which would be extremely nice. All right, there's only like seven of you left. It's time to, it's time to hit him with the sauce. Oh yeah, these bozos never stood a chance. Oh, it's so satisfying to get it, to get all those chain kills at the end. I will never not rave about that. Hoo-hoo! That is how you clear out a horde with just your knife. I definitely feel like I would have saved a lot more time just by, uh, you know, killing them normally. But you don't get the rush, and who knows, we might find a couple of knives on these. We're definitely gonna save the, the looting of the building for another day, so I will show you to the place that I'm gonna be sleeping for tonight. Which is that little junkyard trailer here. It's got a fence around it, which makes me feel a lot more safe sleeping in, plus it's right next to the facility. So after we get some sleep, I'm gonna check it out, and hopefully... The building doesn't spawn in another like 10,000 zombies on top of me. That would be tragic. Oh, is there any food in here as well? No, no food. That's fine. I'll make do with this, uh, with these benches here. All I need is a little bit of bourbon and a dream. What a good night's rest on this very bad and plastic bench. We did get a bad amount of sleep, so we are going to be not as awake as we would be if we slept on a bed so i am gonna pop a couple of vitamins to offset that for a big day ahead i also think that this is the day that we get a nice car upgrade so keep your eyes out for anything real nice looking for now i'm gonna go focus on our main tourist attraction the research facility of course there's not gonna be anything cool inside it like you know the ecstasy of gold but I still think it's pretty cool to check out anyways, and hey, it's nice changing up the scenery a bit from a graveyard to a scientific building. A very tall one at that, one of the tallest buildings in the game. I'm also extremely surprised that this place didn't spawn in zombies when I walked inside. If you ask me, it's a little damn ominous. I was, I was really expecting a fight to go through here, but yeah, we have some cool things here like a M9 pistol, a couple of security offices, a big ol' reception and desk area. Overall, it's pretty basic on the first story, but we still have like another seven stories to explore, so follow me. I'm also gonna go ahead and equip our flashlight just so we have it around. Oh, and fun fact, this is the building that Todd spawned in for my rooftop sprinter series, so if it does seem familiar, that's exactly why. But it's just a really damn cool building to not check out. I mean, it's got windows. I, of, of course it has windows, but it's got like big windows, you know, and it has this really cool break lounge area. And I really want to see if we can find anything cool up in the upper areas. Also, I'm a little bit sorry if I'm a little bit more quiet exploring this place. I, I was really expecting a fight when I came here. Because whenever I've come here before, like, hundreds of zombies would pour out of the building, and I thought it would have became a, you know, cool Molotov cocktail, pull up my shotgun, extremely cool situation, but it has not been that. We might find a couple of nice upgrades inside here, though. You never know, like a, a like a big hiking bag? <laughs> hey, don't mind if I take that. We've been living very poorly with our character's gear. If I, I was really expecting to find a survivor bag at this point, but hey, I'll take a hiking bag that's like an extra four pounds of loot, and we're not even done here yet. 
as we got a big old break lounge with a lunchbox with a, a cookie and beef jerky inside it, both perfectly good after a full year of being inside there. Cereal, evaporated milk, and that's it. You know another reason on why this is a little bit weird? It's, uh, it's, it's weird to come back as a different character to this location. It feels like I'm not supposed to be here as trash, you know? This was very much Todd's area, and I'm like a little foreign bacteria, just moving my way on through looking for any supplies I can get my hands on. We're not really here for the loot anyways, I just want to see the upper levels. And the only way to get inside there is to disassemble the doors, as I forgot to pack my sledgehammer. On the third story, there's still nothing like really cool. I think there's a couple of like small little experimentation places. Like right here, which seems a little bit suspicious to me, you know? They have caged areas inside a research facility, operating tables, dog kennels. And by a little amount of dog kennels, I mean a lot of dog kennels, especially when on the actual radio broadcasts, they say that the virus originated from dogs. I don't know. It seems a little weird to me to have all of these cages inside here. What I'm trying to say is that this place gives me massive Umbrella Corporation vibes, so that's why I kind of wanted to visit here. That and this place has some pretty nice looking offices with some cool plants to take on the road. If I don't find anything else, I'll probably take one for my old house. Up next though, we should have a few more testing areas to go check out. But instead of housing live subjects, this place looks more like an area to where someone may look at a virus by chance. There's microscopes, there's like one of those little fumigators. I don't know. I'm just, yeah, I'm looking at, I'm looking at this place and it's giving me some bad vibes. I mean, come on, this place looks far too suspicious to just be a simple research facility. You know, what are they researching? It's it sure as hell not like experimental soaps, I tell you that. What other rooms do we got here though? Okay, another testing room with two live dissection tables, even more dog kennels. And for some inexplicable reason, th th there's an orange soda inside a fridge that is probably meant to store blood, but hey, <laughs> I'll take an orange soda as well. I think that's it for this story. Let's go check out another. Which has a few walking zombies up ahead. Nice joker here, ma'am. Oh, wait, th is this a, um, no way, no freaking way. <laughs> okay, so that explains it. I was wondering why this place didn't have hundreds of zombies, and it's because there was a survivor event that happened. Oh, that makes so much more sense. So instead of spawning in hundreds, it only spawned in like the pre-selected five or so that usually come in with these events. Okay, well, well there you have it. The mystery solved, everyone. Not only that, but we also have ourselves a military or large bag. I I am so happy that I have this now. And it's so funny that I jinxed myself at the start of this episode as well. Don't mind me as I take this nice large bag now. Oh, that is such a good boon to carry my supplies in. You know what? Visiting this place isn't going to be a bust. I mean, not only did we find ourselves the best bag in the game, but we still have a freaking parking lot to check out to get ourselves a new vehicle as well. Hell yeah, free hunting knife too. Honestly, the only thing that I could complain about right now is that this entire building wasn't a survivor home. If it was a survivor home, we would never need another weapon in our lives. I think that's gonna be it for zombies up here though. That it is. Cool, cool, cool. I also find it pretty funny how there is a police event here of all spots. It's, it's kind of fitting. Who knows, maybe they were trying to extract the cure. Probably not, but I can at least speculate. I think that's going to be it for this floor here, which marks the end of our little exploratory journey. Yeah, there's just going to be a bunch of offices with computers. Man, if I wanted to build up my electronical XP, this would be the spot as well. Lastly, there's an extremely large roof right up the top here, which, you know, we can kind of take in the sights of this world. Actually, I really don't want to take in the sights because that building has a lot of bad memories right up there. Okay. Let's go move our way on down. Wow, the zombies actually look really small. Huh. 
That's funny. Anyways, it, it's time to look for a new vehicle. We got a new bag. We got a few new weapons. That's the only thing that we're missing at this point. So I will see you in the parking lot. And here we are. As you see, there are a lot of vehicles to choose from, and if there's none here that have a good gas tank or good condition, we can also pick from the junkyard nearby. All we gotta do is kill these zombies with our knife. Also, how many zombies have we killed so far? We've killed 1,273 zombies, surviving for 24 days and 8 hours. Not bad. Not only that, but we are dubiously close to level 5 maintenance. Alright, you bozos, you're up next. There we are. They never stood a chance. Now it's time to look through the parking lot to see how many keys we can pick up here, and then we can move on from there. Also, if you're wondering why I have all of the keys I've ever acquired so far just in my inventory, it's because you don't spawn with a key ring with the CDDA challenge. Your character is just not fortunate enough. So yeah, we're, we just have to work with what we have, which is pretty sad because it'd be extremely easy to miss a key. Let's go look for some keys now. And there's one inside this taxi, not bad. Pretty decent condition as well. Sadly, no keys for this vehicle here. It's locked as well. There is a horde up there, which I'm probably gonna have to kill. Yeah. We also have another key inside this blue master on Horizon, which has the best condition out of any vehicle we've seen so far, which is our top candidate. No keys for the white car. Okay, let's go check out the junkyard, and once we're done doing that, I think we can end off the episode. None in the pink van. Zero within this car. Nothing. 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 Lastly, but not surprisingly, nothing. Okay, well, we checked them all. We did get a new vehicle, so I will be exchanging our old one later. For now, we can mark off another location on our list, giving us two that we've explored out of the ten. Up next, I might pay a nice little visit up towards the baseball stadium, which should be a lot more action-packed. Okay, I'll see y'all later. Peace the hell out, everyone. We have currently knocked out two of the ten remaining locations, so I think today is the day Trash plays ball. Anyways, welcome back to the CDDA Louisville Challenge. It is currently January 3rd, with Trash surviving 25 days and killing just around 1,300 zombies. Our weight is good, our skills are even better, and it's only gonna go on up as we get ourselves into a whole new horde clearing situation. Last episode, we cleared out the Finnegan Research Facility, and I say that with not too much confidence because the building was pretty empty, but that was luck. I'm guessing the baseball stadium will not have that same effect though, but the good thing is that we didn't waste any resources, so we are all ready and set to rock. The only thing I need to do is switch over our vehicle to the one that we found before. So let's go do that real quick and also kill these zombies. I can't believe the two of these zombies were just chilling outside of my house. That could have been bad. Anyways, off to the cars. And it's as simple as one, two, and three. Not only does this smaller blue car have a smaller profile, which means, you know, better navigation, but the gas mileage and just about everything else should be even better. Plus it has a, you know, working hood and an even better engine. Now that we got our new car, we're gonna have to chart a course all the way there. Now we're gonna be saving the mall for last as you know, it's big, but I think we will drive right past it to get over to the baseball stadium. The larger the roads means the less chance I have of getting road blocked. So yeah, I think we're gonna follow this main pathway all the way down right to it. And then I'm probably gonna start a burn right in the massive parking lot. That's as good as a plan as we're gonna get, so let's just get cranking. And I gotta say, I already love the feel of this car. It is so much more controllable compared to a station wagon and I'm gonna be able to bob and weave my way right on through with little to no issue. Though the fun thing about Louisville is that the deeper you get, the harder it becomes to not hit a zombie. I I'm not even there yet, and the streets are already pretty congested. I think we take a left right down here, 
and then another right, and we should be getting close to it. Hopefully. <laughs> we really don't have a lot of time to check our map right now. I guess I can afford it right now. Let's see. Yep. Okay. So one more left and then one more right and we will be there. I will try to avoid shooting our shotgun at all costs just in case if we can skirt on by and get in the middle without bringing in too large of a horde, you know? But judging from the zombies that have already aggroed onto me and, and just the countless amounts that are ready to... Yeah, nope, nope, looking around, it's definitely not gonna be that. Well, at least I can park right on down here and shoot off our shotgun a couple of times. And we'll see how big of a horde we can get. Oh my... God, this is not a good look at all. I'm doing a 360 and I think uh, 120 shotgun shells is not gonna cut it. Uh, let's go open up a couple of boxes though and we'll get started, you know, pop off a couple of shots and I will let you know how bad it truly gets. Ooh. One thing's for sure though, this is definitely not a knife sized horde. Uh, I think we can all agree on that and it's only gonna get worse from here on out. I really don't know how we're gonna be able to navigate through all of these zombies. Oh my, there's at least like, um, I don't know, 20 zombies or so, maybe 30 on a good day. Yeah, the zombies are quite literally fading in and out of existence as I run past them. That's not a good look at all. I, I guess we'll see how large of a horde we can get though, right? <laughs> You know, I think it's all about perspective when it comes to surviving the apocalypse. Instead of thinking on how many zombies are actually in front of me, it's a lot more healthy to think of this as like a massive game of Katamari. But instead of, uh, <laughs> instead of trees, you know, street lamps and cows being made up into a big ball, we're just creating a gelatinous mass of undead that are phasing in and out of reality, tearing it apart at the seams. Whenever I look into the abyss, the abyss looks back and it throttles my CPU as a result. We'll pop off a couple more shotgun shots just to bring them in a little bit more. And then after that, I think we have the green light to Molotov these zombies. And they are still streaming on in. Definitely not worried that the zombies are still streaming in by the hundreds. And I have created a CPU killer horde right there. There's at least like <laughs> two, maybe 3,000 zombies. At least we have some good old orange soda to cheer up trash and quench my thirst in a very cool way. Oh, ho, ho, it's getting spicy. We're good, we're good, we're fine. I, I, I have this completely under control right now. Yep. Where are my Molotovs? I forgot to craft them. Well, that shouldn't take too long at all. Please tell me, okay, I have a single dirty rag. You know what? One Molotov will have to do. Let's craft it up right now, bada bam. And now it is time to burn down this horde at a safe distance away from the stadium so I don't burn that down as well. We got one shot. Do not miss this opportunity, trash. It's coming once in a lifetime. I mean that quite literally. If you if you mess this up, buddy, your life is gonna be over. So let's throw that Molotov down and watch this horde get consumed by a fireball. Any minute now. Okay, I think it's actually so laggy that the, the Molotov did not drop. Okay, there it goes, there it goes. Now we're burning them. Okay, that's what I love to see. Now we just gotta run around here a few times and these zombies should Darwin award themselves in due time. Oh, I should probably walk more so we don't get too exhausted. God, that is a lot of fire right now. Yep, just another day in the beautiful town of Louisville. You know, if you think about it, it's kind of like the first episode that I've ever done on this series, but cranked up to a solid hundred times population. It shouldn't take too long for these bozos to start burning up and dying, though. And now all I gotta do is wait. Wait for the magic to happen. And before I do watch this horde burn away before my very eyes, I'd like take one last look at that fireball. Oh yeah. <laughs> Someone call Smokey, cause it's about to get hot. I mean, it's already hot, but you know, you know what I mean. It's um, 
It, it's at a decent temperature and good timing because I am extremely tired and exerted. Crazy to see what a single Molotov cocktail can do in terms of killing a zombie horde, though. It's, it's insane that only a third of the horde is actually rendered. At least it isn't laggy when you look away, you know, kind of like a screwed up game of peekaboo. Oh, yeah, look at the bodies drop! <laughs> oh! Oh my... That, that is the best part. That is actually the best part about this entire thing. I'm, I'm watching hundreds of zombies get, like, painted. Like, someone's using, like, a paint tool in, a, in an art program. Oh, the world is simply trash as canvas, and I can't wait to pick through all these bodies when we're done here. I might have to sleep outside in a car for tonight, but I think that this horde has its days numbered. That will never not get beautiful. We've created a literal ring of fire, and it's still rolling. And that right there, that's how you solve your lag problem. <laughs> oh, I can only imagine how fast Trash is building up corpse sickness right now. Now, I am going to need to rest up very soon, so once the last of these bozos are, like, you know, done dying and all, I think we can go ahead and sleep in that, like, co-housing area right up here, and then in the morning we can go check out the, um, <laughs> the massive corpse pile, and then after that, it's a free ticket to the baseball stadium. Front row seats as well. I am getting extremely tired, though, so these zombies are going to need to hurry it up. You know what I could do instead? I'll just take some vitamins right now, uh, supplement my drowsiness, and then I'm going to stab the rest of these zombies down. There's like 10 left, so it should be no problem for us. All right, that is gonna be most of them taken care of, and what good timing. It's It's gotten extremely late out here. Now, let's go make our way inside before I attract any more groups ready to murder me. I am pretty thankful that I did decide to pack a flashlight. Let's hope- Oh, come on! I was supposed to sleep here. Well, as long as I stay up there, I'm, I'm gonna be fine. Also, I do find it kind of funny that it is snowing. In my headcanon, that snow is actually the ashes from the massive horde of uh, zombies that I burnt down earlier. I'm not gonna be able to sleep here, am I? Well, you know what? I'm gonna go sleep in a van, and I'll call it a day. All right, let's hope we don't get jumped, and if we do, I can always switch to the second seat before stuff gets even worse. Good night. And welcome to another day. It was very uneventful. I don't see any zombies nearby. Other than that bozo there. Zombie who? <laughs> I don't see any that you're talking about. This once massive horde is now something a little bit more stabbable. I will also be searching through every single zombie here in a very, you know, rudimentary way because I can't stay here all day, but I'm going to be looking for any cool weapons that I can take to help my whole goal, right? We are only in the parking lot right now, and I want to make my way inside the baseball stadium, which, you know, there are going to be a lot more hordes to deal with, so I need to be as prepared as I can. So aside from killing zombies, I will let you all know if I find anything cool in here. Who knows, we might even find ourselves a katana, a screwdriver, and hunting knife. Another kitchen knife, another kitchen knife, another knife, knife, machete. Already, trash is getting a little bit queasy from being around the area, but I will tell you my haul. We got six kitchen knives, three screwdrivers, a single hunting knife, and a machete. Not a bad haul at all, especially with the machete. I've definitely missed some things, but there's no way you can 
loot that big of a horde efficiently. I'm actually getting nauseous, so I do need to move out of the area, like, very quickly. We're probably going to go down to the southern area just to avoid um, getting any more sick. On the bright side, though, we did lose a nauseous emoji immediately from getting out of the area, and we should have enough kitchen knives to absolutely infiltrate the baseball stadium without wasting any real resource. What I'm trying to say is that I am pretty happy with what we've been able to do so far. Okay, so we're going to cut in through the southern area right through there, fighting off any zombies on the way. Sounds good. I'm going to be unstoppable. I got two knives, <laughs> both in each hand, and then I have another two spare on my belts. I am a walking spike trap right now. So you know how I said I was going to go through the southern area of this baseball stadium? There doesn't seem to be any doorway nearby. So what I might do instead is just hug this wall up here to see if there's any, like, maintenance rooms I can get myself into. Yeah, that right there. We are going to need to kill a few zombies, but it should be no problem for trash. And then once we're in through there, it's going to be hopefully an easy-ish time. I would be lying if I said I wasn't a little bit worried about going inside the baseball stadium, though. Because going indoors is a whole nother game, and I'm a little bit worried that I might get cornered indoors, right? It, it, it definitely doesn't give me as many advantages as I would have out here. Also, what the hell was that? That was an extremely scary whiff. Let's hope that never happens again. All we got to do is stab these zombies one at a time. Wish me luck. After killing a few hordes that were lingering around the entrance, we can finally say that we have infiltrated the area. Now, I really didn't think ahead on this type of plan because I don't know what I'm going to be doing inside, but maybe getting a nice baseball bat and a baseball straight from the source, you know, the Louisville Stadium, home of the Louisville Slugger. I think that'd be really freaking cool. So let's go do that. And I also want to see how the stadium looks after six months of erosion. Oh, I'm actually really excited and I'm glad that I've that I've been finally able to work my way on inside here. It took a little bit, but, you know, I think it'll be worth it at the end of the day. Who knows? If anything, it just builds up my stabbing abilities. And we are definitely in the right spot, as there are a bunch of baseball zombies. So that's pretty damn cool. I don't think we're going to be able to stay here for too long, but I am extremely curious about the center area. Yeah, there's too many zombies for me to kill here. There's no way I'm going to be able to pull this off. So let's go check it out in a pretty quick and fashionable way. And there are definitely baseball players out in the field, which is pretty damn cool as well. Oh, this is so red. I'm glad I was finally able to make my way inside here. Not that we're going to be able to stay here for any, you know period of time from the zombies. Ooh, there's also baseball bats on the floor. Ooh, if I can get my hands on a, 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 on a actual Louisville slugger that has been used in the game, I'll count that as a win, right? We're only here as a tourist, and we're not supposed to be here, you know, to, to clear out the zombies. So I'm going to take one of those, probably look around the area a tiny bit more, and we can, you know, get the hell out of here. God, this place is so cool. It's a multi-layered stadium. Like, I really want to take this in a little bit more and enjoy the scenery and visuals, but it's extremely hard to do that. Let me get my hands on one of those baseball bats. I've earned this, damn it. Both the baseball and baseball bat. Oh, could you imagine how much we could sell this for? Give me another baseball just to have two. Okay, we got that. I'm going to go head back inside and lose this horde, and we might run around the area a little bit. Yep, out of the way, bozos. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Oh, I bet they got some freaking official hot dogs in here as well. Actually, the more I'm looking at it, the more I'm realizing how screwed it is inside here. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to leave. <laughs> Screw that. I am not willing to risk my life here right now. Whoop, out of the way. 
Okay, before I do leave though, one thing that I do want to do is run a full home run, right? I think that'd be really freaking cool, so let's go do that before things get any worse out here. If the zombies tag me, I am dead. But I think it'd be really cool as well, so let's go run from base one, hitting base two, absolutely styling on base three. And just like that, we've hit our nice little home run. I'm kind of running out of things to do here because there still is a massive horde. Uh, I would really like to check out the, you know, like the fourth story, but I, I don't think that's going to happen. So I think after I like check a few of these interiors, like the dugouts, I am going to go ahead and leave while I still can. Overall, I would say that this entire trip has been worth it. I mean, we got ourselves a themed baseball and a baseball bat to bring home, and I got to run across all of the plates. Um, that's really about it here, though. Other than just a massive amounts of concessions, stands around the area, and just extremely cool stuff like that. I'm really sad I won't be able to look at the locker room and, like, the storage facilities here. But yeah, I'm, I'm no Claudette Frederick. <laughs> We're getting the hell out of here. And maybe, just maybe, I'll snipe out a new car as well. All right, it was fun while it lasted. I think it's about time I get the hell out of here. Yep, see you bozos later. <laughs> I didn't even need to pay the price. And all it took was killing over a thousand zombies within the parking lot to experience like two minutes of that place. I'm going to go kill this horde up here, check out some of the cars, and then I think we'll end the episode here. There we are. Now it's time to check out the cars, which has a key inside it. Okay, cool. I think this is going to be our new car then. Um, we are going to need to change out the battery and the gas, but the hood on this bad boy is a lot better in terms of condition. Yeah, we got a 71% hood, 78% engine, gas tank is a little lacking, but I will take it. So I'm going to do this off camera, and I think this will be a good spot to end the episode, which marks down another little location out of the way. Goodbye, baseball stadium. Up next, I think we should go check out either the Spiffo headquarters or the gym. What I really want to do is go deep into the city, hit up the army surplus store, and then loop back through, hitting the mall, and then going to where God knows where. So far, we got three locations out of the way, though, so I think we're making some fantastic progress. I will see you guys in the next episode. Peace the hell out, everyone. Do you like my car. I just got it, and this baby is ready to drive on the roads. The sad thing is that trash is not ready, as it is extremely late, with trash being pretty drowsy, and I really don't want to sleep in front of this massive corpse pile and die from corpse sickness that way. So before it gets any darker out, what I'm gonna do is try to secure a nice base, for us to continue our journeys in the morning. Last episode, we just got done visiting the baseball stadium and I have collected my souvenirs. We got a couple of baseballs and a baseball bat. Now, there's not a lot of good options for us to sleep at, so my plan right now is to try to clear out that building up there because it has an escape balcony. I will say, this is probably one of the main challenges we will face the entirety of this challenge up until we make it to the mall, and that is just trying to find a damn place to sleep most of the time, because everywhere has zombies, and when everywhere has zombies, you really can't catch a break. It's a good thing that Trash is pretty damn powerful when it comes to Short Blade. Sadly, not level 6 powerful, but that will come very soon. Matter of fact, it might be able to come by this episode if I keep this, uh, this momentum up. There shouldn't be too many zombies left, and after that's done, we can finally get our damn night's rest. Small update, Trash is tired, so right now I'm taking this tea bag so I can reset my fatigue and increase my damage potential. It's crazy to see how much sleepiness affects your combat abilities in this game. If I were to redo this challenge, I would definitely give Trash Wakeful just to be able to be 
as potent in combat as I am in the mornings. I, I really wish I would have taken it, but we are almost inside, and then we can finally take a break. Now, I will also say we are not going to stay here for a long time at all, as the backyard is probably filled to the brim with zombies. All I'm going to be doing is barricading the second story, and if we do get overrun, I'm just going to hop out the balcony like a ninja. I hope it won't come to that, but we shall see in the morning. For now, I'm going to get my damn night's sleep. One way or another. Well, I didn't get the best nights of sleep, but I sure as hell am alive and well, so I will take that as a win. And because it is 4.20 a.m. right now, instead of going out and about with the flashlight, I will first introduce you to my plan, because I've kind of developed a path that I want to take that should hit all of our goals today. So, Trash is here right now in this building where we have taken care of the baseball stadium. Up next, we're going to be hitting up the Spiffo restaurant, and then once we hit that, we're going to ignore every other goal until I can make it to the Army Surplus Store. Then I'm going to swing around and hit the rest of them as we are going back all the way to the mall, and then we will be done here. Now, this plan doesn't really account for needing to sleep or food or any of those reasons, but I'm sure we'll figure that out on the way. And, you know, that's the fun in this whole challenge is the uncertainty of the unknown. Who knows, I might get myself into an early grave or this will be one of the characters that actually lives to tell the tale. Only time will tell. The only thing I need right now is some extra water and we are just gonna head right on out. Now I will say that the Spiffo Emporium is pretty small, but I'm hoping to at least get like a nice little keepsake or like a little, you know, Spiffo plush maybe, a mug, anything of the sorts afterwards. It really depends on how many zombies we actually come across there, as this could be a multi-episode deal, or we might be able to get two goals done in one day. And, oh, wow, that is a surprise party if I've ever seen one. It's a good thing I didn't sleep out inside the uh, car today, isn't it? I'm gonna go slip around and just hop in. I don't really want to kill these zombies. I've already gotten everything I needed. I'm really glad I took care of this beforehand. Okay. We are getting the hell out of here now. It's a little bit of a bumpy ride driving over all those corpses. But now it's smooth sailing up until we drive there and I will decide on the spot if it's going to be a fire type situation. It's going to be a Molotov type situation the more I'm looking at this. Oh, great heavens. Okay. I'm glad I took a new vehicle for this one. Anyways, we are here. As you see right up there, it's Spiffo World, and it has a very cool statue at the front that I sadly cannot steal. You guys already know the deal. I mean, there's no way in hell I'm stabbing my way through this many zombies. It's, it's gonna be another Molotov type deal. We got four more, so we have more than enough supplies. We'll craft this one up, round up the zombies with our shotgun, and see how big of a horde we can get. Really glad that this parking lot is here, as this makes things a lot easier for me to manage. Ah, back to the old grindstone, as they say. I can't wait till I hit up the military surplus store. Then we will have more than enough shotgun shells to fight God. Wish me luck, though, because things do get pretty hairy when there are just zombies for miles around here. I'm hoping that we won't get, you know, cornered. But that is very wishful thinking when half of the street is filled with zombies. Holy crap, that's a Spiffo suit. That's pretty awesome. That's extremely rare as well. I wonder where the helmet went, though. That's what I really care about. Also, this is getting... Oh, my. <laughs> this is a little... It's a little scary. I'll be completely honest. Um... I'm, I'm, I'm kind of... I'm kind of... I'm kind of worried at how many zombies are just here right now. Let's hope that we can really keep up the momentum. Oh, I wish I had a better place of <laughs> rounding up these zombies. Yeah, the more I'm looking at it, the more I'm realizing this is kind of this is kind of screwed up, man. Oh, how am I supposed to live, laugh, love in these conditions? I can't wait till I can throw a Molotov on this massive horde. Oh God, the fence lines as well. This is not a good look right now. Nice car though there. I might have to check that out after I'm done. You know, not dying. I guess I'll let you guys know if I'm getting ripped apart by like a thousand plus zombies or if I'm gonna live to tell the tale. It's 
It's, it's probably like a solid 10% chance of dying right now. Pretty damn high, all things considered, though. This is so... I, I hate how shady this is. Bobbing and weaving between zombies is bad, but when you look at the horde and you're running at like a solid 10 FPS, things start to hit a little bit different. Um, they keep on they keep on swarming in, by the way. I, I guess this is basically like the capital, you know, of the city. So the population is obviously going to be the highest, but holy crap. This is not a good look for me, like, at all. I hate how the zombies are turning into sleep paralysis demons, like, before my very eyes. I don't even need to look into the abyss anymore. The abyss is, is me. I am the abyss at this point. Holy crap. I do think it is time to throw our Molotov cocktail, though. We've waited long enough, and I think the horde we have, um, acquired on our journey is more than enough to warrant a single Molotov throw. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. It's not looking too good for me. Uh, let's get a little bit, a little ways away here, and we're gonna throw it down. Because of the lack of the amount of zombies in game, that Molotov will take around seven days in game to actually land and become a real thing. There it is. Okay, now instead of just dealing with hundreds of uh, thousands upon zombies, we're gonna deal with thousands of zombies on fire. Let's make sure we don't trip up here. This is when it gets pretty funky. Ooh, yep, yep, yep. And you wonder why I said it's almost impossible to clear this entire map out, or even a single area of the map with respawn enabled. The amount of zombies in the area here makes just the tiniest amount of respawn rate almost in the hundreds by every day. So yeah, we're gonna kill the horde. We're gonna walk into our goddamn Spiffo store and we're gonna get our souvenir and leave. Whatever the hell it's gonna be. I feel sad for burning the Spiffo suit, but if I were to take anything out of it, it would be the hat and I did not see it on that zombie. So I do not care. Oh, don't turn around. That is a bad way to go through. Anyways, it's time to walk in circles for a couple of hours and cross my fingers that nature just kind of settles itself out. Now, I will say another thing. I don't think this is the stadium, like, parking lot level of zombie. I don't think there's too many there to warrant that, but it's still quite a bit of zombies. And now you can see all of the bodies drop afterwards. <laughs> that is, oh gosh, it, it, it never gets not interesting just to look at the overmap, just to see them plop down. Ah, good vibes, good vibes. Maybe I will be able to take two Spiffo trinkets out of this one then. I will say though, the smell must be absolutely horrid. I, I, I am really happy that Trash is has decided to wear the gas mask as a fashion statement because it may or may not have indirectly saved his life from the amount of toxic fumes in the air currently. I really do hope they make it to where gas masks will affect the corpse sickness and how fast you gain it because it will make gas masks 10 times better. That is another massive mega zombie horde taken care of in a big ol' spiral like before. It's actually kind of scary <laughs> knowing that this is my status quo now, you know? Like, killing this big of a horde with fire and knives is just another day for trash. And really, this is how I do most of my looting nowadays, just picking through these corpses. I won't be picking through them for too long. I will just be grabbing a couple of surface level screwdrivers and maybe a katana if I'm lucky. And uh, yeah, I don't really want to stick here for too long as the main attraction right now is the Spiffo store. Hold on here. <laughs> oh, is that a Spiffo suit still on that zombie? Okay, I'm surprised that survived the, you know, Flames and Inferno. Don't mind if I do grab that. It's worn out and completely busted with no hat, but that is still a souvenir if I don't find anything cool inside the actual headquarters itself. Which, speaking of the headquarters, I want to check out, like, right now. The Spiffo suit has now been deposited. We're making really good time, by the way. It's only 11.40 a.m., and we've already done, like, the, the, the main hassle of clearing out this place. 
Oh, okay. I say that as a zombie comes up right behind me. We still have a little bit of cleaning up to do, but it's nothing on the level that I would have had to do before, you know? And at this point, nothing will stop me from enjoying my Spiffo branded fun anyway, anyhow. One way or another, I'm getting to that damn play pit, <laughs> okay? I've earned it. It's mine. Oh, it's right there. We are so damn close. The only thing between me and Spiffo land is this one zombie here. I will also say, I I'm so happy I decided to invest into knives. It it's become such a powerhouse and we're not even at max level with it. I don't think we will get to max level, but I don't even need to. I it's already proven itself on how like little we, we get exhausted. And the insta-kills are really satisfying, but yeah! Welcome to the Spiffo headquarters, situated in the middle of Louisville, Kentucky. We have a very cool little restaurant slash corporation office combo, and it's pretty damn cool. I also am very saddened to know that you can't pick up this massive Spiffo statue. Actually, you can! You can pick it up! Hold on here! No way! No freaking way! <laughs> This is news to me. I don't know if that was like a fluke or not, but if you can actually pick the statue up, that's so awesome. Oh my, oh, you can't, you can't. It's actually impossible. Oh, bummer, dude. That's really sad. I should probably not die though. I'll try it just a little bit more, but if we can't, you know, take it with me, that's all right as well. It's not like we even had the space to pick it up. Yeah, I can't pick it up. The only thing that actually lit up was me picking up the carpet and that is something I don't want. Pretty cool that it's its own furniture piece though, and it's also called the Glorious Spiffo. Gosh, that's such a that's such a nice statue. Okay, how bad is it inside? Not bad at all, actually. Oh, I might be able to explore this place fully. Alright. Oh, this is gonna be such a nice change of pace from what we had to deal with in the uh, baseball stadium. I, I I'm all for it at this point. So let's go clear out most of the zombies in the restaurant area, and then we can go check out the office area afterwards. Ooh, there's a new level of short blade. Also, I think this is one of the last of zombies for the restaurant portion of the area, and then it's gonna be clean sweeps. As you see, there's even a spiffo dedicated like little play pit. All right, and Trash is definitely not old enough to play in that. <laughs> Yippee. Okay, that's all the fun I can really have here. There's not really much to do in the play pit, actually. <laughs> it's, it's pretty cool though. Um, the only thing that, oh, there's another Spiffo suit as well! Hey, that's, that's freaking rad! We just gotta kill a few hundred zombies for it. Okay, let's not get overwhelmed here, though. This could hit the fan at any moment. God, where are the helmets in this place, though? That's what I'm really caring about, is a Spiffo-branded hat. Maybe we'll get one the deeper we go into this place. Okay, there were quite a few more zombies in that place. The Spiffo suit, by the way, was not in any better condition, so that's kind of sad. I don't think I took the tail, though, so that is pretty nice. I was- that, that, that was a lot of zombies that streamed through that, like, that top area. I hope when we get back in, it won't be as bad, though. Yeah, I already have a tail, so I will drop that off. We don't need more than one. Though it is pretty funny that we came across two mascots all without the freaking hat. Like, the best part, we're also getting tired already. I, I hate not having Wakeful in this game. It is so, so damn difficult to kill zombies. But the inside is a little bit more clear, so let's go check out the back room area. We, we, we can't stay here for long at all. I, may, I don't even think we can stay here for, 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 for even, like, another hour or so. Oh, dang it, another knife broke as well. I hate being tired. Did I ever say that? That is our that is our big limiter, I would say. You know, out of everything in this damn game, it's getting tired. God damn, where do these zombies come from, dude? I just want my freaking Spiffo burgers. Okay, that's fine. You know what? It's not fine. There's actually so many that I'm I'm kind of getting I'm getting peeved over this. Look at that. That's all inside. Where do they come from? Where, where were they? I swear they just materialize out of the distance. I know I'm complaining a lot, but I just really want to check out the cool spots, but it's so, so hard to when there's that many zombies. Okay. I don't think we're going to be able to make it to the top of the Spiffos, but it's still pretty cool. There's a little corporate office there. God, there's still so many! Okay, okay, I'm going to go check out the back room and um, grab myself some damn 
burgies, all right? At the very least, I can do that for myself. Ain't, ain't that right, sir? Hell yeah, it is. Look at that spiffo mug. Ooh, ooh, we, we got merch as well. We got merch. Okay, that's huge. <laughs> all right, maybe this whole trip was worth it. I have to leave, like, right now. All right, we got what we came here for. Let's get the hell out. Okay, I actually can't leave through this way. Oh, this is a problem. This is completely fine, though. I've been through worse, all right? Oh, God. I'm actually gonna die in a... I'm gonna die in a spiffos. I'm gonna die in a spiffos. Move. I need to get out of here. Okay, we're cool. We're cool. Well, I could not stay here for too long, but I got my Freddy the Fox plushies, and we did say hi. I'm just gonna go give the spiffo statue one little last good 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 luck rub before i do leave out of the way sir good luck mr spiffo i'm out of here i'm sad i didn't grab the helmet but it is what it is <laughs> as we are one spiffo mug and two freddy the fox is richer hell yeah let's get out of here and i think our next target is going to be the military surplus store i don't want to stick around this high populated area any longer than i need to I i'm not going to be able to sleep here is what i'm trying to say so the quicker we get moving the better things will be for us Oh, I forgot how bad these streets are yeah so this is the average cdda louisville um field trip as you see, um, traffic is kind of congested. I'm really glad I ditched the station wagon when I could, though. Yeah, I kind of hate it here. <laughs> oh, this is not a good look. This is not a good look at all. Okay, we're almost out, though. We're almost through. There were so many zombies, but now that we've driven out a little bit more, it's gotten better. And there's a gas station here. And if I think if we go up this way, we will come across a surplus store. Alrighty, here we are at the Ready Prep Army Issue Surplus Store. There's actually not too many zombies here. Not as much as I was expecting, so this is really good for us. Actually, the more I'm looking at it, the more I'm realizing this is going to be another burn type situation. Okay, so here's a fun little fact. <laughs> I might have to pull an all-nighter here with, with how many zombies there are, and I think that is, th that's a good call. Um, we do have some coffee, and we do have a flashlight with extra batteries, should we need it, and we do have this massive, um, parking lot for us to kill some more zombies with, so... Yeah, it's just gonna be another one of those days. Let's make another Molotov here, beautiful. Open up another box of shotgun shells, and let's hope we can get most of the zombies here in this parking lot now, before it gets any worse out. Okay, I think we've gathered up enough zombies to warrant another Molotov throw right down there. I like to imagine that there's still someone out there in space living off, you know, what little they had and watching the world slowly fall apart and go into darkness. And then they just see a little flash of light, you know, deep down in Kentucky and it's really just trash burning down another massive zombie horde. <laughs> I don't know, I just thought it was a cool thought to share with y'all. I'm also kind of going insane right now with how much I've been having to cut corners. The coffee was extremely helpful, by the way. So now all we gotta do is just wait for this horde to burn on down. Definitely not as big as my other horde burns, but still pretty sizable. Also, one last thing before I do let the rest of these zombies burn as they are starting to drop like flies. This one hand torch, this flashlight has been one of the best investments I've ever made loot wise. I've had so many situations to where I needed this to survive and it has saved my skin so many times. It might not seem like much, but having that little bit of extra light is better than being in pitch black darkness. Ain't that right, zombie horde that's currently on fire and also giving me passive, passive light. I give it another minute or so, and there should be a solid five zombies left, and I'm probably gonna sleep in that massive uh, battery factory for the night, checking out the army surplus store in the morning. Nice. That's gonna be most of them. This was actually one of the better clears because of how remote this place is compared to the rest of the city, to where I don't need to worry about zombies from all angles, you know, converging in on me. Oh, it is such a nice break. I am going to have to go back in there when I do loot the rest of the locations, though. So this is kind of like our small earned break, though I still need to clear out all of the interiors here. So we're not really out of it yet. I need to get my hands on a office building to where I can get some sleep.
All right, not bad at all, Trash. Let's go get some damn sleep and wake up on a fantastic day. The birds are chirping, and more importantly, Trash lives yet again. Now I can finally show you my stats, and I think I'm gonna go save the army surplus store for tomorrow. I think we've been running on for quite a while. We checked out some of the Spiffo place. We got to play in the ball pit at the very least. You know, that's something. We we got some Spiffo merchandise out of there. Eh, overall, it wasn't that bad. I mean, we got two birds with one stone, didn't we? I mean, I guess we only got one bird. And then we are currently tracking down the second as it is right across the street. But you know exactly what I mean. So far, Trash has survived 27 days, 28 days basically, surviving his first month in this apocalypse, killing 1,694 zombies, not including all the ones that we have burned alive. If we include those, it's probably somewhere in the ballpark of like 10,000 at this point, maybe like 5,000 generously, but it's pretty damn high at this point. Okay, we've burned a lot of zombies. You can tell from the amount of charcoal lumps in the area. Peace the hell out, everyone. It's been a pretty long week so far, but it's only going to get longer from here on out as we get closer to the finish line. Anyways, welcome back everyone to the CDDA Louisville Challenge. Trash is back, not really better than ever, it's still pretty depressing here as I'm sitting next to a massive ash pile, but the one good thing is that there is a free hunting knife inside this lady's back. And we also get free dibs on the military surplus store. We fought hard to get here, so all we have to do now is kill the zombies on the outside, get in on the inside, and we will have a big ol' arsenal of weaponry at our disposal. We just gotta get through the zombies first. There you have it. We killed all the front entrance zombies. I'm not sure about the back area, but we can get to that later. The only thing you need to know right now is that we have access to one of the largest, if not the largest, military stockpile zones in the game. We got gear, we got clothing, we have bags, and more importantly, in the back, there's a very, very, very nice armory to where I can hopefully get some new toys to play with. So how about we go clear out that back room and we get started. Okay, there was definitely a little bit more resistance than I was expecting in the back, but now we won't have to worry about that later. Never mind, it, it got even worse. I hate Louisville. <laughs> oh, it's not even a joke at this point. The amount of zombies here is just unreal. It's a good thing I'm basically a demigod with this knife or else I would be in a lot worse of a position right about now. Still crazy on how they can just like tuna pack themselves in such small places. That was one hell of a fight, but it should be worth it because we have cleared out the, the nearby zombies so I don't have to worry about getting jumped while I am, you know, focused on the more important things and that's looting. Let's go do a little one over and then I think we ought to start off this big old looting trip by entering this back armory here. We are going to need our skeleton key, aka the sledgehammer to get in, but we should have one of those in the car. And things do seem to be clear, so that is a green light for me to get rich. So where is that beautiful sledgehammer? Uh, I, all I have is my merchandise in here. What about the seats? It seems that in a lapse of judgment, I have forgotten one of the most crucial items in this series, my sledgehammer. <laughs> This is not the first time I forgot it. No, this is the second time. Okay. Yeah, that complicates things by quite a bit. I don't know why I'm still checking the damn trunk. It's not like it's going to magically appear. I, I'm, I'm just really disappointed in myself that I, that I forgot it twice. Well, there is one other way that I can get in the armory, and it's going to be a little bit more 
heisty, and it's gonna require me to have a screwdriver, nails and a hammer, and a saw, which is something I do have. The only thing that I'm missing is a knife, and what I'm gonna be doing is getting inside the, the battery factory, hopping out on that balcony there, and just bridging my way over into the armory. That's the only other way that I'm gonna do it, because there is no way in hell I'm going all the way back to my base or wherever in God's name I dropped that off. The only problem right now is the nails, but thankfully, aside from there being a military surplus store, there is a warehouse. So how about we pay that a nice little visit, and then I can just go loot the front area of the surplus store. I'm sure we're still going to find a bunch of cool things, ammo and weapons. I am definitely not coping in any way right now. <laughs> Alrighty, that should be our golden ticket inside this warehouse. I'm gonna get my nails and I'm gonna get out. We don't need any more than, I would say, 100 nails. And then after that, I'm gonna need like 14 to like 30 planks worth of supplies. How many zombies are in here? Not too many, we can take this. Oh, there's actually still hope for me. Okay, where are the nails? right there beautiful um i might check a little bit more ahead but i'm not gonna stick around here any longer than i need to yep it's time to skedaddle the fun part about this city is that in every single back alley back room and building in here there are around 20 zombies to try to ruin my life we got what we need though so now all i need to do is secure a pathway into the big old factory so i can set up my little construction plot and then it's planks. Did I ever tell you how much I hate exploring interiors in this game because of how claustrophobic and dangerous it can get? If not, I'm gonna tell you again because this is extremely dangerous for me. Okay, we got that cleared out. Just a little bit more and I should have the green light. Okay, it looks good. I'm going to stick around here for the rest of the day then. We are getting thirsty and hungry, so let's go try and find a bathroom real quick, and I can uh, move out into the roof. Right there, we got some water. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And now that we got the pathway secure, all we need is a bunch of planks. So you see exactly where I'm going for now. This is going to take a lot of supplies, but thankfully I do have a hand axe to make things a little bit easier. The only real problem is going to be lugging the stuff back and forth while also trying to be safe at the same time. But as long as we play our cards right, we should be fine in that regard as well. I really wasn't expecting this episode to take a turn like this. It would have been a lot quicker if I had just brought the darn sledgehammer with me. But you know, hindsight 2020. Thankfully, we are on the edge of the map, so we have a bunch of trees to chop down and zombies to cut down as well. Oh, and I will mention, we are starting to two-shot these zombies now, so that's th that's pretty awesome. You know what isn't, though? Battling tiredness at 3 p.m. I, I am not flourishing right now. <laughs> Just please give me some release. Alrighty, let's make this quick. Oh, I'm also gonna need some sheet ropes so I can get up and down without trapping myself indoors as well. I almost forgot about that. Pretty important knowledge, actually. Ooh, another thing about sheet ropes as well that I need to really use in the future is that if you make sheet ropes, you can actually bundle up logs and that should be extremely helpful because I really don't want to make a lot of trips here. So let's go make some sheet ropes to tie them together and reduce the weight as well. Now we're starting to use our brain. <laughs> My whole two cells are firing neurons like a machine gun. Alrighty, we were able to get two four log stacks and two just logs out and about, giving us around 10 in total. That probably won't be enough as that's around 30 planks, but it is one hell of a start and we are way too tired and exhausted to continue moving out and about here. And of course, as with the high population, there are always going to be zombies that just want to make my life a living hell. Okay, bring it on. Just because I'm tired doesn't mean I can't kick your freaking teeth in. Let's hurry this on up now before it gets any worse. Cool, we made it back. Let's unstack these logs and drop them down, giving us 10 in total. Okay, 
Let's go saw these bad boys up and start to build over while I am exhausted and tired. There's not much else I can do right now. I guess I'll see y'all then. Thankfully, we did have enough to bridge right on over, with some to spare as well. Now all I gotta do is set up a couple of fences here, so I can shimmy my way on down. I am so thankful that we do have this option. <laughs> it would have been ten times more disappointing if I wouldn't have been able to, to figure out a way through. And I will also set up a, another little wood fence down here, so I have access to the actual other side of the store as well. Those zombies are below me. I, I will simply not comprehend them. Bada, bingo. Three planks to spare? I, I think that's pretty damn good. Now it's time for the moment of truth. Let's hop our way on down and see what we got here. Oh, I'm so thankful that works. And so, I welcome you to the Louisville Army Surplus back of the store. It took a little bit, but here we are. We got some 9 mil rounds, ammo as far as the eye can see, and if the ammo didn't really suit my taste, we also have a bunch of guns. And by guns, I mean a single shotgun, which I will take now. Because we are at a level 4 aiming, and a JS-2000 is just better bang for our buck right now. What else do we have inside here? Copious amounts of ammo, a balaclava, military duffel bag, an M16 magazine. Ooh, that'd be pretty cool if y'all gave me one. Some ammo, even more ammo, and lastly, we have ourselves ammo. Just so much ammo. Okay, you know what? It wasn't the worst, but it's not the best either. But hey, we're here now, and that's all that matters. And I think it's something to be proud about, despite us not getting something cool like an M16. Because I threw myself a curveball by being an idiot, and I still found a way to profit. It definitely took a lot of time and resources, but here we are. And this is a really good spot to actually rest up in as well, so we have that going for us. Matter of fact, I'm probably going to sleep here another day just to help my sleep schedule. So what I'm going to do really quick is grab a tent to load into the back of that armory because if you guys didn't know tents give you an average bed quality and all that trash has been sleeping on recently is bad because you know we've been sleeping on chairs so this should be a very nice boon for us bingo and now that we have that done it's time to see how much we actually got here we still have to loot the other back room and the front of this store so i am keeping my hopes up first of all let's go loot all of our weapons and ammo and then put them inside these crates so i'm a little bit more organized on what we have not bad at all we didn't find a lot of long arms inside but we do have basically every pistol in the game and we have six boxes of shotgun shells, six boxes of 45, and nine boxes of 308, which is a pretty good amount. Now let's go hop right on over to the front of things. I really hope we get something good out of here as well. Now there are some zombies down below there, so I'm not going to be going down through there. Instead, I'm just going to go in the middle of the walkway and then just to jump down. If you fall from a second story, all that you will lose is a little bit of health. You will not break any bones, so that is a risk I am simply willing to take. Boop. Now we're ready. <laughs> to loot all of the goodies. Though I will look for another thing really quick on all of these radios, and that is the emergency broadcast system. I kind of want to see if there's going to be a storm, you know, soon, so I will have that as well. So we have ourselves a poncho, a Chevalier D6 key, all, all, all the stuff up here is going to be gear. And I'm already geared the hell up, so I don't really need to check that out. Let's see what we have below here. Not before checking to see if there are going to be any storms nearby. Okay, period of weather to start in the afternoon, so we will be chilling here for a while. That's okay, though, because it gives me even more time to look at all the stuff I've earned today. Which includes... A scarf, 556 five, ammo, shotgun shells, 45s, a fiberglass stock, some long johns, some very nice winter hats, at least they would be if I didn't already have one that I am very attached to, a couple of bulletproof vests, and that seems to be it here. It's to be expected. Let's go check out the back room now where most of the ammo will actually be. 
which we have a large backpack, a second large backpack. That's actually so damn nice, because if you didn't know, you can use these and put them on a car seat to basically increase its capacity by seven. Not bad. Not bad at all. Medical supplies, antibiotics, a green military duffel bag, and more importantly, a green military backpack. This is actually the best backpack in the game by a whole one capacity, so I will be taking that one for myself. Oh yeah, despite all the setbacks, this plan seems to be pretty worth it. Even more ammo. With a M14, that is the first assault weapon we have seen for quite a while. And lastly, there's just a little bit of extra ammo. Not bad at all. Let's go lug it back and see how much we actually have in terms of profit. That seems to be it, though. Let's go lug it back to our nice little backroom base area to see what we've gotten out of this whole place. I will also be taking that sign as a souvenir. <laughs> it's pretty damn cool, and I deserve it. Up and at it, then. Right on down to my little safety zone. There we are. We got around 50 kilos of ammo, just loose, and around 12 kilos. It's not the best haul, but it's still pretty decent. Now it's time to decide what I'm actually going to take. What I think we take with us right now is the M9 pistol. Actually, I don't have an M9. Well, I'm going to be taking the 9mm. I'm going to be taking the M36, and we're going to be taking the shotgun shells and calling it a day there. We are only one man with one car, so I really can't be affording all of this extra space. That was a big problem with the Claudette series, so I'm only going to take the weapon calibers of guns that I will actually use to a pretty decent degree. So when you look at it that way, we really aren't leaving with too much, but I'll still take it. Let's rename this bag to the gun bag and add it on to the rest of the stuff that we have inside with the car. Okay, never mind. I, in fact, did not have any extra ammo inside our car. We really are poor, aren't we? <laughs> okay, well, ammo's not really the main thing. It's Molotovs. But the funny thing is I also don't have a lot of Molotovs left. I have a total of two, so we're going to have to get some more of that. And I think once we get some more Molotov material, we can finally end off the episode. Now, would it be crazy if I told you that right next to the army surplus store, there also is a beer and a liquor store? <laughs> it's crazy to see how like condensed all of these locations are. For the for the for number one, we needed to access the warehouse and it's right next to the store. And now we need bourbon and we have the best spot for our bourbon needs. Hopefully it isn't just alcohol because I am getting pretty hungry and we are running extremely low on food supplies. I'm sure they'll have something though, right? It's a good thing that it's all located very conveniently right next to each other because Alone in this episode, I think I've stabbed well over a hundred zombies just to get the bare necessities, and that's after the massive burn that we pulled off. But we have finally made it over to the store. Oh, I see a lot of alcohol inside there and also a lot of zombies. That's kind of wigging me out a bit. Oh, oh, even more zombies actually up there. Let's not aggro that horde. I just really want to get in and get out, please. I've been really having a rough go at it. So if you zombies could just like fall over and die for me, that would be fantastic. Okay, we have a bunch of beer. Uh, bourbon, even more important. I'll be taking the bourbon first and foremost. It doesn't look like we're going to get any food out of here as well, so it looks like we're going to be a raging alcoholic for a bit in order to sate our appetite until we can at least make it to the strip club or night glow club. But I feel like we're going to get even more alcohol out of that as well. Food is food. Who am I to complain, right? <laughs> and oh my, that is a lot of good and delicious bourbon. Bourbon. 
Alrighty though, it's time for us to go. The zombies have broken through and I'm pretty sure they just aggroed the, the zombie horde below me. So I don't want to stick here any longer. We're leaving with six bottles of bourbon, 10 bottles of beer. Uh, I think that's a pretty good amount to leave with. I'm going to try and loot just a little bit more while I am leaving. There we are. That is basically our, our food, lunch, and dinner for now. Now it's time to get back to my base and get some damn sleep. I am completely okay with drinking alcohol. We will just have to go through our day a little bit hungry, but it's a risk I'm willing to take. More importantly, it's time to head back to our actually safe spot to get some damn sleep. And you know what? I think we've earned a nice little, a nice little treat. So I'm going to go micro sip all of these bottles of bourbon so they weigh a little less in my inventory. There we are. Not only are we extremely tired, but we are utterly plastered. It's you and me against the world. I love you. I love you. The funniest thing is that trash thing that isn't really a lie. I am the last human, presumably, on this earth. And I have, and I quite literally have to fight off the entire world. But today, I can at least count it as a little small win. Trash has survived for 29 days, 11 hours, and when I sleep, we will have survived our first full month. We have killed 1,848 zombies, basically with our knife alone, and I don't want to even think about how many we've killed with fire. Overall, I will count this episode as a win. We had some setbacks, but I think we bounced right back into our slaughtering means. Next time, we will be paying a nice little visit to the strip club and nightclub area of this place. And then after that, we're going to hit up the museum and gym, finally getting all the way over to the mall where things get pretty silly. But that'll have to wait for another day. I think we're finally in the home stretch, everyone. Welcome back to the CDDA Louisville Challenge. The reason why I do say that we are in the home stretch is that this army surplus store is going to be our base for the upcoming future. It's secure, I can sleep in it, and I don't have to worry about getting jumped in a city filled to the brim with zombies. Plus, every other location that I need to visit is going to be in this vicinity with the furthest being the gym. Meaning, I can go, say, over to the art gallery, clear that out, maybe take a painting, and then move my way back here to rest up for the night. So this is a really good spot that we found ourselves in. And today, I think Trash needs to party hard. I mean, we already have the alcohol, but it's time we visit the Velvet Tassel and the Night Glow Nightclub. We have survived our first month, killing 1,848 zombies, our weight's looking good, and we are strong and athletic. Oh, I'm, I'm pretty excited. Plus, the fog has cleared up, making this a pretty good day in terms of visibility. Really, the only thing that I'm lacking in is food. I do not have much at all, but I'm sure that will change in the future. Oh, another thing that I do want to say, I won't be driving up and trying to do the Molotov technique at this upcoming location because it is extremely close to the army surplus store and I think I will be able to just stab my way all the way through. If it falls through, I can always just go back and go with the good old Molotov technique, but I want to see how far we can take it with just our hunting knives. So wish me luck. We're about to stab quite a few zombies. It's a good thing that my time to kill is, is really low at this point. Level 6 short blade ain't for nothing, that's for sure. So yeah, it shouldn't be that bad of a time. Plus, you can see the corner of the strip club literally right there. So we are pretty damn close. And I don't want to jeopardize my whole stealth situation right now. Though I will say, it's not going to be an easy fight. This is still the middle of the city. Is that all you bozos got? Because I'm feeling pretty damn good, especially when I have the backing of an actual semi-decent base now. I'm unstoppable. For now. 
Alrighty, we're about halfway there. Almost a full in-game block. It also started snowing again, which I think it gives perfect ambience for us. I also think we deal more damage when we stab zombies at the end of our melee range to where we can almost get a two shot if we if we if we space it out correctly. It's really hard to do with a knife, but getting a two shot is a massive compared to even a three shot. Oh, there goes another knife. It's a good thing we got another five plus the sixth one that I have in my hand. And if we break these, I also have another six screwdrivers. What I'm trying to say is that we're not going to run out of knives anytime soon. Especially with that juicy level five in maintenance. Or six at this point. I don't know. Oh, and hello there, Survivor Zombie. It's crazy to see how many we've found so far. I didn't really mention it last episode, but I came across like three to four different large bag of guys. So that's a good sign. Who knows, this uh, strip club might have a Survivor events right in front of it. That'd be pretty cool. Okay, and while not a Survivor event, that's a lot of zombies in the back. Though, I do want a trinket from this place, so if I can get a pair of bunny ears, I will count that a win. And if I can, you know, get a good looking on the inside. I'm really hoping that, you know, by not going loud, I will have a better chance of actually exploring the area once I get inside. Anyways, we have finally made it to the front entrance of the Velvet Tassel. I'm guessing the inside portion of this area is going to be absolutely screwed. And judging from the amount of zombies at the entrance alone, I am correct. This is more than likely going to be a multi-day excursion because we have a safety net, we have food, I'm not really in any rush at this point. Not so much as, let's say, the baseball stadium to where it was all danger, you know? I do have a, a technical home to go back to, so I'm gonna take my damn dime clearing out these zombies. Up until we can actually get inside, of course, and I can grab a couple of cool souvenirs. Ooh, 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 it's getting dangerous. Oh, it's getting real dangerous. Okay, this might be the final horde of the day, actually. Once we take these out, I think I'm going to go back and sleep, and we will continue to stab at the competition in the future. Unless I can kill them now. It is only 3 p.m. It is just extremely dark. Okay, I think we're actually gonna be able to take out the sword and still continue to loot. I'm still not drowsy, I'm feeling fantastic actually. We are a little bit hungry, but this zombie horde is no more. Gosh, it is so satisfying to get all those damn kills in one go. Ugh, oh, the, the streets are absolutely disgusting though, but there's nothing I can do about that other than to make them even more dirty. Let's hope the interior isn't as bad as the entrance though, and that was just a big ol' fluke. Well, and hopefully it actually did spawn in the correct zombies that wear the outfits. Oh, these zombies are just eating up my weapons right now. Uh, we are getting closer though, and each zombie dead is one less I have to deal with in the future, so I also see that as a win. This is definitely gonna be like a two day type deal here. Uh, when we get to Night Glow though, I am just gonna go with the tried and true Molotov method. <laughs> it works, damn it, it works. Okay, we can finally step foot inside. I'm not going to stick around for too long because, you know, indoor areas and fighting zombies doesn't really go well together. But let's see if we can find anything cool in here now that we are here. I just have to play it pretty cool. And hey, it did spawn in the correct stripper zombies. That means we got ourselves the bunny ears. Sadly, I can't wear it on top of the hat, but I will take it as a nice decorative souvenir. I just have to kill the rest of these zombies. Ooh, there's, there's multiple. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Hopefully I'll be able to actually check out the interior in a second here. I'm sorry, I just gotta move out of the way real quick. Give me those bunny ears. They weigh one kilo, so I'm not gonna take anything more. Unless there's something even cooler. Yep, yep, we're gonna have to get out of here. Whew. That was getting a little bit spicy in there. That's why I am extremely scared of the indoors. It is very easy for a zombie just to roll up and corner you and murder you. And as soon as you get enclosed off in a hallway like that or even just any interior, it's game over. I like being out here and I like being free. Sadly, no knives on these zombies. I'm, I'm, I'm really struggling to find more knives on them. It 
It is getting pretty late, so I don't think we're going to be able to push it too much further until we get drowsy. But at the very least, we have half of the gold done, and that is the, the, the bunny ears. So I'm pretty hyped about that. The most I can do right now is to clear out a few more in the area to make my entrance tomorrow a little bit more easy. Every day I am reminded more and more on why I'm why I'm really struggling with this challenge now. I am really good at stabbing zombies, but with just with the amount in the area, they just keep on funneling themselves into the general zone, making my life so much more hard. I killed them all though. That there was a lot of waste there as I did go through like three different knives. And of course, there's more zombies in here. Of, of course, why why would there not be? And, and it's not like I left this place for a week. I left here for like the day and they have migrated themselves inside my, my supposed base. It's brutal out here, man. Even when you're, when you're stabbing machine like I, it's fine. One more day and I, w I can go over to the next objective. Oh, uh, they also tore down my damn rope. I... Okay, okay, I'm, try I'm trying to remain optimistic and I'm trying to re remain calm and cool there, but just the sheer fact that they wanted to rip apart my, my, my survivor rope as well is really paving me off. Okay, I'll just go around the long way. That's cool, I guess. And of course, going around the long way also has me fighting even more zombies to get there. Wouldn't have it any other way. Ha 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 ha. I'm gonna get some damn sleep and I'm gonna drink a bunch of alcohol and no one can stop me. Okay, um, unless they just move themselves indoors as well. Come on, this is just unfair. I guess that's the point of the challenge, but it still stands. All right, it freaking sucks. It sucks eggs. I will see all of you in the morning though. At least I have my bounties of beer to drink. So I welcome you to another day. How bad is it inside my little store here? Not bad, not bad. Okay, at least they didn't move themselves inside that way. I'm gonna go set up my sheet rope and we will see if we can make it inside the strip club today. I'm really hoping that it's gonna be a yeah, but your guess is as good as mine. Would you look at that? It looks like it snowed pretty damn hard out. And I'm also looking around and I'm starting to realize that clearing out anything for longer than a day is going to be a monolithic task. I did that three days ago and zombie hordes are already migrating back to where they used to be. <laughs> so many bodies litter the streets, man. It feels like, it really does feel like I'm trying to bail out a, a, a pirate ship with a, with a children's plastic bucket. Okay, yeah, we're not gonna stick around here for too much longer. That's for damn sure. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get inside that strip club. I'm gonna look around for like five seconds and I'm gonna leave with my bounty. And then it's up to the Night Glow Arena and I'm not taking any chances with that one. I am going with fire and flames. If I wasn't two to three shotting these zombies with the hunting knife, I would be a lot more peeved. But I am running low on hunting knives, surprisingly, so that might be a very real threat in the future. Okay, how much more do we got? Oh, just a few more hundred zombies. That's cool and all. Yeah, that's fine. It, it's not like it's... God, please, man. I can't catch a break. Welp, it's back to the good old grindstone. Stab a rabaroonie. Any minute now, the zombies will stop coming. I just have to believe. I'm not believing in hard enough. Soon, soon, I swear it will all be over and I will, I, I can stop stabbing so many zombies. I've killed well over 200 zombies with my hands alone and it looks like I will not be getting any rests today. I fear for the day I run out of hunting knives. Oh! 
Oh, you know, while I was stabbing these zombies with a screwdriver, another perfect analogy is trying to dig a hole out of like a sandy type soil, right? Because the further you dig in, the more the sand piles in as well, thus making any sort of progress almost impossible unless you're digging out a massive crater. Oh, thank you, ma'am, for the hunting knife. Your, your contribution is very well appreciated. Okay, uh, I mean, we're getting there. Slow and steady wins the race. You know how it is. Maybe going in through the back would be better, but I don't really like the vibes of the back of this place. And no, it's not better. <laughs> Somehow, someway, they just keep on funneling themselves back in. That soil analogy is really fitting. Please release me from this hell game. I am sick of stabbing these zombies over and over again. <laughs> this is a war of attrition and I am not a strong man. Ooh, another hunting knife. Hell yeah. That's what I love to see. Yoink that. That is always a good sign. And now, game, please tell me that I've killed enough to have access to the interior. I don't even want to stay for a long time. I just want to look at it knowing that I won't die immediately as I walk in. Could you give me that at least? That'd be really cool if you could, game. I would really appreciate it. Ooh, another hunting knife. Okay, hey, if you keep on giving me hunting knives, I can look over everything you've thrown at me before game, as long as I can recoup my losses. Yoink that as well. Not bad, not bad. You know what else isn't bad? Knowing that we finally have access to the interior. I don't know how far, but we will find that out very soon, won't we? Uh, probably not too far in, judging from just th the sheer amount of zombies already. Yep, 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 it's still a fight. It's always a fight. Why, why would it not be a fight? Okay, we're back in. Also, while I'm at it, give me one of those bunny tails as well to finish up the set. And is that a key ring? Holy crap, that's actually huge. Hey, don't mind if I do take that. Hell yeah, you know, it's the small things you gotta look forward to. We also made it indoors, which is pretty cool as well. Now I get to check out the interior. It only took a couple hundred zombie kills. But welcome everyone to the Velvet Tassel. Oh my, there are still quite a few zombies. But you know what else there is? There's bourbon, which is food, and money. Yeah, give me some money. I want to see how much money I can get out of this as well. Okay, uh, we're not done here yet though. This place is really cool, but I'm going to have to kill a few more zombies if I want to progress. Little do they know, all I've done so far is practice my shanking ability. Yeah, give me the money. <laughs> Gosh, I, I love locations like this, you know? It's very much a love-hate relationship with Louisville. On one hand, this place has some of the coolest locations and loot ever. Uh, you know, like unique furniture pieces, all of that. On the other hand, it throws you so many different zombies that it's almost impossible to gain a foothold in this place. So you really have to try to, you know, even see a, a fraction of what you want to see. But that doesn't matter because we got ourselves a bunch of money and future Molotov cocktails to micro sip. Hell yeah, give me the money. You know, the more I think about it, why am I even getting this money? I literally have a pallet of gold at home, but you know what? Hindsight is always 2020, right? I'm still gonna take the damn money and we are gonna cross this out on our little chart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, give me give me some strip club cigarettes as well. It's completely the same, but maybe it hits a little bit different. Hell yeah, I wish I could dance right now. But I can't. I don't have the mod enabled. This is actually very vanilla. Is there anything on the counters that I could steal? Even more beer. You know what? That's going to be dinner for tonight. Not bad at all. And since it's only 3 p.m., I think we drive all the way down to the Night Glow Club. And we... <gasps> Jesus Christ! I'm going to drive down. I'm going to shoot a... I'm going to shoot a couple... I'm going to shoot some zombies, all right? Oh, that was not fun. But we're done here. Uh, good timing as well, because it looks like the, the zombies have just decided to move their way right back into my home. Uh, can't have a break here. I'm gonna see if I can maneuver around these zombies. 
Um, actually, no, I'm kind of cornering myself. Oh, no, this is terrible. I am... Okay, no, this is a back bar room. Oh, this is not good. I hate it here. Okay, well, it looks like we're gonna have to fight our way out. This is why I hate interiors, by the way. Oh my lord, my heart is racing so hard. How do they even know that I'm here? It just seems like they just converge in on me every step of the way. Uh, okay, let's make this uh, next one quick now, yeah? I really don't want to stay here any longer than I need to. Like, look at that! I was just here! <laughs> How many zombies do I need to kill to... To, to, to even... To, to just prove anything at this point, man? I can't even get water! With how many there are. Well, let's drive down and try and lead them away. Night Glow wasn't too far away. We're almost done, though. We're almost done. Just gotta think about the positives. Anyways, the parking lot right here is right above the Night Glow, so you already know what time it is. I'm actually gonna have to drink alcohol in order to, um, not die. Oh, I have pop. Oh, thank gosh. Okay. We don't have to worry about, um, dying of thirst out here. Oh, God, it's already getting bad, and it's only gonna get worse. I love, I love it here. <laughs> did, you, did I ever tell you how much I love it here? Oh, what a good time, you know? Fun for the whole family. Let's go craft up a Molotov right now as well, if I can help it. Just so we're a little bit more prepared and ready. There we are, we got it. Okay, cool, cool, cool. You already know the drill then. If I die here, I'm gonna smash my screen in half. Okay, there are quite a few more zombies here than I was really expecting. Um, oh, this is gonna be fun to navigate. I might actually die here. I think I might have bitten off a bit more than I can chew. Oh my gosh, okay. Oh no, this is not good. This is actually not good. I'm getting cornered right now. Yeah, I think this is it, everyone. Un unless I can... Oh, okay, okay, okay. I, I can hug, I can hug this. I can, I can hug the fence line. No, I can't, I can't! I can't! I... Yeah, that's CDDA Louisville, everyone. It really feels like a trend where I die minutes before I actually complete the damn challenge. I'm gonna take a break. I survived one month, one day, seven hours, killing 2,251 zombies. I wish I would have completed this one. I wish this would have been another cool character, but Zomboid is a game where things don't end happily. I tried my best and I did go check out, you know, the strip club. I think next series for Zomboid, I'm gonna I'm gonna tone it down a bit and we're gonna do a bit of a quicker one. Yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this series regardless. It's a bit of a depressing end, but Yeah, that was quite a few more zombies than I was expecting. <laughs> I, I, I've probably said that 20 times this series. Anyways, I'm still happy I went on this journey as I got to explore a lot of the city and a lot of the cool things it had to offer. And if you're wondering the final and if you were wondering, the final place I would have visited would have been the fort that is outside of the map. It's a, it's kind of like a castle. It's pretty cool. But alas, I won't be able to do that today. So yeah, rest in peace, City Trash. You were one of the best. Peace the hell out, everyone. And also subscribe because this is, this, this, this death also hit pretty damn hard. God diggity damn it, man.